It's a wonderful time for spookiness. See, it's Halloween, you know? It's a little bit spooky, though. Slight Hence, spooky. talking more about Black Widow, because it's a really scary uh... movie. <laughs> <laughs> scary in how shit it is. Whoa, dude. A woman was in that. What are you doing? Uh, double shit, then. Oh, that's something we could talk about. <laughs> for... <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> Uh, so shittiness is subjective. Come on. Um, so this this will only finally actually like have a payoff until like from a year from now. But uh, we uh, we were doing our recordings for good old next year EFAB Halloween. Oh yeah. And I I screwed up the times in terms of we started three hours earlier than we were supposed to, and so <laughs> uh, a person who was meant for the the final destination stuff couldn't show up for the, the three hours, and so we were like fuck. And, but everybody figured out, it was like, well, I can make it for those extra three hours, so what should we do? And uh, Jay Longbone had an incredible idea. Just just mm -hmm. top-notch. And um, we watched Karen, everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what a grand old time that was. It's been recorded. It's quite a bombastic fucking EFAP movies, I think. But that'll be coming out next year along with some other stuff. But, oh, my God. Oh, that yeah. movie. Just yeah. really pushing the boundaries on what a fucking movie even is. Uh, <laughs> oh. I think it'd be uh, just better title would just be Straw Woman. I think. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny though. I wouldn't want it any other way, really. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it is hilarious. And the yeah, idea that it's it a horror movie, by the way, that's just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> if you wouldn't have told me, I would have never guessed. <laughs> the idea that you're meant to be scared while watching it, that, that is possible, other than just laughter <laughs> and cringe. <laughs> That's, uh... I mean, if you look at the comments responding to the trailer, it's so... It's so sad because <laughs> people are like yeah, be like yeah, this this shit really happened though. No. These cameras are crazy. <laughs> <It's really happened. laughs> even like even like uh, just to take a second to call out a certain YouTuber, but like uh, Elvis the Alien did, did a video on it, and he even he took it a little too seriously. He was like. Well, yeah, these, these carrot like this women like this actually exists, and I'm like, how? What? Did you watch the same movie I did? She's a fucking Bond villain. <laughs> she only did one thing. That, oh. Yeah, she only did one thing that could have been like considered like Karenish, like one scene, and that was it. You're being too yeah. loud. I'm talking to the manager. I wanted more manager talk. I agree with what Rags <laughs> was complaining about that. It's true. Yeah. Because it happened, and I was like, when is she going to go talk to the manager? But it already happened, and they just went by it, and that's the most number one, yeah. like, Karen thing that exists. So yeah. it's very, very upsetting. And plus, mm -hmm. the film acknowledges the meme that the film is being made about. So, eh. Um, But, yeah. you know, So you got that to look forward to one day, uh, EFAP yeah. Labs. For now, it was you... a wild recording session in general. Like, my, my, my voice was actually gone when I left. It was a long boy. Uh, yeah. We did all kinds of things. In fact, what a day that was, right, Free? We had the amount of things <laughs> that we watched, because we, we had to yeah, do a couple of things and, afterwards. Um, and then proceeded to watch several episodes of a Squid Game. Well, we didn't watch several episodes for it, but I watched a few more. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want to talk to you. In Fuck. the afternoon. <laughs> I'm up, well, I'm up to episode five now, Oof. and I will... I'll yeah, join in now. Sorry, you want to join in now? All right. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, well, I, I, we have so many things to talk about, but just, just quickly, what, how are you <laughs> feeling about it? How are you feeling? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it I'm, good? Uh, so episode four um, was just super interesting in terms of the developments, and I just find myself consistently impressed with uh, what they're doing. Like every time that they set something up, and I think, "Oh, you could do that," they do it, and then I'm like, "Yay! You're you're <laughs> you're, you're you're really doing the potent <laughs> stuff. Uh, like you're you're progressing in a way that uh is logical." It's um, just, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. That's sure. Yeah, we could maybe if um if you think it's solid enough, um maybe we'll try and get uh some other people to to watch right. it. Maybe we do an episode yeah. on it. I don't know. Maybe yeah, that maybe. that could be fun. It'd be nice to talk about something that is at least Isn't dog shit. really <laughs> good. Yeah, is really good. Well, yeah, I've been curious about it. I heard that the some translate people that 
not everybody was happy with the translation from was it Korean or whatever the original language it's was. It's a Korean show. I could believe yeah. that. Like the um, subtitles. Yeah, because some of the dialogue uh, is a little bit flat uh, in terms of just straightforward. And um, I've I've been super pilled on this ever since Train to Busan. I saw as because uh, I watched like a shitty version, I guess, for the first five minutes, and the subtitles just broke after being terrible. But what I assumed was the dialogue wasn't that great. Um, and because uh, I was reading the subtitles, I was like, Ugh. like the the example I'll give is in, in the bad version I saw. This guy in like the opening is like, "My goodness, what a bad day I'm having today." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Amazon was like, "If you pay X amount, we can uh, we'll show you like the top notch version." I was like, "You know, what? I will," because this film it seems like it's pretty good. And like the the Amazon version, he was like, "For fuck's sake, what a shit day!" And I was like, "That's way better. That's way more like a human." <laughs> Um, and so I wonder now, like, uh, mm -hmm. it's not just bad dubs that exist, it's bad subs that exist. Yeah. So you gotta yeah. be careful Absolutely. out there. You never know who's fucking you over anymore. You never know. And and I noticed that I, I thought I heard something about, I, I don't, I literally know nothing about it other than the show's like the top thing on Netflix right now and it's doing great. Um, but I, I heard that I guess some of the translations kind of take a bit of liberty, kind of put a little bit of their own sort of viewpoint yeah. opinions and into it kind of mo like americanize some of the dialogue which it that didn't exist in the korean so i'd be curious if there's a a, a better better set of subs out there but I, I guess it is probably netflix originals that probably doesn't exist so said that's why you learned the bloody language like i learned a language to watch a tv show that's not happening <laughs> uh, try that's learning like, man you said that so like confidently learn the bloody language <laughs> like, to watch a television show all right, I watched this show in what, like six years? All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, we'll be yeah. back. It'll be great. It's as, be... as we all know, I just learned English overnight, just like this. Like, I want to stream in English. Yeah. Boom, there it was. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I was just sitting there with you going, hey, no, no, it's it's called, uh, it's called poop in English, okay? You say that a lot. I is a VTuber that auto translates. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, maybe we'll we'll talk about everyone all that in in the future. Um, I literally now... learned English to consume Western media. Good for you. I'm not learning a language to watch a TV show. Yeah, you don't have to do that. I would never. If if I was like, oh man, you gotta see, um, you know, fucking Jurassic Park or something, and then you're like, okay, I'll go learn English. I'd be like, well, it's probably a, it's probably <laughs> subtitles for you know, <laughs> you don't need to do that. Yeah, I know, especially an Asian base uh, character set and everything. That's that's an incredible endeavor to learn that. Yeah, I would just I speak fluent doggo. I do. I speak all breeds of doggo. Me, <laughs> Barkish. So, while we were doing that recording last night, I was. Oh, it was yeah. like between recordings. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a look at what's going on on the subreddit, which was a mistake. Um, no, Reddit. Uh... You don't go to Reddit, Lawler. You never go to Reddit. This is the thing, before I go on this wonderful little adventure, I do want to say, like, the Reddit isn't filled with complete pieces of shit. There's a lot of people on there that are just having a fun time. There's lots of creative things that get posted, a lot of fun things. But man, like, um, if you can set your mind all the way back, Fringy and Rags, to that wonderful time we was, we was, we was streaming, we were doing, I think it was the previous EFAP, and we were just responding to the Super Chats toward the end. Wonderful time. Do you remember anything particularly controversial happening? Because because I don't. I don't remember anything. No. No? Okay, well. No, this wasn't the one. No, yeah, this no. Was, this was the, the cake one. We were talking about spoons versus forks, but I don't know that I that mean, was... There, <laughs> there were some really dumb comments on the last EFAP, but other than that, no. Well, not really. I spotted this, and uh, you're welcome to read ahead, but we're gonna go one by one, okay? So try and okay. try and we gotta gotta do this chronologically, because oh, I'll, also, gosh, this is the most work we'll ever have to do while responding to a fucking Reddit meme, right? So here, the watch together, you guys have access to that, excellent. And then here's mm -hmm. the image. You'll need both of these to follow along. Oh, don't worry, like precious together. Meme. God, okay. don't worry, EFAP audience. You'll uh, you'll have it all too. I'll show you. So. We'll start with, with slide number one of this wonderful meme uh, boom. Great anime. Yeah. So I saw this, and it was it was getting pretty hardly upvoted, and it was like, man, like, it, it was, it was uh, the title was something like, well, well, we'll look at it in a sec. The, the important thing is just like, hmm, what is this? 
So it goes, give EFAP a super chat to get Misanthropony invited someday. Didn't mention MLP background for all, uh, avoiding shitstorm. Let's just, you know, this is where the story starts. There's no shitstorm for mentioning My Little Pony. EFAP doesn't really give yeah, a shit. I don't, yeah, um, I, don't, I don't care about My I'm trying little to think pony. of, like, an extreme. And if someone was like, oh, fucking, I adore Teletubbies, you guys have to check out Season 3. I'd be like, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I can believe that something happened in Teletubbies that could have been quite meaningful. I just doubt it. Um, and that's a kid for, like, baby. Uh, it's a story for babies. So My Little Pony's, like, meant for, I guess... I don't know what the age group of that even is, but it's uh, going to be relatively young, like um, around no, early it's teens. Be right? Old men. <laughs> old I think men. it's going to be adult men. Well, I, I I legitimately heard that they actually kind of changed their target audience when the whole Brony thing happened. They actually started to kind of, you know, kind of like how Shrek can be enjoyed by kids, but it can also be enjoyed by adults. I think they kind of went that route, if I recall. I don't. I've not watched a single episode, but that's what I heard that they sort of embrace the the brony audience by kind of double writing you know writing innuendo and stuff like that that's what i heard at least apparently the person who made this is like why is my bebo on screen you're about to find out so hi <laughs> um yeah they, they gave us a timestamp and everything so this is wonderful now um without going any further um we've said what i what feels like i, I think rags you actually said this when i was uh, mentioning it to you misanthropony is possibly one of the most asked for ones that we've always said yeah we'll maybe set that up yeah yeah no reason not absolutely. to absolutely i feel like every efap we are uh we're asked to have uh him on and that's something that may may happen in the future i got nothing against it and you know it's in the name misanthropony if you ask me what do you think their avatar's gonna look like I'm like probably a pony maybe a my little pony thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and if you're like what content does it make like probably related probably. to my little pony the show and then someone said our first day on the internet either yeah, and, and if someone said, does that make them a less human being? I'm like, no. No. Never would have brony come up. friends. Yeah, uh, and like, I, I literally... It's like, I have black friends. I have brony friends. <laughs> I, and, and I said that, uh, I literally in that stream, I think it was in response to that one, I was telling a story about a friend of mine who was obsessed with it, and I saw a couple of episodes, and I said the show was fine. That's what I've said. So shows, I saw a couple episodes, a, friend, a brony friend showed me a couple episodes, I watched them, it was fine. I was a little confused by the, that first thing already. We haven't even gotten to the later ones. I was like, why is there? Why would there be a shitstorm for MLP? Like, I, I just, you know, none of us really care that much. Um, but they gave us a timestamp for it, just to see it come in. We'll just see what the super chat was. It was 105.15. Alright, let's have a look. I didn't watch anything. Right, others. so you saw, so, you saw a good, the, some good content. There is. Civil War is really good. Beautiful. So let's have a look what it says. Hey crew, I hope you can get Miss Anthropony on. His recent video is getting hate for caring about a TV show too much. He's a good boy, and I hope I get him on some days. Format is similar to the Unbridled Rage videos. Perfectly normal super chat. Um, I remember that super chat. Yeah, and so you might be like, well, what did they say? Well, back to the meme. Hmm. It says Mauler is checking his YouTube page and sees the video I was trying not to mention that it was about. Like, you know, blankly, it's like, is that a problem? Why? Why would you? Why would you bring it up? And not want us to check? Why Why would you ever recommend someone to come on to EFAP and then be upset that we checked their videos? Well, that that would be funny, right? Like, hey, this, this person, get them on. Don't check out those videos. Like, they're really bad. Ex exactly. <laughs> well, alternative, so... <laughs> alternatively, you wouldn't like them. I don't know what, um, if ever we have anyone on, I'm... I'm not the kind of host that goes like, whoever you are, come on. Just, I'm usually like, oh, what do they do? What are they interested in? And then I try and find out what I can get uh, as an episode for them. Let's see what we say. <laughs> that's, I'm not ready for that. Nobody is. Hey, crew. I hope you could get Miss Anthropony on. His recent video getting is getting hate for caring about a TV show too much. He's a good boy, and I hope we get him on someday. His format is similar to Unbridled Rage videos. What's, um... What What is he getting hate for? I don't know. Let's have a look. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, um... That was almost a don't think about an elephant thing to say. Well, I don't... <laughs> like, if, this, if that wasn't... If... It would be like, I don't know, it's it's, it's a bizarre... It's misanthropony. So like it's like, the cat's out of the bag. Sorry. <laughs> I think we know exactly what's, what the child's gonna be about. I was curious at this point, what's the TV show that Misanthropo is getting flack for either defending or attacking? I was curious, which I would say for literally everyone. Is it a, is that why? Oh. 
<laughs> oh, it's it's about My Little Pony. So that could be, in fairness, that could be for all kinds of reasons I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I is haven't... he saying it's bad or something? Well, I, think, I think they're or saying good? the new one is bad, the, the old stuff is good. That's my assumption oh. from the thumbnail and the title. Which is the probably new... going to piss off the new fans of My Little Pony. Okay. You know them a lot. They're big into the pony stuff. I guess. I had a friend, a guy friend, who was a super brony. It was really strange. Um, yeah, I knew people who. They yeah. Are strange he had, sort. He had strange collected some of the some of the dolls and would constantly say that I need to see the show, and I'd be like, I'm all right. I think I saw a couple of them, and I was like, it's fine. It is absolutely. Yeah, fine. I had a friend who's into that stuff. I mean, I still have. They're still my friend. Um, they, I got. They showed me a couple, and they were fine. Yeah, they were fine. I I, I enjoyed them. Normal but I cartoon like, yeah. show with characters doing their thing. Yeah, I had no issues with the show. And yeah, I don't know which of the many different fucking pony shows it was. I don't remember. Um, it was around the same time Game of Thrones season two was out, so that should tell people which one it was. And as you can tell, the fact that that's my memory was me being like, I prefer Game of Thrones to this. <laughs> that's a preference I have. Uh, oh, speaking of which, Game of Thrones Season 8 is a pitch-perfect example of- So that was that. Uh, hmm. did any- anything you guys can detect is a huge problem yet? No. Mm. No? Like we have a lot of- it seems like general apathy, normal, we're not really invested in normal, this show. Yeah. Really, really normal response, just like, yeah, and, and we've said a million times over, we're happy to have MLP- sorry, Misanthropony on at some point. Probably sort it out. But yeah, that just- that was the most chill sort of thing I could ever imagine. So, stage three of this of this meme. Giving 100 euro super chat to get things right. Explain they don't need to talk about this TV show and give a high rags to show I mean no harm. What? I guess the peace what? offering is saying high rags. <laughs> what is... I, like, what? I think I'm, I'm beginning to sense that this person is a little entitled. I, like, I was lost reading this meme. I was like, what do you mean? Show no harm. What? So I don't, I don't know about you guys. When whenever I go to church and I ask the father what I should do, he tells me to uh, to you know use my rosary beads and give me. Uh, tells me to do five high rags in order to you know <laughs> cleanse my rags. soul. Yeah, I recommend it. It will cleanse you. Um, so we'll try and get to oh, scrolling system is useless. But I, I don't know right. what kind of game is it going to be. Okay. Uh, it's like turn based thing, but you. It's something to do with cards instead of like. Don't do my politics in chat as well. Look at that. We're, we're watching EFAP that you're on. How strange is this? Move specifically. Mm. Um, mm. it doesn't look awesome. So yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it. Um, fair enough. Hi rags. You should play DRG. It seems up your alley. DRG. Uh, I don't know. There it is. So Misanthro's problem on the new content is the exact same uh, exact thing with the new Star Wars sequels have. There's also a sequel in the far future. All the main characters are dead and their goals didn't happen. Get them on. You don't need to talk about MLP. Uh, love you guys and high rags. Um, when I read it, because bear in mind this was nine hours into the stream, I read it as um, you need to talk about MLP. However, um, reading it out like that, it's still pretty mundane. It's just like, okay. Got, um... The, the, it's a show that is apparently ruining the older show. And it's just like, yeah, makes sense. I can see why people would be angry or whatever. That's probably the video's content. And, um, you know, love you guys in high rags. So it's like, okay, right? That's, that's the message. So what's next in the meme? Mola misread it as they need to talk about it and made it all cringe. Mola makes a joke to Rags as if I'm one of his weird fans. Rags, do you remember this? What, what comment did you make that would imply that? So, um, when I read this meme, I was like, that doesn't sound right. I don't usually do that. Like, ever. I don't usually say, like, oh no, a super chat from one of them weird fans. <laughs> I'd be like, mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't typically do that. So, let's have a look at this timestamp, I guess. So, 84243. Alright, yeah, let's, let's see. Eight. I hate fine tuning this shit. We're twenty seconds behind it, but that's the best I can do. Or oh, that's right. Like yeah, what like that could mean a couple things, you know, and 
Like I, it's, it's, I think like if every person who hears that is going to have their own, you know, kind of idea of what that is. So in, in some ways that could be useful. In other ways it could be totally useless. So it depends on how you use it, you know, like many things. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's, yeah. Misanthropony problem on the new content is exact thing what the Star Wars sequels have. This is also a sequel in the far future. All main characters are dead and their goals didn't happen. Get him on. You need to talk to him about MLP. Love you guys and high rags. Hello to you. I, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't have a lot of investment in my little pony. Yeah. yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Rag seems to have a lot of fans in chat. Yeah, that makes sense. In, doing well, Rags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rags, you got some fans in the EFAP audience. Did you know that? Uh, I think they're here despite me, not because of me. Oh. Which gives me all the more reason to never leave. <laughs> Here's the life equation if you can. So that, that's that. No. Um, all right. So so my take on listening to that again, I was like, so what happened was I read it out, and then we said we're not too concerned about MLP. And then Duma noticed mm -hmm. people in chat was saying stuff um, about rags. I said, you got some fans in chat. And, um, and I was just like... What are the odds Rags has fans on the EFAP chat? You know, just taking it literally, just to just to twist it a little, little joke. And then uh, I think Rags was going to take it a little bit more sarcastically back to where Duma was going with it. Moving on. Now, how was that taken by the meme? Rags didn't say hi to me. Instead, he's telling everyone that I'm a hater who wants him gone from EFAP. What? Um, so first off, you already fucked up. I did say hi. He did yeah, say hi. Uh, <laughs> so you had one early. job, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you will. Uh, hey. <laughs> so like, I, I watched it, I was like, wait, but the rag said hi, and he doesn't think you want him gone from EFAP. He was res no, responding. That was a different. that was a different thing at that point. In fact, well, Rags couldn't be wrong, because he was referring to people who hate him want him gone, yeah. right? That's a category that Which you're only is, in is true, if you're in. Like, if you decide yeah. that you're in it, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I saw all this, and I looked at the time, so I was like, so what the fuck happened here? Because this is just not true. Like, the, 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 the big funny one for me was just the fact that I went to the time stuff after they said you did not say hi, which is, you know, it can happen. It's just a little yeah, bit unusual. It can happen. It does. And like the it's first thing you say you is hi. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, well, you I'm got gonna... the timestamps for the meme, so you would have heard that. Yeah, I did. Uh, I guess you didn't. <laughs> um, now, some people might in chat be wondering, like, why are we doing this? And it's like, well, it's so the meme was bad enough because it, like, it's annoying, but it gets posted to the Reddit. And if you guys remember, what pissed me off the last time we did something like this was the community fucking upvoting it to the top. This thing has 200 upvotes. I was like, why? Oh, it's just have, wrong. Because yeah, the title is 155, I'm never gonna super chat again. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, so, like, <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Like, you guys just saw the entire thing. It seems like people in chat are baffled because obviously we are too. Like, what the mm -hmm. fuck is going on? But it gets worse, because it's not only upvoted, we start having some comments to read. Rags, would you like to read this comment? I would love to read the comments that's, that this thing spawned. All right. Lair ye? Does it seem like the EFAP crew have become a little more hurtful and judgmental than when they first started? I'm not starting a definite, I'm not stating a definite, just asking, because the new EFAPs don't feel right. This could just be me, considering my anemia has been getting worse. I have been having trouble understanding things lately. Um, <laughs> I didn't even know anemia yeah. had something to do with... Uh, Sorry. No, I mean, yeah, like, because obviously we can assume these are made in good faith, but like, it is funny to read because I'm just like, what? Like, you've ever become more hateful and judgmental when, when they first start? Let's just say, as as a person who's been here since the beginning, we've not become more hateful and judgmental. There's no fucking way. Uh, Absolutely not. Also, did you click the timestamp? Did you listen to that? I'm gonna what, bet they didn't. About, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, if I was a gambling doggo, was... I'd say they didn't. All we said was, uh, I, we don't know anything about My Little Pony. Then we talked about a totally different thing, and it was banter. It was a joke. What was... What the hell? Like, 
I'm sorry, um, I hate you guys. It's really my rickets acting up. It's my rickets. <laughs> oh, that, that's my knee again. <laughs> and then comes the legendary comment. The one that made me think, yeah, we're going to have to address this now, because oh, what the boy. fuck. So, um, I guess, uh, should we do this in pieces, or should I read the whole thing, and then we'll do it in pieces, because it's, it's, um... We can do pieces. We can do pieces, like an no, AFAP maybe, video. Maybe, uh... Hmm. Well, if it's all on screen, people can read ahead if they want, so maybe let's go in pieces. Alright, we'll go in pieces. Rags, take the reins. Ah. Oh. Good god. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. And this is gonna be an audiobook. I mean, I got a, I got a, the full, I got a middle mouse button. <laughs> yeah. This is a, this is a right proper comment. Common Redditor yeah. Reese, I believe you. Uh, alright. Does it does it seem like the EFAP crew have become more hurtful and judgmental? Nope. Always been this way. It's actually really sad at times. I know people don't like me not having timestamps for when I quote the crew, and they are often hypocritical. I am not going to write every moment down when it happens. I am sorry. I am often doing things when listening to the podcasts. All okay. right. Wolf was a toxic individual, though. Hard not to see when you have a debilitating mental... Hard not to be when you have a debilitating mental health status. That will reflect how you talk and sound. What that's, fucking, yeah, like... That's, that's great. Backhanded that. fucking shit. That's I nice. don't know, that just feels like internet psychologist bullshit. Oh, well, they've, they've, that, earned, it, they've earned a fuck you for that one, but let's see how many more they've mm -hmm. earned. All right. Mm -hmm. Get out the golden stickers, everyone. Uh, seeing how they talk when a guest they have watched for an EFAP is present versus not on the panel is shocking. They are almost two different types of people. Without the guests, they are egotistical frat boys. With the guest, they are humans having a talk. So, welcome to Earth, motherfucker, where when you look at a video, it's detached from a human, and you just respond to what they're saying, versus having someone in a chat where you're more deliberate, slow, and understanding to make sure that they feel facilitated and you fully understand what they make, what points they make. Would you prefer that we would, that we were like incredibly harsh and rude to people in person? I assume they would <laughs> like, say we, they would prefer that we're much kinder with videos, but like when we, I, I think that, I, th I think that, uh, that 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 is like a significant exaggeration. I, I just, I don't of, understand like, how harsh. When you have a video that makes like 50 stupid statements in a row, you see it happen with me all the time. I try, I start out like I've got my, you know, my, my allowance is really high. And I'm like, all right, maybe they meant this. All right, it's fine, it's fine. Fast forward to like the eighth hour and I'm like, I can't take this. This is like the worst video I've ever fucking seen. That sort of shit. Cause it's just like, this is, this, the points are so bad. That, that happened. And the yeah. thing is, it happens with people in calls, depending on what they say. Dare oh, I remind everybody of Twin well, Perfect. also... Fun fact, it happens in real life as well, <laughs> yep, just depending yeah. on how tired you are or how pissed off you are. I think it's... Like, uh, what happens in your day? It happens when we talk to each other, for fuck's sake. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll lose <laughs> patience with each other, depending on the conversation. Yeah. This is, again, That's welcome fine. to Earth. I don't know what else to say. I think it has to do with uh, when you're criticizing a video, you're, you're speaking to the content. But when the person comes on, you're speaking to the person. You That's, don't immediately uh -huh. assign malicious intent to the person. You want to discuss them, the, discuss the content and the reasoning behind it, or you know, pick apart their logic or their missing information or why they wrote or made that video that way. And you generally don't get a whole lot of information or a whole lot of communication in general if you're just immediately an asshole to a person. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just basic emotional intelligence. You're not going to be a dick to somebody for no reason. Yeah. Continue, Rex. <laughs> All right. Oh, for some reason that closed. Let me click on it here. Uh, let me see. In the super chat catch up for The uh, Last of Us 2, Mahler at some point started talking about Batman. Had this to say about Cosmonaut Variety Hour. He put in a tweet that Bruce will be fine because he has a butler. How could you be in how could you be so insensitive? Mahler talking about Cosmonaut. Just pause there. Does that quite sound like a quote from me? Um I mean, the point being made, I agree with, but how could you be so insensitive? That doesn't quite that doesn't sound, sound like... like you. It doesn't sound like me to me. No. Um, Are you being sarcastic? Well, maybe. Um, but the thing is, 
I think what he's referring to is when Cosmo was like, yes, his parents were murdered, but he has a butler, he'll be fine. And, so I, and I remember being like, what they, the fuck? That sounds like something that Cosmonaut would say because he's a detached <laughs> fucking loser. He's an idiot. Um, right. he's and he's an got idiot. really he bad, like... Uh, he's, remember he said, like, if you're rich, you don't have problems, really? <laughs> oh, well, he was Pretty talking much. about the Will Smith thing. Because yeah. it was him when he was, like, crying and clearly upset. And it's like, well, he's got money. It's like, ah, so the emotional, like, yeah, that's just how it works. Money just makes it so that... Or at least that you should be less... That you don't need to be as empathetic. Um, that's the good. Because the guy who won a Grammy, won an Emmy, and an Oscar, who fought and tried really, really hard for 20, 30 years to become a success in like th at least three major, major entertainment industries, was betrayed by the love of his life of 20 plus, 25 plus years. We shouldn't feel sorry for him. That's such a... Yeah, he's, yeah, he said a lot of stuff like that. Um, but the thing is, yeah, I don't disagree. You know. What I'm saying is, it doesn't quite sound like something I would say, but I don't disagree with my my sentiment, which is probably the imagine fucking. So we talk about this a lot when someone reviews something, um, that it'll like just give you an indication of how they deal with stuff in real life. If a kid is crying because his parents murdered in the street in front of him, and you see this butler with him, I wouldn't be like, well, he's gonna be fine. Just you know, man up. <laughs> I'd be like, no, he's been tormented. It's like he's a millionaire or billionaire rather. And it's like, I don't, I don't know what you. <laughs> his parents like so uh yeah um it's uh it's a really dumb thing to say so i still agree with the sentiment so continue all right uh ta -ta -ta. that's all well and good make the crew seem fine even <laughs> if we ignore all the insensitive go kill yourself jokes oh jokes others. yeah jokes we definitely we literally tell people to kill themselves in a non-joking way that's right um uh, Mm -hmm. uh, calling others dumb, childish, etc. up to that point. Just okay, so... To, to be clear, he's making it sound like calling people dumb and childish means that your your character is in question. Like... Well, the person who wrote this well, is Well, you need to know the context. What what did the per why would it, Why would someone say that somebody's being dumb or childish? To be honest, dude, I don't know that calling someone childish is not really ever going to make me be like, Oh my god, there must be something oh seriously god. wrong with you. How it, could have he? No. He said he was a doo-doo head. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in the EFAP where they discuss Mandalorian and the creator who cried saying Luke, yeah, that's Star Wars Theory, mm -hmm. Rag says this, I will absolutely gatekeep emotions. You are an adult. You shouldn't be crying at fiction. I actually said worse things, but I forget the actual quote. Can you please uh, well, I thought, stop paraphrasing I don't, things? I was going to say, I don't remember you saying you shouldn't points. cry at fiction. I, I don't it, recall saying that either. Um, I will absolutely stand by the like fact that what he did was pathetic and he does in need fact, to grow up. Well, there's there's no way he said that. <laughs> we, we, can, we can repeat the position. And again, if you disagree with this, Rags, go ahead. Like, I, I thought it was that it was the sight of Luke that makes him break down in tears. And I specifically said, like, yeah. that's a problem, especially if you see, like, images of Luke in your, your local day-to-day, -day, just a poster and you start crying in a store. But, like, you've got to get that under control. Um... But, like, if you're, you know, immersed into a movie, a story that has a particular payoff in it that's all about, like, uh, something that's going to mean a lot to you, so it's like, I, I, yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. But um, they were saying, like, yeah, but you don't understand. It's to do with uh, how he recovered from cancer. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That, but the thing is, like, that can, that's a thing it. for everybody. And you've got to lock down stuff like that if it's going to be as simple as you see an image of Luke. Which is all that was. Uh, this is part of the whole point, that Mandalorian was completely meaningless. Um, but it really got to people just because it was Luke with a lightsaber, and so I wonder, like, does that extend to like a keyring, where he's just there with his little lightsaber, yeah. and, and you what know, and if it does, you need what to about be... a Pez dispenser? I mean, how far does it go? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he just see, he just sees a Pez dispenser, embodied head, and starts bawling in mall at Walmart. Oh, well, yeah, and 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 of course, um, whatever defense you come up with him, that should actually uh, reflect onto uh, what's his name, the one that is famous for. Crying in a cringe way, um, like the trailer guy who like cried. Yeah, yeah. The, the teaser trailer for Rise of you Skywalker. Know, yeah, that guy is a problem, and he needs to fucking grow up. Exactly. And if someone was said like, "Wow, you're insensitive for, for you know judging uh, Star Wars theory too harshly," I'd be like, "Well, you're insensitive for judging that guy too harshly." Um, uh, and I Eric, wonder where the line Eric is. Bust. Eric, Eric, Eric Butts, Butts that's the one, yeah. It seemed to me that... Those two like, things look shockingly similar to me. Exactly. That's, that's the position we took. I know it was unpopular, but it's... I mean, we're here to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> it's not like we're just gonna lie, it's like, it seems to be. Uh, but yeah, go, go ahead, because yeah, like, that's something yep. that, yeah. 
That was how Rags responded to a person seeing their fictional hero that helped him get through cancer as a child, cry at seeing them on screen. You bet your ass, and I'd do it again. Uh, funny how that's not insensitive, right? I don't care if that's insensitive. I was going to say, I don't think I've ever judged uh, the morality of an action based on s strictly if it's insensitive. Because, like, I've said insensitive things to people when the goal is to get them to realize something more important. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I uh, just, I really don't care if you consider that insensitive. And that's why I um, wonder about that quote from me. I'm just like, did I really say it was insensitive? That just sounds strange for me to... Or did you put that in there because it's like, ah, see my wrong... Right hook, you were insensitive. See, I uh, set it up and me. I paid. Dang. Fringy, don't be too critical of this guy. He compliments you significantly soon. Ooh. Oh, uh, Ma really? Mahler will call a real person. <laughs> That's so strange. Mahler will call a real person insensitive for seeing their, uh, for talking about fictional characters, but has this to say about Rags who insults real people constantly. What is this with real people? Uh, so, uh, the, 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 so the criticism I have of Cosmo is how his perception applies to real life. Not because I'm offended on behalf of Bruce Wayne. Like, what? I, th I figure that's what we're all doing. Whenever we, whenever someone says like, oh, I hope, you know, fucking that character gets their balls torn off and they're tortured to death because they crossed the road too quickly and it caused a bit of a, a scuffle. You'd be like, whoa. And it's like, what, do you care about this fictional character? It's like... No, that's not it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's to do with what you just said. Um, meanwhile, like, I've insulted people in real life. I don't need it to, like, he's like, oh, you don't have a problem with rags? Like, I don't have a problem with myself. It doesn't matter if rags is insulted people. I do it all the time. I don't understand. Let's see. Um, so, Mahler, uh, let's see. Uh, Mahler, you said, I think the most endearing quality of Rags is that he has no filter and will say what is on his mind. I'm not sure I've said that's most... your most endearing quality. It's definitely a strong it is one. one of, it is one of my most endearing qualities. I have many most endearing qualities. That is certainly one of them. Certainly among... It's up there. It's I very there. much appreciate... Most endearing qualities? Yeah. I have many <laughs> most endearing qualities. <laughs> I, but yeah, I, I stand by that. I appreciate that Rags uh, will say exactly what's on his mind, as opposed to hiding it from people mm -hmm. because it's unpopular. I think it's pretty neat. Um, I try to do that. I feel like a lot of us do. Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Most people would just call someone like that an asshole. Well, that's pretty oh, naive of you. Up. <laughs> like, just, shut up. That's, that's, very, that's very naive. That is... That's incredibly good people, naive, the idea good that people it's like... lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like, it's <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think if you think that I have no, like, obviously I'm filtered to some degree. Yeah. Just not much of a degree. <laughs> um... Let's see, there are so many examples in EFAP where the entire crew is far more insensitive to people more than Cosmonaut is about fictional characters. Well, Cosmonaut was talking about a real person, but... yeah. Well, with Will Smith he was, but even if he was Will talking Smith. about... Bro it's not about Bruce Wayne, it's about you, his position. It's about his, yes. Yeah, it's if about you say things about him. fictional characters, it can say a lot of... Because uh, fictional characters tend to have attributes of real people. And like... So yeah. like I don't know about you guys, but I, I love it when is, someone's like, I'm making a big point, they have one example and it's bad. Hmm. Yeah, and, and so like, the, we gotta spend this whole time listening to arguments that just don't... They sit on a like, faulty foundation, yeah. by really shitty, exactly. Uh, yeah, it, it's, and it makes you wonder, the people who say those sorts of things about fictional characters, <laughs> and those traits that fictional characters have are real, what happens when those people meet real people with those traits? It's like, Ugh, you know, it's, it's never been That's about the Will Smith thing. Yeah, it's never been about the well-being of fictional characters. It's about what you're saying is applicable to real life and how immoral that would be. Yeah. Let's see. Um, da 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 da. Fringy is. Let's see. Yeah, Fringy is probably the most down-to-earth, approachable, and morally aware person that. Oh, like socially aware. Uh, morally aware person <laughs> that enters that panel from That's standing crew reference. to guests. They all act in bizarre and questionable ways. So, rip every person who's been on EFAB except Fringy. <laughs> oh, well, then go for it to yourself. Good. Yeah, that, that yeah. definitely is one of them. Was <laughs> it's, it's, it, feels, it feels so weird. It's like, oh yeah, no, fr you, Friggy, you're right. It's like, you'd be, you do realize that you'd be like shitting on people who I like, right? Like, 
<laughs> you're the good one. You're the colored you're the good one. one what, what exactly <laughs> is, is the house what are you guest for? <laughs> This reminds me, I, I was talking to Muller earlier about this, where I, this happened a couple months ago, uh, where there's a Reddit post and they were saying, everybody in EFAP is an asshole except for Fringy and Chad. And it's just like, why do they get a pass? I don't think that... I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> it's not, like, no, no offense, I think you're a really nice person, Fringy, but I don't think you've been exceptionally less critical than anyone else. Uh, like, well, You're pretty much... You, you, you get people shit, even in the comments, when they're wrong. So, yeah. I yeah, I, I, don't know, I don't know why I've been singled out as yeah. that's it's, it's interesting that's all but again i i don't know it's like it i like you, you've been like consistently shitting on people who i like so that's like this fucking worthless you know as it says like praise especially when like i disagree with all of these things that we've had leading up to this point Let's see. My brain is still uh, slow. Don't worry, I'll catch up. <laughs> ah, it's all right. Like six o'clock for you or something like that, isn't it? Really, really early. Oh well, yeah, it's early. Well, they Very say early. my favorite example of Mahler being delusional is delusional. during the Resident Evil Village content. Delusional. Oh, wow. Here we fucking go. Here we that, fucking that, go. Let's see. Resident Evil Village. <laughs> all right. How many bullets should it take to kill the undead bioweapon zombie rags? Chat question when Rag said guns should be more effective. I respond, I don't know how many stupid questions from morons do I have to answer? And I'd say it again. <laughs> yeah, so uh, to pause there, right? What's happening? And so this can be, that I do as well. The, Rags has detected bad faith, and that's why he responded that way, which is why I completely Absolutely. understand. This happened. Um, Technically speaking, yesterday, I, I you know, after all the praise Fringy just got, I'm allowed to do this now. So, uh, the, oh, this boy. was this was a detection on my part. I'm not saying it's true, but you could tell that I, I if you remember, we were watching Final Destination, and um, uh, it, at the end of the first movie, when they think they've defeated death, uh, I, I think they say like, oh, they can like live normally now or something, or they they can assume that death isn't like hunting them down, or whatever. And I think you said, like, well, what, what difference does that even make? Because what is death, right? And I think the point you were trying to make was just that uh, you could still die in any way, shape, or form, and that could still have been death, right? Uh, I was more talking about the what does the story, from the from the broad perspective of the story, like, what 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 exactly... Or, or I guess, yeah, I was talking about what will the characters take away from a... Uh, like, how will they interpret that? Yeah, meanwhile, I just immediately thought what you were saying was, like, there's not a meaningful difference in the fact that they've stopped being actively hunted by the wind and all crazy Which things happening is. all the time. And I was like, oh, obviously there's a significant difference here. And, like, um, it, it was almost like it, it was registered to me in a way that was just like, how could you possibly, like, why are you saying this? You know exactly what, I think it was YMS was saying it. And I was like, you know what is being referred to when you say, like, things are meaningfully different now. Especially if it's been six months without any crazy Rube Goldberg contraptions trying to kill people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Um, that This can happen. And what, what Rags is saying is, like, my guns are anemic. And then someone goes, oh, yeah, Rags? Well, how many bullets should it take to kill a bioweapon? It's just like, how long yeah, is a piece of much. string? Fuck you. Like, why are you saying that? Well, you need to... You can accept the fact that Rags is saying the guns are anemic. That, that it's like, yeah. Uh, we have a basic understanding for, like, if you take... You know if I like, had to shoot 10,000 bullets at the Death Star at the end of a Star Wars game? I'd be like, this is fucking lame. And then someone says, yeah, well, how many bullets should it take? To it's like, you're ignoring my point, obviously. So, like, why even bother? Mm -hmm. um, so all, I remember the context, too. This is all within the context of Rags liked the, the feel and the TTK of RE4. And he felt that RE8, the enemies were too spongy. And that was the theme of the conversation for about four hours. So... That's exactly like yep. it was very mm -hmm. obvious where yeah. everybody stood. Some people disagreed, some people agreed. So continue. So moving on. Um stronger guns and less ammo is something I can agree on, Mahler. Skip to Super Chat catch up reviewing a Reddit post. By the way, yeah, um, I don't want to sit there having to shoot a normal enemy eight times in the head with my 1911. I'd rather it take yeah. Fuck that. That's shit. It's super unfun. Um, let me see. Uh, these, uh, Rag, uh, skip to Super Chat catch up reviewing a Reddit post. Rags was really toxic to someone who just asked a question in response to his criticism. Mahler didn't act like this. Reddit comment. Go back and watch that moment. I was just as toxic as Raz wa Rags was, says Mahler. 
He was not. He literally imagined himself being as toxic as Rags simply because they are friends. So what I meant by that is I agreed with Rags, <laughs> as I just agreed with him, right? I believe you're being bad faith if you ignore Rags' point and instead go, Oh yeah? How much bullets should a baddie take? <laughs> Um, I didn't say it the exact same way as him, but my point is I agree with him, so I'm just as toxic. Which is true. Um, and I get annoyed that Rags gets a lot of shit for things that I do, too. <laughs> and then I get, like, removed from the equation. So it's not something I imagined. I agree with him. I just agreed with him. It's true. I agree with him. We have this oh, kind of self... We have this kind of self-delusion from someone so and focused on... psychologist again. Yeah, they're all over the place. Uh, Experts they everywhere. Can't, there must not be jobs for psychologists out in the real world. <laughs> they're just it's a it's an it was a saturated market. It's an oversaturated. It's a market. saturated market, so you give it for free on Reddit posts. Yeah, <laughs> we could save ourselves a lot of money here. Mm. Yeah, just yeah. go to Reddit. And <laughs> Reddit like, will get you sorted straight your, away. Your mental health issues get you the this... treatment and care you need. This kind of self-delusion from someone so focused on character consistency is hilarious. Mahler as a person is as inconsistent as they come and will rewrite reality even to make himself the bad guy for the sake of a friend. Noble, but still very weird. Noble but weird. Like some fucking I come sound like some fiction obsessed fucking loser. But oh, I, I, I incorporate my film criticism into my day to day life with my friends. It's so I fucking was... bizarre. I um, like the idea that uh, like the molar is up is like a goblin in a cave <laughs> who starts twisting around and like re, re rewriting his own DNA like, to, to become a little bit different. Just well, like, hey, it's like noble. Rags. It's just weird. It's it's, um, it's noble but weird to watch this goblin in the cave. You know what's funny about this is it highlights what's becoming something that we've been noticing, uh, certainly me and Fringy, right, about like criticisms that come up for different things where uh, yeah. people can't understand humans and so they assume it's a, like a inconsistency instead of like trying to rationalize it in any way that can make sense. They choose inconsistency. It's like they've completely ignored that I agreed with everything Rag said. And have concluded instead that I rewrite reality for the sake of my friend. Like, what? It's all like, live. People can just, hear everything that's happening. Well, exactly. So first of all, rewatch the actual content and maybe go into <gasps> it a little bit more. Like asking a bit much. A little less with a conclusion in mind that you want to reach. I lost the second point, but let's let's continue. <laughs> it's, fu it's, it's funny it as well because uh, I was just going to say that uh, the idea that you know. This this is all definitely the truth, and they've got one example that's broken again, and they've concluded this huge criticism of my character. Just like, wow, what a great case you've made. Yeah. Did someone did someone say rags really is an angry little muppet most of the time? But you spelled rags R H A G S, so it wouldn't <laughs> highlight for me in the chat. <laughs> angry little muppet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. I'm not stating a definite, just asking, because the new EFAPs don't feel right. You are probably just getting tired of them acting like a club of who can be more insulting. Can you believe that's something they said after uh, the Colin Sanders EFAP we did recently? Yeah, that is very strange. We got along mm, quite well mm. with Colin. Uh, and when you compare that to uh, Twin Perfect's behavior and how we treated him, it should be pretty clear, yeah. night and day clear how the way that you act and the things that you say determines the response that you get from us. And can I just say, he's like, you're probably tired of them being just so insulting. After saying, every single person on EFAP except Fringy acts in bizarre and questionable ways related to morality. Um, it's sad how often EFAP is cruel, assholeish, uh, hypocritical, judgmental, Mola's delusional on top of all of that. It's like, thanks for all of these really this, harsh uh, character criticisms. This, this... Man. Not insulting at all, by the way. That's just- that's, he's just being, like, objective. He's just describing how things are. We're the ones that are very insulting, you see. He says, this could just be me, considering my anemia is getting worse. I've been having trouble understanding things lately. Don't know the connection, but wish you the best. Well, that's a friendly ending. That's nice. We'll bow to wrap that up in. So yeah, oh, um... Package. What a fucking insane comment. Uh, and- and, like, this is all coming- so... That was just one. We'll, we'll just check out a few quick ones now. Um, 
to, to give you an idea of how people are feeling about this whole post scenario that we've already been through is complete bullshit. Um, got a... I feel your pain on a spiritual level. Feels bad, man. 73 points. This is about the main points. post, by the way. Jesus Christ. Fucking I hell. Like, again, instead of feeling pain on spiritual levels, you should do some objective research to see it, if what you're being told is true. Just look at the meme and check. That's all you had to do. It's mm -hmm. a meme. It can't be untrue in any way. I mean, it's a meme. Memes are always true. Um, And then you got for yeah, what it's worth... Because remember... I actually, continue. Oh, I was going to say, so for what it's worth... Oh, they... uh... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, go, 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 go. For what is worth, they probably uh, forgot about uh, it, and now's the chance to make a new first impression. It's like we didn't have any issue. None of us had any no issue. issue. There was no, no issue. issue no, there was no problem. You've invented a problem. Yeah. So, so we had no issue with the person who commented about the misanthropy pony stuff. Yeah, that stuff blindsided us. This stupid fucking anime meme and that dumb long post came out of nowhere, as far as we're concerned. And then you got, also, side note, I think people can make some pretty huge mistakes about something, someone they've been talking about for seven plus hours. I wouldn't blow Rag's potential distaste for you out of proportion. He tends to judge people harshly anyway. Uh-huh. It just... <laughs> it's like this weird sort of like, you'll be fine, don't worry. I was like, watch the fine. fucking reference. You, you, damn. And then you, you got... Uh -huh. Damn, bro, I'm sorry, but it could be worse. You could be Mike from RLM getting shot on by his childhood idol, Captain Kirk himself. It's like, these scenarios aren't even the same at all. Like, yeah, we do they, they, don't even, they don't even approach what it was. Not even but the, I guess the stratosphere. Easy, like, in, but here's the thing. It's really easy to think that's the case if you read the meme and assume that it's true. <laughs> like, I was just I reading these, like, what the hell's happening? You got... Yeah. Oof, times 1,000. Damn, dude. I read your super chat as you posted it. was kind of excited for the invite, too. It's like, what? we you said guys, it'd be what, fine. Why? You, <laughs> did you not listen to what we said? It was so cut. It was so normal. We've said many times was, since earlier EFAPs. We'll sort it out eventually. We'll have Miss Anthropony yeah, on. Many times. Many times. We've never said anything against having him be on. Like, not well, a we'll, single time. He was just talking about how we, well, I rewrite reality. It's like, I'm getting a vibe here. <laughs> it's just a little well, bit. Yeah, because remember, all that happened was you read, you don't need to talk about the show as you do, to which we just said, well, we don't know anything about the show, so we won't. And earlier on, we said that we would potentially have him on. Exactly. And so, like, what? what so, so that's that's what happened, and that's been spun into like all this. And specifically, one of the one of the comments you read out, they said, "and talk about MLP," and you repeatedly all said that you had no interest in MLP. You said it didn't say it was a bad show, just that you weren't Not that interested. Yeah, there's no you shit. The opposite. Yeah. There's no shit storm, and there's no negativity. It's literally just like it's probably the same thing would happen if they said we really want to break down fucking i don't know er we'd be like i not the person the show <laughs> and i'd be like i have not seen er and i don't know a lot about medicine really so i don't know that that would and i imagine everyone here would be like yeah i'm not really i don't know anything about er and it's like yeah, yeah there you go no that but it's a show with many many years of history and a lot of extreme extreme emotions both positive and negative toward it so it's not something you just want to dip your toes in exactly any, any watching or research but one of the things I think that is kind of behind this, and you know, it's my turn of being a backseat psychologist, but <laughs> I get the idea from that initial, the the little anime beam there at the beginning, um, this parasocial relationship issue there, where this person's obviously watched uh, EFAP, I'm assuming for hours and hours and hours if they watched at least one episode. So they have a lot of emotional attachment to the cast. You know, they 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 know a lot more about um, the discussions and the cast, then the cast knows about them. And now that they've invested, I guess it was a hundred euros into a super chat. They now feel that they, their relationship is very strong and that their understanding is much more strong with the people on the show than the people, the people on the show know nothing about this person. So they feel it's like some sort of weird, uh, relationship betrayal that their comment was, you know, slightly dismissed or. And they're like, okay, that's fine. We'll talk about that later, and kind of like just put to put to bed without any serious dis discussion. And I, th I see that as a problem because that that meme is extremely like, look what they've done to me. And yeah, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. You 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 got a super chat. You thanked him for the super chat. You answered the question. Yeah, maybe we'll get that person on sometime. But I don't really have much of an interest <laughs> in MLP, and that was it. 
That was so. it. Yeah, that's. I guess that's why I don't understand why you read so negatively into that. It's a good meme. <laughs> we got. Yeah, we have plenty of. Meme. We have plenty of memes coming name. in. People yeah. are very. <laughs> 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 that. That's a good baby. Um, and you guys work so fast. Yeah, they are pretty fast. That I saw. The, uh, I don't know if you had this one in the selection. I might be jumping the gun. Well, wait. Was, yeah, I've got uh, we've got another three. So hang on. Um, because this this one I really wanted to do next. You know, what? hey Rags, you want to read this one out? Oh. I would love to read this one out. All right, yeah, that was the one. What does RPG Haven have to say? He says, "I hate." when podcasters misread shit and move on. Wouldn't you at least reread everything once in your head to make sure you understood it? So now, you understand what you're asking. Me. Well, <laughs> wait, be before, before that, do you know what misreading means? It means, I thought I read it correctly. Yes. Yes. So you're asking so why me... Would, how would you reread it? How would again? I know? Yeah, and then it's like, well, the solution is you simply read everything twice. It's like... We are very behind Super Chat Catch Up right now. Well, <laughs> it took I, I us 25 like just... hours to get through 150s Super Chats. Also, I don't know, you just... didn't misread anything, so there's that. No, I, well, I did misread. Well, no, I... I misread. I put it. I took out the "you don't have to." I said "you have to." I, I took out the "don't" by accident. But again, oh, you? Yeah, yeah. I, I said oh, the the commenter said you have to watch. You have to talk about MLP with them. When what they actually said is you don't have to talk about MLP with them. It made no fucking difference at all. We just said yeah, we're not too interested in MLP. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. Like what the f if anything, you got a longer up, answer than you would have gotten because we would have just said uh huh. I I, so, I also saw someone someone changed. replied. It was late in the stream for them, and this happens sometimes, but it wouldn't hurt. Yeah, it would. Like rereading everything twice, <laughs> and rereading it that's like, like gonna, that's twice the time. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt. Do you know how out of our way we try to go <laughs> to make sure that we read every single super chat? And I, I can't yeah. believe I'm getting this shit when, I, like, again, late past nine hours or whatever, and it's like I misread one word. And it's like, wow, this and is fucking this whole unacceptable. Thing is spun off, yeah, like <laughs> fucking. I hate when podcasters misread shit after nine hours and don't even say anything <laughs> that harsh. Yeah, we it's give up. I saw misreading like, a third of our entire Wednesdays to do these super chat catch ups. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, <laughs> they can go for a bit more. Than... Well, yeah, I I hate to uh, pull this sort of stuff on it, but it's just like you understand, we're doing everything we can to get through all of these and make sure every one of them is read. And now we get punished we made for one it for mistake some reason. After yeah, after nine hours, and then because of that, it's like, wow, these fucking assholes. They just I feel your pain when people shit on you, even though they didn't, because I didn't check. Like you couldn't check the timestamp. You couldn't just check the timestamp to see if he was actually what he said was true. But then, when like Mola misreads one word after nine hours, <laughs> spins off into this. Actually, yeah, and, like, it was eight point seven three hours. I, I don't mm. know, like like all kinds of things that happen with super chats. Uh, they can glitch out, and I don't see them. They can be ones I accidentally don't read because I I just accidentally don't see it. It can be ones that I miss the words in. It can be ones that we don't understand what you meant, and unfortunately, we can't answer it. Any of these things can happen. And I, I don't know if we need this disclaimer, but if you send a super chat, you have to be ready for any of these results, because it can happen. You go, I'm sorry, you guys are getting paid to read comments. How much of a sacrifice is Wednesday if you're getting paid for it? You know, like, we try to respond to, like, every question and actually spin them off into conversations if possible, right? Like, um, there's no a lot less this? we could be doing. There's a lot less we could be doing. We could be like, ah, no, we missed him, sorry. Thanks Dude, we, for the money. Uh, see there was, you. Like, there was that's... A That's post on the Reddit entirely... saying "give up," like like just just let them go, cut your losses, just uh, move on with the yeah, new there, ones. There, that that definitely happens, and there'll be people who like don't want us to spend that much time talking. Like people get mad when it's like, "All right, we've watched like a whole video. There's four hours. Now let's talk about super chats." It's like, no, keep watching the, the videos. Like that happens exactly. And well, again, and then the no viewership decreases when we start doing the the super chats, but we still do it anyway. Absolutely, the much much less people. Mm -hmm. Watch the super chat catch ups. The thing is, yeah, like, how we many... put in the same amount of time as a normal EFAP. 
And even for even them. with all of this, it's not like if everyone started to hate it, like everyone in the community, it's still gonna fucking do it because it's not about the consequences the in terms of like. Yeah, it's it's we're doing this because it's the right thing to do as far as we're concerned. So it's gonna keep happening. Mm -hmm. It's just bizarre and that we're getting at, like look at how that's being rewarded. <laughs> yeah. Look at how that effort is being rewarded. <laughs> Well, yeah, also, you know, I don't know who else does that. I don't know who else does. They have they go back to all of the super chats and the ones they couldn't read, and they take and extra time, a lot streams. of time, and do dedicated streams yeah. just to read them. Not to mention yeah. having three people listening to them, responding to them, which means it's just going to take longer and longer and longer. But it takes as long as it takes is the principle. No, I I watched several podcasts where they all just say, you know, they read out the, the super chat and oh yeah, thanks, yeah, I'll think about that, and that's it. You know, it might have been like twenty dollars super chat, and they get an acknowledgement. That's it. I don't know of any other podcast that uh, specifically ch carves out time to make sure to respond to every single super chat. I mean, granted, a lot of people do it in real time, therefore they get short answers. Yeah. But um, I think people, uh, I, you know, coming from firsthand experience, I think people misunderstand just how much uh, moving parts, especially in a really uh, deep conversation. Uh, how many moving parts there is to run a, a podcast uh i i started a podcast a couple years ago and my first episode i i was so caught up with doing i was doing a, a ranking uh kind of actually inspired by your game game of thrones ranking uh on efap actually <laughs> i was doing a ranking thing i was managing people's expectations there's four people on the call and i was so caught up on that that i wasn't even reading comments i missed a few super chats like that's that can happen if you're if you're in the back, you know, uh, grabbing images, responding to comments, things like that, you can totally miss things. So the fact that you go back and make sure you you catch everything and and respond to these these super chats is is pretty commendable. You may not be the answers that people wanted, but that that goes with the risk. You're supporting the you're supporting the podcast, but you may not get the right answer the the answer that you're looking for. That just kind of comes with the territory. Um, and a lot of people mentioned it's like, yeah, uh, a lot of the Friday Night Tights people, I think uh, Gary always squeezes them up, and then Drinker will do it for Open Bar, and Adam and Sitch uh, do it. Adam and Sitch are probably the closest to what I'm talking about, which is where um, it doesn't matter how much money is given, it's about whatever the question brings in terms of whatever answer you want to, to give, and uh, the fact that they have the two, the two will be there for the... Um, the super chats, right? Because the thing is, if I did, and I could have done this, I could have said, Rags Fringy, like, don't worry about it. I will always catch them up. I'll do a Wednesday stream on my own and I'll just go through them. And then I also read them and went, yeah, or no, or thank you, and just moved on to the next one, next one. Like, we wouldn't be behind. No, um, why would be no, behind. no, not at all. Uh, and, and that's the thing. We're not talking about, like, what is the most ethical or anything. It's just, it's really strange to do it what, in what I think is probably the most ethical way. And then, like, we're getting shit on it because I misread a word. It's like, fuck it, hell. Um, and yeah, I guess that that kind of this ca caps it off. Is the 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 original poster wow. after seeing all of these comments was like, I usually don't give supers and never watch the commercials in their vids. This was a, su a super to show my support for the last two years, but I stay away from supers uh, supers from now on. Like, oh well, that's totally right. fine. Um, that's your choice. I apologize. Sure. I misread I mean, a word. You get it for that, yeah. And again, like, I just don't get it. It's like, yes, I misread a word, but, like, it changed nothing. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and like I said, uh, it's, it's, you know, the, this is about a lot of components right now. I hate the fact that this got 220 upvotes in under a day. That's bullshit. Um, Pretty disappointing. What the hell is going on with the Reddit again? It was what it was like three months ago that we, we did one of these. Where it's just like mm. to, to quote my favorite hero of all time: "Do better. This is unacceptable. <laughs> all this do better." Because the thing is, if we don't do a section like this, it festers. People remember this as that time where they fucked up, and it'll just be referenced forever again. The fucking commenter in this one tried to reference the RE8 stuff as if he still had a point. He doesn't. We destroyed <laughs> all of that. It's the most yeah. embarrassing criticisms again. Um, you know, it, 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 I don't know what else. To, it's just fucking annoying. Um, and again, if, if someone's like, well, so what's the significance of the 220? It's just like the, the posts on that subreddit usually get like an average of between like 50 and 100, I think. So yeah, like, so this seems to be a, a position that a decent number of people are like, that is reasonable and correct. Yes. And if you upvoted they this didn't on the Reddit, acknowledge you, you and that up. was, they, they were, they were cunty to you, like. Even though I didn't check the timestamps to see what they actually said, mm. or if you did, then I'm not sure how you could possibly 
like reasonably walk away from that going like wow how unreasonable they misread a word and then said that they're not interested in or that they can't talk about a specific show because of it yeah just uh really frustrating to just be like like i said it was between recordings having a time of our lives watching some final destination reacting to it and then i was just like ah a thread about how awful we are because i misread a word okay <laughs> and like the whole community is like, this is true. Yeah, and it's just so sad. You know, the yeah. big, like somebody oh. said, what a bunch of assholes. It's like <laughs> misreading what? a word and then responding earnestly to that misreading. Like, what? What do you? Uh, what were we supposed to do? I guess aside from like you not make a simple error. Like, what? What else can we have done? So yeah, that's that. Uh, fun. <laughs> really fun. Um, like I said at the beginning of this, it's uh, it was an audit for EFAP from the audience that is now reversed, as it often does, into EFAP auditing the audience. Not acceptable. Not cool. And uh, I hate it because like, it always comes up, it's just like, yeah, they're not so good with criticism. I just feel like it's just, just grab a mirror every once in a while whenever you stop making those statements, okay? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and this is the thing, I'm going to do it for the, this important to mention, lots of great little users on uh, on Reddit, you know, in and among the hordes, um, well, there's hordes among hordes, you know, and, and the people who manage it, they're all fantastic, there's no, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want the mods and the creator to be like, right, it's time to nuke any threads that are critical if they're not 100% accurate, it's like, no, 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 I just wish, fucking wish, that people, because there were people in that thread, you can find them, who were like, well, you know, it's not quite as bad as you're making it sound. Like if you watch it, it's not that it's not that bad. It's like thank fuck there are still some people. It's half right. Well, yeah, because the truth is that nothing fucking happened. It was totally chill. Um, and so like I I don't know what else to do other than try and prevent the festering and just compel everyone in Reddit to do fucking better. Because at least I don't know. Oh. It, go ahead. Sorry, I've just noticed because the the commenter who made the meme said like. In all caps, don't take this too seriously. I'm not sure what the context is for that, but like... Don't take that too seriously. The fact that this got spun off into all this, like the... Well, it's a bit late I mean, for that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. well, I it, guess that's what I mean. It's like, you so said you not this, mean and it? then it, it... Like, what did you think people... How did you think people were going to respond to this? Do you think people would be like, ah, funny meme, anyway, moving on. Don't take but, this like, too what, seriously, what, I'm never giving them money ever again. What were you fishing for? You keep saying, like, the meme, but what were you fishing for when you posted it? Because, of course, you were looking for a reaction because you posted on the internet, so, like, you wanted some kind of response. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Because well, it's just yeah, a lightning yeah, rod know. for loads of comments to say how, like... Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way... Really kind comment section for some of the stuff being said. I was just surprising. Mm. Yeah, um. uh, I don't know what to say. It's like Chas said, you made a bad meme and you lied. So I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know how seriously that's supposed to be taken. Well, so there are, the, it's, it's either that, or there are comments talking about, like, social anxiety and the whole parasocial stuff, and that people literally can, like, hear a thing. Like, say, for example, they're like, well, you should check out, um, fucking Interstellar, and then I go, I fucking hate Interstellar. And then we move on. <laughs> they could be like, oh my god, I just recommended something to him that he hates. Jesus Christ. And it's just like, what? Like, <laughs> you're fine, don't worry about it. And, like, people, <laughs> and so at that point, I would just, like, you know, if you're that tied up in the, um... The, the 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 idea that we could say something like that and it can make you have trouble eating and sleeping and stuff it's just like you gotta you gotta take a break maybe you gotta not be in these yeah. environments um because this is, it just reminds me of like twitter users where they explode and their whole life is ruined because several people are like you're wrong about that opinion you have and it's like you gotta be ready to be able to take that sort of stuff if you're posting to well, the entire world it ain't it ain't easy like it ain't easy to deal with that it's tough it's it's a different context, but uh, reminds me of that line from the Street Fighter movie with uh, M. Bison, where, you know, to you, me, uh, the day M. Bison, uh, you know, destroyed your village was the most important moment in your life. For me, it was Tuesday. Like, not, not that like, oh my God, I'm a, I'm a content creator. I'm so special. But just like realize that in the context of their life, this is a completely trivial event. So don't let it define you to them. This is not, this is not a huge deal. 
not a big event. They'll probably forget it in a week. So you just have to realize that your well, investment in things may not be the same as theirs. There's dramatic irony here that if I'd I, at the beginning of this, I asked, I think Rags just to, do, do, does is any of this recognizable with pieces of information? It's just like, absolutely not. But it's like, is it now? Is the person who did all this now something that probably bothers you? It's like... Yeah, fuck this guy. Exactly. Uh, and so if their only goal was to try and ease stuff up, because they said that the messages were sent to reduce the shitstorm and, like, Mola made it all worse, I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. line of logic there. Um, and yeah, I guess there's not much more to say on that one. Um, no. <laughs> I'm so glad that, that up in a neat little bow. we got to have J Log on Indigo and, and Mel along to see all of that. That's just the top notch <laughs> fun times on EFA. Uh, I mean, I was there for the other one as well, so. Oh, yeah, I dragged right. dra through one. I'm just trying to be less immoral from now on. Like, I'm not going to, I don't know, tell, call people slurs on my streams and tell them to kill themselves or whatever. I don't know. I just need to figure out what is immoral that I'm saying. <laughs> That's that's probably the well, worst part of it about it. Like, I, okay. Yeah, they kind of they kind of glossed over the whole morally aware thing. They just sort of said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah Fringy's the most morally aware. Moving on. Yeah, I'm assuming that just comes just, from the fact just... that a lot of conversations can rise from just statements get made, and then Fringy be like, "Oh yeah, is that true?" But I feel like we all do that. I don't understand why Fringy's getting I, this. I, I definitely don't think that's yeah, that's just made. Um. And as for like, because I think we've said this before, but uh, we it's worth repeating. It's like the whole like quote, and this is like they've told him to kill people to kill themselves as jokes. It's like, yeah, we've made our position clear on that yep. several times. Sure have. We will never want anyone to kill themselves as a result of liking a piece of media. It's a joke. It's an absurd joke. It's supposed to be funny because what an absurd thing to say to somebody who likes media. Like, that's that's the joke. <laughs> your your German everything you do is immoral. Okay, got yeah. me there. <laughs> Automatic loss. <laughs> also, be, two people tell, uh, told me to call them slurs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Rags, help me out here. How do I segue into Black Widow from here? Black Widow! <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. Black Widow was, is, is came out. Uh, getting back to the roots of what we do on EFAP, we're covering media. That's what you're all here for, to That's watch. That's what we wanted to do, yeah. Watch yeah. It. So that sometimes you gotta you gotta slap down like the uh gotta... these bad arguments and bad sentiment that just rises up. So that slapped away. Let's talk about movies. Yeah, I genuinely believe that it it can only get worse if it's never addressed, sort of thing. So I think so. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, this it, kind of stuff. Because you, you mentioned earlier, like, oh, bad at taking criticism. It's like, yeah, when I think the criticism is incorrect, yes, like. I don't like that. Well, it, um, I think YMS has had his arc for that. Because, for reference, YMS actually was there when this first was being talked about when we were doing stuff last night. And he was like, it's good to keep in mind that people on Reddit will literally upvote stuff just to see what happens next, not because they agree with it. And I was just like, that's awful. Mm. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> like <this> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just dirt shade, I guess, yeah. Because he's know. It's, it's weird. He's had, like, a whole blowout with his subreddit as well. Uh... Reddit, man, it's it's a it's a complicated beast. I have loads of fun on there in terms of just content being spread around, but the mindset, for lack of a better term, like sometimes I prefer Twitter. Do you understand how insulting that is, Reddit? <laughs> Oof. Discord is not there though. I remember. I, remember, um, I don't remember the exact subreddit names, but when Total Biscuit was still around, uh, he had it. The main most popular uh, subreddit was. Um, I think Cynical Bread or it might have just been Total Biscuit or whatever, but it was unofficial. And then he created an official one as a sister subreddit. And the the unofficial one was moderated by fans. And the official one was moderated by the actual uh, team. I think it, it possibly his wife. So uh, it was very, very different tones. So you you can definitely, like, communities can kind of run wild. And one was generally that none neither of them hated him because obviously they continue to watch his work but one of them was a lot more critical picked apart a lot more things whereas one was generally just i like this video mm -hmm. i really like this game things like that so it's an interesting thing it's a community is a really a living organism and and it doesn't take too much for to turn on the topic they're they're uh, excited or enthusiastic about it's it's very interesting um I was just gonna say, it's just someone in chat just said this, and like, it's, it's, I, what the fuck? 
Okay, so you guys are not bringing in ER so that there is no bad jokes being made in this new less toxic EFAP hypocrites. Not bringing so EOS disappeared. I don't know. EOS disappeared. Yeah, like yeah. we we'd have him on EFAP as many times as he wants to. He's he's just not around right now. Um, doesn't he stop making videos? And that's what he said. The reason I'm confused. He's oh he's saying it's a joke. Okay, because I was just gonna clarify. Like we we just said that we would do jokes. Event like oh, okay. to be fair, we can get pretty edgy sometimes with jokes. Okay, <laughs> but um Use the yeah. S. Worth clarifying um, for this for just anybody. Yeah, uh, I don't know where ER is right now, and I, I don't think he's made a video for a while. Uh, he's on hiatus apparently. So, but um, as soon as he's back, we'll, we'll grab him right up and talk to him about anything. Wait, <laughs> 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 we'll answer the question. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, so what was actually gonna, we're gonna talk about today? Uh, we'll try to do this part quick, but I'm assuming have you guys heard about the the deleted scenes for Black Widow? Yeah, no. I've seen uh, a few of them. No, I don't think I have, or I've, I've no. forgotten. So it made the film totally better, 100. Uh, I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, to go, I'll try and go through them relatively quickly, and then I can just give. I can't show the clips. Because uh, they get a little copyright. Assuming they would delete scenes, have, they have copyright attached to them, right? Uh, it uh, has, it, it, music, times. music, yes. If it's uh, they, it has to be specifically uploaded to Content ID for it to come up in copyright. But you might want to just pause just in case. Um, the first yeah, one was just would be good to play it safe. Uh, well, I'm not going to talk about all of them. Just the ones that have something interesting about them to say. The first one is a showner in a supermarket before Taskmaster has attacked her, like and everything, and just confirming she really does just shop. Casually, while the radio is talking about her to this like clerk, uh, uh -oh. fucking just, just adds another instance of that happening all over the movie. Yeah, so clever. Because this, uh, we saw her putting groceries into a, a a car, and I was like, I remember looking at it, being like, I guess I can't criticize her for doing things I haven't seen her do necessarily. So I don't know exactly yeah. what she did when buying them. But uh, yeah, that's just confirmation. Um. I told Rags about this, I know Free obviously knows about it. Um, this got cut, but if you remember when Alexi falls after being electrocuted in the prison, um, it yeah. then cuts to him like, he's got, a, I think, a bit of blood in his mouth, and he's looking at um, the helicopter, and he's like, Natasha, or something like that. That turns out there's a whole scene that got cut out there where a bunch of people come out and beat him up. Um, people that obviously don't like him from the prison. I think the bear guy is, is one of them. And lucky for us, we get an awesome slow mo shot of him getting kicked in the balls. Um, uh, making him nice. even more of a joke. Yeah, I'm glad that got cut. Y yeah, uh, and I saw this uh, posted on the subreddit actually with the title The One Thing That Would Have Made It Slot Perfectly into Phase 4. It's like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Isn't it a contract to, to be in a, any movie now as a man to get kicked? You, know, you, have to mis you must be able to be kicked in the balls at some point in the movie. And that happened in uh, Loki as well, repeatedly. I, and it happened in Endgame. Yeah. It's like a, a seriously, just a joke. Like, you, you'd be like, oh, is one of the deleted scenes of getting kicked in the balls? He's like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I started wondering, like, why did they cut it? This seems right up the kind of thing they want to do. Yeah, um, it is odd. Excellent Maybe they stuff. ran out of time. Like, maybe they realized that, they'd made fun of the character enough at this much, point. Yeah. So maybe maybe they even just, they realized maybe, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've gone too far. Uh, um, another deleted scene is good old Mason, the guy who's been providing uh, stuff to to Nat, is captured um, by Ross, which I thought was like, whoa, that's gonna fuck with the whole storyline completely, isn't it? Um, and it actually yeah, yeah. did something that I kind of forgot to really say anything about, but um, in this scene, uh, they not only find Mason, but they find a phone that's left behind by uh, Nat in order for Ross to find her at the Red Room. And it's yeah, like, if so you remember like, in the why film, did you get rid of these scenes? yeah, in in the <laughs> film they just say like, oh, he'll, I'll activate my thing and Ross will find me. And I remember in the video just being like, I guess she'll activate a thing. I don't, I don't even know, what, whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, they cut a scene where she actually like made that. Because this would thing. explain why Ross actually managed to get there, like in the time. Yeah, and it, yeah, or at least more, more so. Uh, it, it, it would make more sense how. that he got there. But then how do they explain how the uh, dealer gets out and provides her with a brand so that, new... So that's a big well, problem. that's probably... Yep. That's a, I'm imagining that's reshoots now. 
Um, well, yeah, maybe they had a scene to explain how he escapes yeah. Ross, too, I don't know. Because, of course, that scene is, like, unnecessary because the Avengers already had a Quinjet. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, the secret Avengers, or whichever one we want to call them. Um, and then, the best one, the top tier one. If you guys mm -hmm. think back to the video, I played a quote from uh, good old Kate Shortland saying, she doesn't even know how Black Widow escaped. You can make it up for yourself. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's tiring to it. see her escape again and again. Like, this is just, you know. So, um, what we see is Ross has got her in a, in a little van. Uh, it's like, oh, okay, I guess she's doomed. And then the camera zooms right into her, doing a, doing a sneak. She's got a little pin. She's got her cuffs on. They, they just didn't take anything from her. They just let her keep all of her gear, naturally. Because that's right. just in line with the film. And then Ross just keeps talking. And in the span of when we see her to when she does this, it's like seven seconds. He eventually like turns because she's not saying anything. And this is his she's POV. Gone. Oh, well, they just, they'll just turn the car around and go get, I don't know. He <laughs> Lost car in the convoy. The he, he didn't, yeah, first of all, last car in the convoy. Secondly, he didn't hear the van doors opening? Yeah, he didn't, really? He didn't hear her I just got out. really confused because I thought this was a terrace of some sorts for a second. It's like, wh wh where did he go with his POV? <laughs> it was like, oh, that's the back of the car. I just love his little face in the, the prior shot. He's yeah. just like, what? He's like, yeah, I know, Ross. I have no fucking clue. Like, she just escaped that easily. And I guess, yeah, they gave up. She somehow ran, which she could have just done in the first place. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Might as well have. But we need to show her how cool she is. She broke herself out. So and they um, turned around and found her. Oh, yo, boy. Because they have cars. So yeah, it's kind of funny to have a bunch of deleted scenes drop that are all terrible and just confuse everything, really. <laughs> like, if they were added it, it's like, nice, good job. Um, She's got, like, Alice Powers from uh, Resident Evil Apocalypse, where she can just appear at the top of buildings, just, like, fast travel. Oh, yeah. So, like, she's got uh, Al Alice Powers from Batwoman. She just there, she's there and not there, like, whenever she wants. Oh, yeah, and, um, Worth mentioning, someone in chat said uh, the Taskmaster is actually taken by Ross, not by the Black Widows. Yes, that's right. That was their original so intention, I guess. I guess. We... Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was reshoots, that other stuff, clearly. So, um, I thought that was all incredibly funny. Uh, th the film is terrible, as you guys know, but it's th yes. th that's my way of finally getting us to... Uh, we're going to cover a video that claims it's brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, that's, that's quite a leap. Yeah. That's still a leap, or am I stuck now? Um, it's just too late for you. I'm so sorry. God damn it. I'm just being moral and you have to kick me. I guess so. Uh, you are an awful person. Hey. Schlungo. Oh, it's Liz. German. You can't just say Schlungo on a stream. <laughs> You're sh the biggest Schlungo, Rags. Oof. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Rags is gonna sue you. I'm going to sue you for defamation. Go sue these nuts. Alrighty. Um, almost got what I'm looking for here. Okay. So, um, I was curious about this video, and then I looked at the comment section, and that was a big mistake. If you want to <laughs> give this a read, Ranks, you want to give it a look-see? All right, let's take a look here. As an MCU fan who watches YouTube analyses on the regular and is a reluctant Twitter user, I think your critique is the most fair and informed one I've seen. I think so many of the criticisms, the ones made by men in particular, I've mm. seen ignore all of the themes, yep. subtext, yep. and commentary. Mm. Love your videos, by the way. Fucking men. <laughs> men. There's fucking men. I'm telling you, man. You can say anything against men. It's fine. Those nasty, dirty, stinky fucking men. Ugh, Testosterone damn. makes in opinions invalid. And so, yeah, I was like, ooh. Didn't expect to see uh, sexism right in the top of the thing. And I was like, I guess I'll scroll down. What else is being said? <laughs> Check it out, Rags. Oh my goodness gracious. Let's pull this up. It pisses me off when people who make commentary videos, specifically men, <laughs> who speak about female-driven movies, will remove context from scenes so that their half-baked jokes can work and they can downplay its significance. Its possessive definitely has an apostrophe. 
People will complain that MCU movies are all the same, but then compare them when they try to do things differently. There is a lot of subtext and references to real life issues that is to be are completely ignored because people are so focused on what Black Widow did wrong rather than what it did right. It did everything wrong. <laughs> it did everything yeah. wrong, actually. Yeah. There wasn't really any I mean the camera was in focus, but lies. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> I, I read that that bit about men in Elrond's voice was Which like one? men. <laughs> men are weak. <laughs> men are weak. Men had their chance. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel bad not having anyone else or anything. Fringy, do you want to take this one? Uh, all right, sure. If I have. It's to. very different from the other two. You see. Uh, I am. Oh, I read ahead. <laughs> I am glad I have avoided most review videos about the movie. After seeing the discourse on Twitter, I knew far I knew few men on YouTube would be able to talk about the movie in a sincere and understanding way. I wholeheartedly agree with Julia's points. She's hearting these, by the why, way. Why, <laughs> yeah, well that, well, that was what I was going to say on the first one. It's like, what, what is what is the men thing? What what are we doing? Yeah, well, so if we do the thing of judging the comment section before like as a result as a result of the content creators be like man your people seem to hate men like what the fuck happened um yeah. I, uh and then um i guess we'll do this will be like the last one just uh okay. just keep curious yeah um, currently trying there it is currently trying to cast a spell to protect you from guys who make 12 hour videos yelling at women with different opinions ha <laughs> you spell a shit Sparklies. Sparkly. Why are you portraying women as stupid by insisting they cast spells? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she says, my worst fear in posting this. I need all the spells I could get. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh. Rookie or something. I just imagine uh, imagine the flip side of this is like, oh, you're a woman, you can't review Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, that's a man's movie. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> what do you know about guns? <laughs> like, this is, whoa. Why? Why are we? Why are we focusing on gender though? Like here, what what's going on? I don't know. <laughs> um, all the comments I just showed you are really highly voted. Many of them are hearted by her or agreed upon by her, and they're all like fucking men. They can't review Black Widow. It's like. You you guys need to stop. This is a bad road you're going down. Oh my god, mm. Julia Cudney. I think I know that name. She, I think she's one of those like cutesy fucking YouTubers with no brain. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, you got let them. That'll just drive more people to check out this video. It's like, that's fine. More people can check out our video. It's, 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 you know, we, I said say this for a lot of the ones we've covered. More people can check out all kinds of ones. Make their own opinions. It's totally fine. You know, I'll be helping, I guess, the casting more fiery spells against them demons that are us mm. and stuff. Why do they say this? That makes them look like lunatics. I know, okay. and then you've got someone who's like, <laughs> I, I guess you never watched their videos, so please don't comment when you don't know what you're talking about. Out of their hundreds of podcasts, they only talked about women's videos a few times, never yelling, and never for 12 hours. The video was 12 hours, but if you'd seen it, you'd know they covered the vid in two. They look at movies objectively and try to help you improve your YouTube channel. Please no hate. Please oh. no hate. Please no bully. It's like, that was a mistake. What are you doing I in this comment know. section? <laughs> Run! <laughs> Your rationality is not approved. We cast spells here. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, that, that was the video they're referencing is the one where uh, Jenny is talking about Joker, right? And so, ironically, you were defending uh, a creative work made by, quote-unquote, real people from somebody. That's the account who's made by a guy. Yeah, uh, right, yeah. So, well, why is she reviewing it? It's 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 a it's a gamers rise up movie. So yeah, she, Jenny she... shouldn't be reviewing Joker. It's a guy movie. I'll Come be on. doing that. Um. So yeah, that's that's the preamble. the The video is called "As No Doubt You're Aware Black Widow Is Brilliant," and uh, mm. oh, this one. Yeah, and and you know what's a super interesting tidbit about this one is that we were going to cover it soon after that Colin Sanders um EFAP we did, and what's in common with the one we watched with him and this video is they both go after the closer look. I uh, I think this is a video where I I messaged the creator. I put in a comment on this video. I think um, essentially. Oh god, I wish I could find it. Um, just one second, man. I wish I I don't know where it is, but I totally put a comment on this video. Um, oh, is it not showing up for you? No, I'm looking for it right now. 
They usually uh, filter it to the top when it's your comment, as in for you. Yeah, I gotta go to the Black Widow is brilliant. Um, this video. video. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So I said, like, I don't know if you, you can put this on this. Oh my God, she's one of those chicks that doesn't put any. <laughs> Capital letters in her title. I know I don't get it, and, and not in her, and neither in her fucking um, just typing either. Just every no, capital letter, maybe capital letter. It can't do anything with capital in it, I guess. Um, Can we like super? Right. And, and, oh man, uh, that is could be a misogynistic like creation. I don't know. No, but yeah, fucking hell, people type properly. G, it it doesn't take you really well, any. It, remember, like. Capital capital letters exist for a reason. Um, please please write with capital letters. Like, not not even invented by men. <laughs> capital letters are for men. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, Maybe. it takes me longer to type wrong because I just normally type correctly. That was your mistake. Um, so I asked her. I went to the comments of this video. I said, "Do you not think that it's horrifically damaging to Nat and her sisters as character and her sister as characters, effectively assassinating their heroness when they assault and then murder countless prison guards and prisoners with smiles on their faces and no future moments given to reflect on their horrific acts? These are unquestionably evil acts committed against the innocent the film displays our heroes doing blatantly. Does the evil they commit without reflection not make you question any attempt, however pathetic, this film makes at portraying these characters as empathetic or relatable? Right? Mm -hmm. So this is Julia Cudney's reply. More beloved action movies than I can name refrain from diligently considering our action heroes' righteousness upon amassing casualties, and that actually is a trend I take issue with. I do wish Black Widow's prison escape scene forwent the avalanche, but I don't find the film's indifference toward the prisoners unique, nor did, nor did that part ruin the whole for me. So, so it happens say... in other stuff. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant that's, film that's commentary, a, Julia. Fucking brilliant. But, but, but also, like, something you may notice is when you watch, like, other films, especially older films, there is actually a lot of consideration given to, like, trying to save civilians in a lot of, uh... Yep. In a lot of stories, like, where they will... Our heroes will put themselves in precarious situations to, like, make sure that civilians... Because I'm immediately thinking of Die Hard. You remember when John went to the roof and then he started firing in the air to, like, scare the, uh... All of the, um... The civilians to go back downstairs because it was yep. going to get blown up. There's that example, and like fucking older superhero films, it's constantly you have like the heroes trying to save people, like Spider Man trying to save yeah, people. He even, in even tries to to help the, the main villain because he doesn't know who he is. It's so, like, oh, just yeah, stay with me here, ones. have a gun and defend yeah. yourselves. Like, oh shit, okay. Both um, Avengers movies, you got a lot of concern for the civilians that's during the main yep. battles. That's right. Um, yeah. It's, it's become such a, a thing that's actually become a meme. Like, if you remember in the first Hellboy movie, uh, at one point, he's about to fight some sort of, like, Cthulhu demon thing, and then there's, like, a little box of kittens. And so he actually picks up the box of kittens and tries to save the box of kittens while he's fighting some, like, other dimensional being. It's every every uh, filmmaker knows that the way to endear a hero to you is to have them protect the innocent and the weak. Exactly. And, and make them yeah. fight the bad guy, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I just find it fascinating that we can watch all of the, the that's a huge scale, and it's not even addressed in, in any way, shape, or form. At least you can say BVS tries to address what happened in Man of Steel, but there's nothing mm. for Black Widow, uh, at all. So, I don't know, I just, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to me that, like, it, she said it didn't ruin it for me, I just feel like, is that not worth introspecting on? Like, why yeah. wouldn't that ruin it for you? Um, but yeah, the you... whole thing is that Black Widow wants to get rid of the red on her name, or however they call it. Exactly. And just oh, kills ledger. thousands, of, not thousands, but hundreds, possibly. Yeah. Like, hmm, that should be a problem that you should consider. Um, alrighty then, you guys ready? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh very I'm ready. I'm Lou real quick, I'll be right back. Wow. What can we talk about until he's back? What the fuck? I, I can't get over uh, how... how... Things. Moral things, I can't get over how irritating the the deliberate 
uh illiterate no no shifts and no uh capital letters in her writing like under no circumstances do you ever not capitalize i <laughs> no she's the next fucking ee e. coming she's that great it's it's uh it's like you ever see those bottles like was it vitamin water where everything's uncapitalized even the first letter of sentences it reminds me of that it's just just needless style i guess even her name her youtube channel name doesn't have capital letters yeah her name isn't yeah i don't get why people do it i think it's it's... like the uh it's the it's it's definitely like one of those because that's that's one of those like apple things right and like oh no wait not apple it's like you know the things where it it just has the name in lowercase then a full stop at the end that kind of yeah yeah and yeah i'm not i'm not a fan i I like my capital letters um it's style i don't know comment from chan did, did the deleted scene try to vilify the prisoners justifying their deaths in the avalanche was that its purpose it doesn't fix what they did i i don't know that that would be the case the the guy who kicks him in the balls is the guy that he broke the hand of so i think it's just trying to say like he's getting some revenge um and even I still did. right like if if someone is beating up somebody does that mean they deserve to be buried under snow is like i i i don't know about that and that's just one out of the many people there oh there was a couple of them but you know and and uh, to further back that up, the worse you make the prisoners, the better you make the guards, because these are awful people. So oh. you're you're killing you're either killing horrible prisoners and good guards, or you know yeah, it's a disaster. Good prisoners, horrible guards, whatever. <laughs> Alrighty then, let us begin. Fine. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Utilize my link, squarespace.com slash Julia Cudney, for 10% off of your first purchase of a domain. The year is 2014. Oh, Russia hosts the Winter oh, yeah. Olympics in a few Oh, years. God, it's in- Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clever joke about her, her, her girth. What? <laughs> She's a beautiful so- woman. Rags, yeah. Rags loves girth, as far as I know. So. I do. I love me some girth. Winter Olympics in February. In March, Ellen hosts the Oscars, and by May, Kim Ye has tied the knot. They'll last, I'm sure. August, however, is the month at issue because in it, it... so it's because I guess there's a song called August, also in all lowercase. It's very artistic, and so when she said the word August, she showed a picture of the song August. All right. I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess that's. I was. I guess. I was just. It's very clever. Iggy Azalea releases the music video for her second biggest hit, featuring Rita Ora, Black Widow. People? It pays homage to Kill Bill, similarly to how Fancy's video paid homage to Clueless. The song itself reminds 16-year-old Julia of her most hated Katy Perry song, Dark Horse, which makes sense considering. It- what I'm glad- the fuck I'm- are we doing? <laughs> I think I'm glad that I don't know any of these people. This. This is all just like okay. Just right. going over my head. I don't she, know any of these references. Very, yep. very aware of the pop culture singers, I guess. Yeah, this, this, I'm assuming this is all going to come to a point. I hope it's so. originally composed by her for Prism. The more you know. Anyway, I'm kidding with all of this. We've gathered here today. What? No, there wasn't a <laughs> I point even all that <laughs> No, that. all that garbage? Very Fuck confused. Me. I didn't get it. But I, I know it current finished. year things. I, yeah, that's kind of what it comes across as. I just know these music things from current year. I'm like, okay, you look like you do. I think she accidentally copied and pasted the Wikipedia sources section into the beginning of her video. It's like, oh, that's uh, oh mis- yeah, that's <laughs> a... August is also a month. Oh, it's also a song. Oh, it's also. <laughs> Are not I clever? to discuss Black Widow the movie. There we go. Obviously. The year is 2016. August sees the Summer Olympics held in Rio. April sees... Am I on acid? What is going on? (laughs) (laughs) She's still going. I'm sure we're almost there. She's going to start talking about the film. What did they give me in the pharmacy? Jesus (laughs) Christ. And following the release of Captain America Civil War in Yay. May, the release of Natasha Romanoff's first solo MCU installment, which fittingly takes place right where Civil War left off. Is that fitting? Well, no, it's inside the movie. As, yeah, because yeah. Civil War is still going on yeah. the when this movie begins. It's uh, Black Widow begins, technically speaking, as soon as the airport scene is over, um, kind of. It's, it's soon right. after that. If, if, that, yeah, because yeah, Ant-Man's ca- captured when Tony sees him, and that's what Ross describes, so it has to be before that scene. Um, 
But yeah, okay, that's fine though. The year is 2021, okay. and Black Widow is finally here. Do you think if it were set in 2014 as opposed to 16, Iggy's Black Widow would have won out over Cheap Thrills? Speaking of, I didn't Who's... avoid spoiling. What the fuck? I, 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 don't I, I don't know. I don't know. Stop that know. shit! Stop <laughs> it! <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, yeah. Honestly, I got no clue. I don't know. Self, so I did stumble upon some critiques of it before I saw it. Hey. Like Cheap Thrills plays very awkwardly to help establish that the movie takes place in 2016. The thing is, as my own two eyes witnessed the scene in question, I found that I disagreed. Not that the song was meant to reaffirm the timeline, but that- I'm starting to get a bit like, why do you talk this way? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, it just feels a little video essay, but that's fine. It's just, I found myself to be disagreeing. You're like, okay. Its inclusion was very awkward. What I find awkward are needle drops that don't get the year right. See, recently, late 90s stuff in Fear Street Part 1, 1994. Actually, one of my least favorite licensed song usages in film history was the MCU's doing Just a Girl in Captain Marvel. Yeah. Hey, I agree. agree on something. I yeah, agree. Was really it was bad. really yeah. cringe, yeah. Fucking, I'm just a girl. <laughs> All right. Hey, there we go. Now, that scene was very awkward, the way it violently distracted me from paying attention because I had to ponder performative feminism. Discover what D makes- what? Performative <laughs> feminism? <laughs> oh, that's, you know what, this, this, this- like, um... Oh, go ahead, actually. I was gonna say, this reminds me of a lot of when, uh, I think, uh, Prince's manager was telling him about like you need to step your shit up and he says this he says no one understands your fucking material but you <laughs> you you need to you need to you need to stop with this vague this bullshit um yeah okay it's just yeah some of it uh i'm just not 100 percent familiar exactly with the terms like performative feminism i'm guessing that's just when you're i'm guessing it's a corporate thing like, yeah hey because she's showing the scene where they're all walking it's like ah see women it's like well yeah, it's, it's like it's it's not actual like it's not making any progress it's in any way. It's not substantive. Yeah, it's not, and potentially that it's like not even what the pe like like this scene here. It's like oh look at all these characters. Only one of them got a movie. Maybe there's that as well. Yeah, like as an element of it. Makes a hero. Buy heroes at your local grocer. Look, whatever. My stance is that Cheap Thrills plays momentarily, ambiently, diegetically, quietly through Natasha's car radio to drive home how unexpectedly she's attacked. Oh, it's it's funny, I didn't again. even, I guess I didn't even know the I song, didn't so. That, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't notice that, yeah. But wait, so yeah. was, was the point that that song shouldn't be playing? The radio? Or was it I that that song should be playing, but it's just cheap? should be playing, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Oh, this scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, so funny. Off. it's so Dude, funny. It's so funny. It's like Taskmaster. <laughs> heard that shit. Time. It's like, just shut it off. <laughs> it's shitty Jesus. music. God damn it. <laughs> I heard that song. Don't make this more miserable than it has to be. Weird connection, but in my opinion, it's accomplishing what Vampire Academy tried to do. Oh, God. What? Vampire what? Academy. what? Do you just watch girl things? Hey, <laughs> Vampire Academy looks pretty sexy, Rags. Maybe it's just for you. Maybe, is it bad that they're sexy, or is it good that they're sexy? Uh, that's, I've never known the answer to that. I think it's good. I think it's good, too. Well, you know, I'm fine up. with it. But you never know. That's the thing. <laughs> Oh, no, she thinks it's garbage. So. Oh, she thinks it's terrible. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. That opening actually does give you a pretty good idea of how quick this movie will just switch tones on you. Live fast, die young, bad girls, do it well, car crash. I suppose I do okay. find MIA's okay. appearance in Vampire Academy awkward enough, though, that I must understand why at least 269 Twitter users find nice. Sia's admittedly similar. Man, you are we're just bleeding time what, here. Can we talk about the film? <laughs> we, can, we can do this. I'm sure of it. I, mean, like, I get a preamble, but we're running out of time here. Yeah, mm -hmm. do we have a second video lined up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a part two? I don't bring this disagreement up because it's super important to me that nobody questions cheap thrills usage in Black Widow, but because it exemplifies how I'm experiencing the discourse. I'm seeing all of these critiques and my reactions vary from, eh, I'm not sure about that, to, uh, wrong.
Okay, excellent. All right, so uh, let's talk about him. I guess <laughs> we're almost there. Sure. I'm, totally. I'm getting, I'm getting pink overload, pink wall, just pink chair, put like pink a fuzzy outfit, pink candle, pink face. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. There's a lot of pink. Very, I'm getting a lot. I'm getting pink overload here. Is this what are you talking? about this did we watch the same movie i guess if you call it brilliant no but um no <laughs> yeah if you think that black widow is brilliant you're fucking insane and you're terrible at your job but hey, I'm well you haven't heard our arguments brilliant. yet rags it could be amazing could be you know what i'm no no I'm, this i'm a risk taker that's what i'm doing i'm a gambling, gambling. doggo All risk right. taker that's what i'm well, doing judging I'm, from, I'm gonna take the risk judging from her saying hey other movies are shit too so it's fine that this one is not really expecting a lot but who knows yeah this isn't this isn't just a gamble gamble. This is this is a game of chance, mm. right? There's a skill component to this. And that's the one in chat said, more of a salmon type color, color than, than necessarily pink. If we're going really specific. Yeah, it's it, if we're going more specifically, it is more like a lighter, more more toned down. It's not like an electric pink or something like that. It is more of a salmon. It is more um, more of a what? What is uh, just a second? It's more like so top is brown. Maybe I'm thinking of mauve. No, mauve. It, no, mauve is more purple. Um, yeah, oh, salmon's pretty spot on. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd say salmon's pretty close. Yeah, I'm. I'm going here, and I'm looking. We have carnation Ballerina pink and lavender. There's also some amaranth in here. I think the darkest it gets is punch, right? Though there are the shadows make it a more thulian. Uh, and we definitely have flamingo in there as well. Some accents along the border lines, but that that's all right. It's all pinkish, really. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can't call this video a defense of Black Widow because it hasn't exactly been critically panned, but, yeah, but shock, <laughs> shocking that it's at 92%. People will shock, fucking eat shock, up anything. Horror, horror. But like, why would you go by that instead of by what she just said, which was she's seen a lot of criticisms that are not good. She's defending it from them, is what all you have to say. Like, yeah, the audience, the mass is ate it up, that's fine. But so that, as they did for many films, you've probably said it terrible, so I don't know that it matters. But on YouTube and Twitter... Oh, critical drinker. I feel rather unsupported in my belief that it slots easily into the MCU's top five. The yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <It's a lot laughs> thing. My, my gamble is, is starting to pan out well. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm... Co what, where, where do we rank it? It's like, it's almost the bottom, right? One of the worst? It's, it's bottom five. Sure. Yeah, easily bottom easily five, Easily bottom yeah. five. Um, what, is our, what is our bottom five, I guess? Do we have uh, an official... I'm pretty sure... Black Panther's in there. Captain Marvel's Captain in there. Marvel, Black Iron Panther, Man 3. Captain Marvel, Iron Man 3, Black Widow. Uh, Endgame, I think, is down Endgame, there. Yeah. Endgame? That's probably uh, the bottom five. To Without, yeah. to be fair, if we do an MCU arc, that'll probably change. Maybe, I don't know. Might. It might. very well might. Yeah, it very well might. Thus, I must break my sacred vow never to speak of Marvel, DC, or Star Wars on behalf of all those who agree with me. Yes, in part because I think it's important more women have their say about this one specifically. Uh -huh. If it's not, uh -huh. hey, hey Jay Longbone, you got to talk about Black Widow because otherwise, you're fucking we up. need more uh, women's oh. voices. Well, well, I, well, I have a story about that. Uh, me and a, a friend uh, started watching it as a laugh. It uh, <laughs> was at, at two a.m. and it was so fucking boring and so bad that I we had we both had a fucking headache and we were both upset. And we didn't even say goodbye to each other when we ended the Discord call. Oh, no. That's how bad it was. But you're a woman. So, what the fuck? Like, you're screwing this up. My fallopians are saying <laughs> fuck you to this movie. <laughs> Which is, uh, it sucks. Remember, was it Patrick Willems that said he doesn't want to see a white guy's opinion of Black Panther or something like that? Like, um, this shit's really unacceptable because... It's like it's, it's you not can't cool. say that shit for like um like mainstream franchises like Marvel mo movies. You can't. You cannot. That shtick doesn't work no. because these movies are apparently made for everybody. It's like we need to have more women speak about Black Widow, like as if that'll prevent it from being criticized. Like, what are you saying? <laughs> um, it's it's uh, what's the name to... from uh, Captain Marvel's argument thing? That's like uh, I don't want to hear what a forty-four-year-old white guy's opinion is of. Uh, Wrinkle in time, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was like a Patrick Willems said something like that. Yeah, um, but I, at least making a YouTube video is a, a YouTube video is more powerful than casting a spell. 
<laughs> Wait, magic isn't isn't that effective? What the fuck? You know, I don't think Morgic. I think it could make you feel but I think it can trick you into a false sense of confidence. Damn. So it might be more damaging to cast a spell than it is to do nothing. <laughs> One thing that she could use is a spell check and catch all of her, the uncapitalized words in her writing. Yeah, she could use the, <laughs> the spell check spell. Well, yeah, because it's annoying me that because Black Widow, that's a that's a proper noun. Yeah. Not anymore. Her name. She doesn't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hitting the shift key every once in a while is an unnecessary expenditure. As, and of also, I just noticed this. As no doubt you are aware, isn't it as you no doubt are aware? She yeah, says, no as, doubt no doubt aware. Aware. as no doubt you are aware. No I'm doubt as you're aware. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, you're correct. <clears throat> no <throat> doubt as you're aware. Next. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. Uh, I can't confirm. I don't know if that's... I don't well, know. I'm just trying to fix because if you say, as you, no doubt are aware, if you wanted to be super safe, you could put a comma between <laughs> and then no doubt. She's upset. Or you could write a different of grammar. title. As you are doubtless aware would be... That's as you no doubt are aware. Yeah. As no doubt you are aware. Yeah, that it's wrong. The sequence is wrong there. Um it, no doubt it, I don't mean to like get on no like you, you know aware. Right. This Fair. is this is the more complicated like English syntax stuff, I'm pretty sure. I was gonna like, say I don't have an answer for this. I I don't know. Yeah. I think I it's just okay. hearing words right now. Is, I have no idea. It's just I think it's <laughs> I'm just fine. trying to fit well the thing is you can have sentences that are fine like that are grammatically fine but you might want to just change them around because they sound a little awkward i mean that's it might like depend on your inflection process. when you say it it it, it, it does probably because it's like as as no doubt you are aware yeah black as widow is no brilliant. doubt you are so aware. as no doubt you are aware black widow is brilliant <laughs> as no doubt right. you are aware so that's so your name no doubt <laughs> if you replace no doubt with undoubtedly it makes a lot more sense that this is not right where you put it like as you as undoubtedly you are, yeah yeah as doubtless you were no as doubtless you were aware would work better <laughs> as you undoubtedly are aware yeah it, it doesn't it, it you can't put the i don't i don't know the terms of grammar but you got to put the subject or uh, probably wrong in this case but you is like the subject you got to put the subject before yeah. as you undoubtedly are aware I'll finish reading Elements of Style like a picture. <laughs> oh god, I, I read that book. It's rough. There's also even worse is the Chicago Manual of Style. I hate that book. What you don't you don't like the, the that book? Well, it's a good it's a good book. Um, it's just very actually no Elements of Style is really good. Chicago is is very a lot more a lot bigger a lot more technical, but Elements of Style is pretty good. Yeah, but... I, I really like Elements of Style. It was uh, at, yeah, because because again that book would be like well as no doubt you are aware it's like that's a lot of words for, for just saying as you're aware like, yeah you, you you've turned as three you know, words yeah. into six um as you know exactly uh short and simplification yeah and this unfortunately like i don't mean to you know character attack her or whatever but it just i really get really strong um uh, i'm very smart vibes wow she, i'm she, very she emphasizes like as part of this video, I will be talking about various things, and she puts a lot of emphasis on all of our T's. She doesn't use any contractions yeah, um, that I can tell. Her, uh, um, and her desire to make sure every word is properly pronounced is um, fucking with her flow, I think. Um, yeah. Which is interesting, because a lot of the time, the issues that happen with speech is that you aren't enunciating enough. Yeah. So then it's hard to tell what you're saying. It's almost so uh, ac accentuated that can't even really understand what she's meaning to say. You're just going to get stuck on every word, especially when she pronounces her T's. You know, you, you, as long as you have an audible T, it's fine. But she's like, as this part, you know, she's very, 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 uh, uh, it's kind yeah, of- Yeah, she's uh, making affected. sure she's speaking clearly, which, you know, admirable. I just, um, it just come, it, it gives me an impression sometimes of just being like, wow, you don't sound real, unfortunately. It Plus, we like she's, so, that with she's the... so monotone. Yeah, there is that too. Yeah, um, not pleasant to listen to. And when you pair that with the way that she types, it's really doubly strange. It is, yeah. Like you're going out of your way to make sure that you don't capitalize anything, including your own name. Like, is that some sort of? Is that some? I don't know, new style thing that people just don't give a well, fuck about the way that they type. 
The um, I think a couple people have already mentioned it. It's similar to Lindsay Alice's style. Um, and that could be the influence. Uh, she has a similar way of speaking as well. Really, I haven't watched her main channel, but back when she was the Slaughter Chick, she had a pretty. She was much pretty... more chill back in those days. These days, uh, yeah. she's much more bitter. And uh... <laughs> we're gonna cover her eventually. This, I think, two videos of hers I really want to do on EFAB because they are fascinating. Yeah. Well, I actually have a, a lifetime license to pro writing aid, so I'm going to put her title into that and tell me, and the AI would tell me what's correct. It's like a really advanced AI a grammar tool. It's usually always right. So mm. let me do that while we're watching the rest of this. Not a defense. Let's call it an endorsement. That wasn't real. Who cares? Don't say that. As no doubt you were aware Again. when it was brilliant. As no, no. doubt. <laughs> Oh, I've seen again the one this, where they're like, awesome yeah, this is problem. the good scene, guys. This is a great well, scene. It's a meme at this point. This is the one everyone references because it's the only fucking thing in the film, really, that you can work with. Um, but, yeah. you know, maybe she'll say more than just that. I'm not going to jump ahead. Mm -hmm. Please don't say that. It was real. Poor Florence Pugh trying to carry the entire movie with one sentence. Mm. It really it is just like one me. sentence. It must be said. <laughs> That I don't think it's perfect. After all, I only gave it wow. four out of five stars. I, I wish that we stopped doing <laughs> that. Only gave it a four out of five. Four out of five. Oh. I, I kind of want to. I, okay. I, I want people to stop saying, I don't agree with everything they say, or it's not perfect. It's like, I would. Could have guessed that. Tell me these things because I would assume not that you agree with everything that any individual says or that you think something's perfect. It's a caveat that's useless. I suppose the um, be, I do agree with everything they've said, or and it's perfect. Yeah, to be fair, I actually do think it's perfect because obviously the worry, I guess, is that she would wouldn't want someone in the comment section being like, "What? This film isn't perfect," because you never explicitly said it was not perfect. Therefore, I assume that's what you think, so she can counter that. But it's just like, I mean, eh, yeah, <laughs> she gave it a four out of five. It ain't perfect. When Florence Puh marries, J murders Jeremy Renner. Ugh, that's a review. I'm not Jeremy sure I get Renner that either. Oh, because um, people don't like Jeremy Renner, right? Do they not? Oh, right, because he not? made a joke fucking ten years ago. Like, here's the thing. Here, here's some backstory on this shit. I mean, I think Are it's a couple sure things, but this is the main thing. Something that was more serious, wasn't it? No, he made a. I think he he made a joke about how Black Widow was a. They were making like he was going back and forth with this interviewer with Chris Evans. About oh yeah, Black Widow is such a whore. Like they were making it was a joke. And he was, he was, and for some reason, Marvel fans have not fucking forgotten about that. And they think he's a horrible misogynist or some oh, shit. But, was... but the catch, the thing is with that, Chris Evans was joking right along or along with him. And he gets no flack for it. Absolutely fucking none. Yeah. I think the prompt was, uh, how come Black Widow was with, uh, I, I forget the exact timeline, but I think she wasn't, she with, uh, Hulk. And then she was, you know, kind of flirting with Chris Evans. Then she was with the Hulk or whatever. And just comes down to, like, not really committing to one relationship or another. And that was his response. And, and he joked. He was laughing. It was a joke. But the, the question was about why why was Black Widow with one guy? And then why is she now with another guy? I think, right? Wasn't that the prompt? Yeah. I'd always heard that it was something to do with his ex-wife. But I don't, I don't know enough about, like... I mean, it's, it's that, too. Her. It's that, too. But that right. was that's I, what started. I, I just don't I'm sorry. Know. I, don't, I don't know like about this. So <laughs> yeah. She, uh, by the way, she just that. tweeted out sudden influx of angry men in my Black Widow comment section. Who told them, huh? <laughs> that was <laughs> angry. Like that's right. Yeah. Love, you gotta stop sudden being sexist. It men. looks terrible you gotta... for you. You really should stop being a sexist prick and maybe get on a treadmill because <laughs> like... holy fuck, it is a bad look both ways. Just. God, I guess tiring because it's just so weird that the, the, the men can just get shit you're on totally so much. Allowed. Yeah, you're totally allowed to shit all over men. No consequences whatsoever. Russian, no, bla white men are the <laughs> Russians of countries. <laughs> what, are they the, are they bottom of the wrong? Is what you're saying? Or? <laughs> Basically, you could do, you could say anything you want against white men in the same way that if you want to make fun of a nationality, there's always Russia. Particularly stingy. If I can confidently say I love. Oh, by the way, four out of five. That's an eight out of ten. That's quite good. I mean, with our scale, an eight is like, damn, that must have been good. 
you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. And adore a movie, no matter its objective quality, five stars. I don't oh worship Black Widow unconditionally. I just think she's perfect. Perfect. Five out of five. No flaws. Damn. Wait, what well, do you think about? I how she had said if she had just how much I guess she liked it or because she had mentioned she would give it five out of five based on a different criteria. Right. Um, if I can give in Black Widow five out of five would be a pretty difficult proposition, but hey, I'm not everybody. Yeah. Five stars. I don't worship Black Widow unconditionally. I just think she's swell. I'd like to hang out with her sometime. And the issues I do take I with her be afraid she'd are not me. hers alone to bear. You see, I don't love any MCU installment five stars worth, hence one reason why I never wanted to talk about it, despite having seen every movie. If you want to know what I think Black Widow's worst scene is, it's <laughs> the one that breaks all of the momentum built by those heartbreaking first 16 minutes. I was feeling for these girls invested in a title sequence implying their trauma before I was- It's more than implying, I'd say. But, yeah. I would that's it's implied. It's showing. Showing. showing, yeah. I guess she I means know, I implying the, the weird music parts. And the, in the in the silly <clears throat> credits and attempt to rewrite MCU history were a bit more distracting, but... Yeah. Um, I mean... I, I remember when the film first came out, a lot of people were saying, well, that part was good. I was like, I mean... Maybe it's I, I've never even thought about it. It's like is it is it strong if we ignore like all the breaks and continuities? Like I guess it's fine. The 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 dad failing to get them ready faster when he's fully invested in that was kind of stupid. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was about it's like yeah, I guess that, other than that, you're watching kids getting torn away from something they love into an indoctrination program. It's like yeah, that's pretty upsetting. Forced to find my footing in this relentless continuity, like. Oh look, it's that vaguely familiar guy from what I don't remember after Natasha for reasons forgotten. I well, whose fault is that? That's yeah. yeah. It's yeah, a fucking it, the like, movie. She related. she introduced the movie as a sequel, and now she's like, "How am I supposed to remember the movie before?" It's like, guy. okay. <laughs> it took yeah. place. Yeah, she said it Somebody took place could... not to this other movie where this character was a pretty important character. I forget who he is though. Well, yeah, because somebody could just be like, well, look, I watched The Fellowship of the Ring, and then ten years later I watched Two Towers. How am I supposed to be expected <laughs> to remember what's happening and who these yeah. people are? Very strange complaint, but okay. Very odd. I mean, I watched Civil War once, five years ago, and I never revisited it because I'm not a super mega nerd. I'm, I'm glad we had that zoom out. I, 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 no. no fucking way you're not a super mega nerd after the first two minutes. <laughs> oh, we know. You think this is yep. brilliant? Did she just say that she's kidding? Um, did she? Is she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh that well. Was... At the same time, I just like I don't get it. Uh, no, I, if you're I, invested I in Black Widow as a character, right. <laughs> wouldn't you be invested in Civil War? I don't know. Pretty important for Black Widow. Well, if you said that you really like her and you'd want to hang out with her, so, so you you're a fan then. She, yeah. The, you you might as well consider like the Captain America movies like as kind of. As close to her movies as frankly, yeah. I don't give then. a shit if she's a fan or not. If you review a movie, you better do your fucking research one way or another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this to like kind of make herself look cool because she's not a um, not some kind of dirty nerd or whatever? It's like I'm sorry, lady. I review Vampire can't... Lady or whatever that other thing was. Vampire yeah, Girl. It's like <laughs> you can't really. Uh, <laughs> I I'm think you're a little bit. Yeah, you're a little too invested in that already. I don't think you can really back out of that that name. But if you are one, know that these hands have never touched a comic book. I have read some Squirrel Girl digitally. I don't care. But yeah, but what does that, what, literally, what does that have to do with whether or not you remember Civil War the movie? I don't understand. Yeah, I've never touched a comic book, essentially. I've touched them so little. I essentially have never read a comic book for the purpose of this discussion, and I remember Civil War. I, I guess when we review things, we're familiar with the material. Well, you need, yeah, like, so for example, Jurassic World Dominion is going to come out. I'm going to rewatch probably the Jurassic Park series before seeing it because I'm like, mm. you know, that's, that's what it's supposed to be a sequel to. Part of the judgment of that film's, you know, continuity is going to be as, as it relates as a sequel. So I just, oh, I, yeah. I love the idea that I'm like, I ain't fucking watching all those movies again. So you better, you better account for me who doesn't know exactly what you're talking about and everything. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you like, can make an argument. Well, more power to two films that can achieve that, 
The idea that Ross shows up hunting down Black Widow and you're like, I don't fucking know who this guy is. It's like, oh. It's yeah. just a deflection from criticism. Just in case someone in the comments comes at her with some facts, she wants she's gonna say, "Well, I, I don't watch all this shit." So, you know, what do you expect me to do? I mean, I guess the response to that would be, "But you made a video talking about it, so right." People expect you to be familiar with the material. Like, yeah, it's like one like, Google search away to be, inform you. It's not hard, really. You should be familiar with the, uh, the predecessors of that media, but if you want to later make the criticism, it's like, okay, the average moviegoer has not recently watched Civil War. That movie was five years ago. That, that's, a, that's a valid criticism. It's like people aren't going to be as fresh with that, and maybe the movie should have you know, acknowledged that it's been five years and maybe kind of done a little refresher. Like even uh, you know, Winter Soldier did that actually really, really well. They, if you hadn't watched Captain America, like the previous week, it does a little refresher. He walks through a museum. Um, I guess so. I don't know that I I don't know if I think it's valid in terms of like this is a problem because I mean playing Metro Dread, awesome game by the way. But there's like a there's the opening is basically so this was what Fusion was. Fusion came out twenty years ago. Um, that's super helpful, but like it's I wouldn't say that it's a problem if if that wasn't uh there. That may, maybe. Like, you know, how much should you be expected to just be familiar with the content before you go into a sequel? Yeah, I wouldn't consider it an objective flaw, but I, I definitely think that having a refresher for people who either didn't watch or play the previous media for whatever reason or who haven't done it for a while, especially if it has been five yeah. plus years, it's understandable that you want to kind of kind of ease people back into it, especially if you're going to be referencing things. Like if you if you... If you're referencing stuff that's outside of that particular product, you might want to do a refresher or you probably will do one or want to do a refresher because you're not going to remember it. That's exactly the reason why you'll notice on uh, TV episodes, you know, like, you know, previously on Lost. Previously you'll on that woman. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll always uh, pick out clips that are either going to reference later because they want you to have that that payoff. But if you don't remember episode, you know, season two, episode seven, you're not going to immediately have that connection or if, if mm -hmm. you watched that last year you're you're going to want that that payoff yeah there's there's a tightrope to walk in terms of um should we give them the information the worst kind of this is when someone goes wait you were blah 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 the whole time and then they show you like a shit ton of flashbacks for all the episodes where they implied otherwise and you're mm -hmm. like thank you <laughs> and it's like yeah. yeah i just want to make sure you know otherwise you wouldn't understand right it's like no i would cuz i was watching it i was invested One of yeah the worst. it's like it's like a balance between how long ago was it? How long yeah. are you going to spend with referencing that sort of thing? Don't think there's a definitive answer to it, but no. when it comes to who Ross is, I feel like you should you should know who he is. Yeah, he's a major figure in the in that era of uh, the Avengers, and I guess I don't even know if he is going forward because it's so fucking confusing what's happening right now. But certainly in Civil War, in the Hulk show, yeah, we'll shoot Hulk. Yeah, because if you take away, because they've clearly just been ignoring the Sokovia Accords, and that's a they don't care anymore. They're gone. They're done. I don't think yeah, they care. So... <laughs> they'll bring them up when they need them. I don't think they'll bring them up ever. Honestly, I if they need to gone. arrest somebody I... or they need to imply they need restrictions uh, I don't think for something. They'll mention the Accords. I think they'll just like say, "Hey, you're under arrest." For, well, like, they've been mentioned in like, by the FBI in Falcon the Winter Soldier and Wand Division. They've oh, they paid lip service. For... I Obviously, think that's as far as it'll go. Yeah, I think it's as far as it'll go as well. Yeah. Mm. Like, we know this thing. We, t we, we know our material, guys, definitely. We know the Scovia Accords. We said them. Haha. -ha. I enjoy the Sunday funnies growing up. And my favorite action movie is Speed, which, according to my dad, is a peculiar choice. It shouldn't be. That movie rocks. Act I like Speed. I is, that the one, is that the bus that couldn't slow down? Yeah. <laughs> it's the one where the bus has got to keep its speed over 50, and if its speed drops, it explodes. I think, I think I it was it called time ago, and the I remember bus that like couldn't it. slow down. Wouldn't slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. I guess it's, I would, it's an unusual down. choice, because it's not one that you'd expect. I, I think that's generally liked, but for it to be someone's favorite, I think that's a little unusual. I mean, right now, Keanu Reeves is like, you know, uh, OMG... Uh, super chunk or whatever so i'm assuming it's liked i don't think he's falling into people's bed i've only ever known thing. speed to be neat i i don't know how it holds up though uh be interested to find out what about speed to cruise control oh, <laughs> Willem Dafoe's in that it must be control. good <laughs> he is in that uh, didn't uh, keanu reeves right, refuse to do that one 
in favor of something like I think so. Was it the Matrix? Uh, uh mm. I think it was something else. No, Matrix was ninety nine, so or shot in ninety eight. Um I think Speed right. was like ninety five, right? Or ninety four. Was it like Devil's Advocate or something? Well oh, I don't know be. what it was. It called. might have been. Uh, uh, he turned on, so that was animals. yeah. His career had already actually kind of declined a bit by the time he picked up uh, Matrix. Surprisingly, um... Reeves was offered twelve million to reprise his role, uh, but turned it down because he did not like the script and was financially secure from the success of Speed and felt he was not ready to mentally and physically star in another movie um, like that. Oh, okay. I thought he gave it up for yeah, a different okay. role. Hmm. I got hmm. Dega. I got an article here that says Keanu Reeves was put in movie jail for turning down Speed 2. I'm not sure what that means. What? <laughs> I assume, maybe, does that mean maybe that people guess, were less uh, willing to cast him? or he, Maybe, yeah. Yeah he, that's, he did, that's done. yeah, he did Speed and he was hot shit again. And then he did Johnny Mnemonic in 95. And I don't think Chain Reaction was particularly beloved either. So by the time, uh, by the late 90s, he rolled around, he was already kind of not hot material anymore. So Matrix absolutely re-sparked his career. She's, she's privated her Twitter. I don't know that anybody was saying anything, but I mean, <laughs> I guess she doesn't yeah. want any of us to be reading anything she says. It's like, all right. Action just isn't my genre, and on account of that, feel free to take with a grain of salt that I find some of Black Widow's combat incredibly well choreographed. Ooh. <laughs> no. Ooh. <laughs> God, no, no, I'll oh, take that with no. a grain of salt, sure. Oh, yeah. There isn't no. a single good moment for the combat. Oh, Oof. No. Yeah, come I think that it. eyeliner has definitely obstructed your vision <laughs> in some way. <laughs> it's supposed to help you see better because it reduces glare off your face, but it's, just, it's doing the opposite. This is the same <laughs> shit. Oh. When someone describes like the TLJ oh, throne room no. fight as really good, which I did in the original video, like when you explore it's like what was it was it literally just you thought so and have you ever thought further about choreography because the benefit i didn't have was watching it um as many times as i want in whatever speed i want you know because like you do that with um like jackie chan stuff and then you'll be like holy shit they're actually hitting each other like at yeah. least to some degree it's like nice um yeah i don't know Oof. My benchmark for saying so is that as someone who struggles paying attention to fight scenes i paid close attention Oh, um, oh my God! I just we're getting more, uh, more, um, more and more getting drip fed all of the the reasons why she thinks that the fight scenes in this are great. She doesn't care for them. She has trouble paying attention, but in this one, she did. I don't know. So because she doesn't like action scenes, she this action scene was good to her. I don't know if that's well, says... she wanted to really pay attention this time. She really wanted to focus, and so that's. You know, normally she doesn't really care for him and pay attention. I think that's the logic. She, she was did. paying attention, therefore there must be something that's working. I mean, I think she went, she decided up more than usual to pay attention to the action scenes in this. And I just think, she, I, I think it's just as simple as she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking what, about. Um, so what I mean is, I think that her logic is, I usually don't pay attention. The fact that I did means that something must have been working. I think that it's the other way where i don't normally pay attention so i did so i made sure to pay attention and i think that not because she paid attention but because she was paying attention if you could kind of the word stuff i'm doing right now she actually thinks it's good but she made sure to pay attention to see if it was good and she thinks that this is good but I can't be certain. We can go back and we can listen again, though. We certainly can, because I can't even offer an opinion. I did not pause because of anything she said. Um, so, Jay Longbow, do you fancy reading something? Oh, my God. Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> so this... This is one of the newest comments on a video. Uh, let's have some fun with this, I guess. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, it's from Packet. Um, oh, you are oh, being oh. efapped right now. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting troglodyte man and a token black girl. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, bitch. They discovered uh, over on the <laughs> channel trying to smear you with their smugness. You need to confront this or else your video will get downvoted to oblivion. Oh, and any of Mahler's brown shirts, uh, 
Oh, and to any of Mahler's brown shirts, you can be sexist towards men. You can't be. No, sorry, you, you can't. can't be. Say, see, yeah, see, I can't read stupid shit. It automatically corrects <laughs> uh, it to something. Yeah, yeah I can relate. <laughs> Better, uh, that uh, p- uh, power plus plus prejudice equals insert discriminatory practice here. Equation mm. works with sexism too. Fuck off. Oh, shut you know the fuck up. Pack it. <laughs> what's interesting <laughs> is that the the power privilege thing, which is totally made up to justify why they could do it their way. Um, if you talk about especially the men and women dynamic, you know, politically speaking, particularly, which is arguably the most important kind of power you can have. Uh, women are the largest voting block, and they also vote at higher rates than men. So, really, you can't be sexist towards women if we're gonna follow it to its logical conclusion. So, we, I would, I would prefer to live in the world where we just don't judge people based on their immutable characteristics. Oh, That'd you racist! Nice. <laughs> like, can we just stop? Can we Disgusting. please stop doing this? It's like it's 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 yeah, like. It's, uh, Look at this man. I just want to go back, back to a time where you go. I don't like men talking about Black Widow, and then someone else goes, "That's fucked up." And that's that. Yeah, and then and then they go, "Oh, that was actually. I'm not going to do that anymore because I judging people based on aspects which they can't control about themselves is wrong." I'm glad that we all agree that judging people based on their immutable characteristics is wrong because they can't do anything about it and we should yeah, judge we, them based on who they are, well, not what they are. Ringy, I'm glad we all in... agree that that's the way that it should be done. But, uh, well, you know, anyway, and then we can talk about movies and have a fun time. Well, Fringy, someone in chat is saying that sex is not an immutable characteristic. <laughs> oh, as I, I, sorry, it's all, it's all very confusing now. <laughs> Don't I fucking. Don't I'm just, I just want to talk sex. about movies. I just want to talk about my movies. <laughs> oh, do they mean like having sex? I, I yeah, I'm stuck all the way back. Control at, over that. We seem to nail this like 20 years ago. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, what yeah. happened? We went Stay. backwards. Rags, come back on Honey Badger Radio. We miss you. Oh, invite me. Uh, sure. <laughs> but, uh, 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 let me see. Yeah, we can we can carry on with this. It's a shame how we've digressed from that sweet sweet period of our of our youth. Those well, uh, halcyon days. And I was gonna say like it sucks that Ooh. those kinds of comments as well as the things she's been hearting. It's like that just makes everything way worse. Cause like it. Uh. Uh, I'm still willing to listen to why this film is good even with all of that shit. So I don't know. Let's uh, let's let's oh, see what that um, part was. I guess, uh, I guess, I don't know if this should surprise us or not, but apparently she has protected her Twitter profile. I guess she did. Oh, not surprising it at all. Down, locked it down. I, I guess you didn't hear it earlier, because I'm pretty sure Mole already mentioned that. Mm-hmm. I might have, I might have been stunned that, by something. That, that's, okay, right. My god, look at her bio. Movie rocks. Action just isn't my genre, and on account of that, feel free to take with a grain of salt that I find some of Black Widow's combat incredibly well choreographed. Mm -hmm. My benchmark for saying so is that as someone who struggles paying attention to fight scenes, I paid close attention to Natasha's first encounters with Yelena and Taskmaster. The sound design... I don't understand. So that was was her argument then, was that she paid attention... The fact that she paid attention means that that's 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 it. something worse. I don't know. Maybe that's a strange I think process. That's the only, just I, saying. It is a strange process, but I'm pretty sure that's the mm. only way that you can read what she just said. That, that um, like if that's cause her argument. When I hear it, the way that my brain processes that is that I don't normally pay attention, so I made sure to pay attention for this one, and I think it's really good. Okay, I mean, maybe. Uh, that's the thing. That's, I don't know which think, way it is. Well, yeah. I think it could go both ways, but that's how my brain just sort of... I was going to say, um, I think I line up with Fringies, but then I conclude I'm confused. So, like, the idea that she's like, right, it's not, it's I found argument, myself... I don't think. Yeah, I found myself not paying attention with action movies, but I did with this one, so it's, you know it's a good one. I'm just like, what oh, the fuck does good. that mean? Like, <laughs> what? I, I do, yeah. It's not, not a particularly great point. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what to make of that on the bridge was particularly enthralling. Like, what's the point of referencing choreography if all your metric is, is was I paying attention to it? Like, that... Well, I mean, this might be a situation of hard. maybe just don't say anything about it. Just say, like, I don't know, I liked it, but I don't know anything about it, so yeah. let's move on. Because, yeah. So the funny thing about that so, is, like... One shot, one shot. I like the sounds, but I don't know that they... They're a little bit extreme, right? Well, they can't be like diegetic. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Like 
It's like it sounds it's cool, like, but I mean, it's, like, you know. Ninja sounds like. Especially, <laughs> especially when you have the knowledge that it's actually a scrawny little girl in there. The idea that her footsteps are going. Doom, doom, well, that I, is a, we never get it from the movie, but I oh, thought I could that. Make such a good one, but I won't. I thought maybe the suit was supposed to be given to like super strength or something, but is it? I don't. I, I we never get any confirmation, but she does some stuff that's just like, whoa! How strong she are you? Steps more power. Remember, she goes toe to toe with um Alexi. And he's a super soldier. It's like, how did you do that? <laughs> maybe, maybe Olga put on the the COVID fifteen. You know, so made a little, made a little heavier that shot. I don't know. <laughs> And can I mention that thematic okay. implications no. of an antagonist being able to mimic the combative techniques of their protagonist, who's a widow, all of whom fight identically because of their lack of free will and training? You wouldn't get it. Despite no, you could you could attempt to explain it to us. I I highly doubt there's anything that you understand that we are well, not capable of. Understanding. She's just she's What's just highlighted a flaw that I didn't even think about. Um, yeah. Taskmaster has all of the Black Widow training, so it wouldn't be anything to reflect. You'd know it all. It is true. <laughs> if oh, they fight, all the Black Widows fight the same, what is there but to also, reflect? also, you're saying they all fight the same, but Taskmaster fights the same as other people who aren't Black Widows, so how does that align with the theme? She fights, like, Captain America and, and like, Winter Soldier and, and Black Panther. I... yeah. Because I think, I think her logic is that it ties into the theme of, oh, you know, they have no free will, they all fight the same. It's like, but Taskmaster doesn't fight the same. She fights the same as a whole bunch of people. Also, she didn't show any fight choreography in that in that little clip. There, she showed uh, oh, wow. Well, a, a, walking a flip, and then uh, well, like a, a flip, yeah. Mm. Hardcore parkour. I guess you could call it choreography when they said, "Now, when you get up, you do the thing where you 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 propel yourself off the off your back, kind of." Yes. Hmm. At all of this, hmm. one criticism I have seen that I actually do agree with is that its third act is its weakest act because it's so by the books in terms of action. <laughs> okay, sorry, we need to. So okay. in uh in uh, uh, is it just that there are things exploding in the sky? Well, I was, I was gonna I, say, what a shit I, read. I, I am not happy that Guardians is in there in the mix. Me neither. I we saw that ship game and I'm like, no, Soldier. that last Guardians fight was great. What's the top so, right one? So, I, I think that's Captain America 1. Ooh, no, I don't like that you've said that they're the same. What's bottom left? That's Cap 1. Bottom, uh, left, bottom is... left is Captain Marvel. Ugh. You gotta get on Ugh. my level with the ability to look at clouds in the sky and immediately determine which one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and top so, left yeah, is Black these, Widow. These and then, the same. Yeah. So, so, Black Widow... So, in Captain America 1... It's like actually pretty effective and, and potent, and Captain America doesn't jump out of the plane and fight people in midair. No, it's not what's happening. It's not the same. Is it just that there are stuff in the sky that is kind of exploding? I guess so. And this, I don't like comparisons like this because it's um, it reminds me of like the many times we come across this where it's the the specifics of the situations are so fucking different. If you want to just say the, these are weak third acts compared to the other two acts. Um, Captain Marvel was just shit overall. Endgame yeah. was Endgame was shit overall. Pretty shit overall. Um, yeah. yeah, Winter Soldier <laughs> was pretty shit overall. <laughs> yep. Remember, it's guys, like that, is Marvel that is the official EFAP take, right? Yep. <laughs> Marvel, <laughs> just like Independence Day. Now, yeah. Guardians Three, I like the third act. It has more problems than uh, the first two acts, but still got some really good shit in there. And so, yeah, I guess like she's oh. just saying something explodes and it's big. I guess it's the blue laser using, in the sky argument where it's just tired. I don't know. Yeah, also she's using a compilation of clips she got from someone else. She it's didn't put this oh, yeah, together it. herself. <laughs> but also, yeah, remember, I think it's, go ahead. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I think it's important to use clips you've compiled off of movies that you've watched. Because, so, you know, so you could, it, it shows that you have some kind of understanding of what you're talking I about. I guess. Yeah. If at least the screen junkies thing is there so people know that they made it, but then it's really awkward yeah. for the video because it's just, their logo has popped up in the plot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what Jay um, said means a lot doubly so because if someone makes their own clips, then you get more confidence that they really were aware of the material because they went and fetched it themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Otherwise, it makes it look like she just recycled this point from a Screen Junkies video. She but also, yeah, because yeah. if it, she didn't even know or remember three of these movies, half of them, this compilation would still be in here regardless. But this also, like, I, 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 I'm now thinking about the ratio. Six in the sky out of, like, what, 25 movies at this point? Oh, not that bad. Like, in terms of being yeah. too, too nice. samey. Um, yeah. and, some in... and some of them make a lot more sense, you know, than others. Um, of course. So. Someone in chat said uh, the video is right. The Black Widow scene was filmed before the script was written, so that information doesn't support what she said as being true. <laughs> so, and we knew that, um, and it's really dumb. But you could film a third act and then end up with a movie that doesn't do a giant explosion in the sky. Like, so mm -hmm. those two things aren't like the same thing. Um, and and like doing like a, a Marvel third act, am I right? Like like. Some of the third acts are really good, so <laughs> it's it's, yeah. it's it's a weird. So uh, I love the Guardians third act. I mean, I love a lot of their third acts. Even Iron Man one, even with Obadiah going insane, the, the rest of it works pretty well. For emphasis on that point of view, I do like Captain Midnight's video on the subject. I agree with him for the most part, and I appreciate his acknowledgement that Are you uniquely to agree compelling with the man? climactic battles mm. aren't usually Marvel's strong suit, and Black Widow isn't a special case in that regard. I, I mean, Black I Widow's third act is probably one of the worst. The worst third acts. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like Cap Captain America one is like that's. Fairly solid. Iron Man 2's is okay. Not great. <laughs> Might be bad, actually. Civil War has a fantastic third act. Absolutely. Um, Infinity War's third act is more of a mixed bag, but it's, you know, it's still got better stuff. Avengers is pretty good. Avengers has a great third act. Avengers what third about act Age of Ultron? Awesome. Uh, no. <laughs> That's not a good one. Yeah, there's a lot of things about that one. They all the robots. They did fight all the robots, <laughs> true. I they, they punched did. all those robots. They the robots, and then they managed to make sure that none of them escaped somehow. Wow. It's just that kind of talent. Uh, it's incredible. The giant explosions in the sky are made before the movie is, so it's just forced in there, uncreative. I don't agree. Like, you can't disagree with the idea that you can still contextualize them differently. They're not all yeah, the same. Yeah, you can figure it yeah, out. You don't really have to make it the worst really. possible explanation. Yeah, I mean, isn't that the same process that the last two Mission Impossible movies went through, where they were plotting out the big set pieces before they wrote all the scripts? Yeah, I believe. And Fallout is like quite possibly the best written before. of all the Mission Impossibles. I can't say that with confidence, but it's it's possible. Yeah, it's so. either that or Rogue Nation, bim, both by the bim, same fellow. Bim, bim, bim. I'm I'm totally up for another Mission Impossible gimme. Yeah, no, I'm, Me I'm too. excited. I'm more excited for Mission fun. Impossible than James sure. Bond. Yes. Battles aren't usually Marvel's strong suit, and Us. Black Widow isn't a special rating in that it scene. Regard. Sucks. Yeah, yeah. it's all. It's, it's, all ass. it's not a pretty movie. I suppose where I differ is in believing the rest of the movie built up enough goodwill to offset the disappointment. <laughs> and I oh, did it? <laughs> okay. Did it? Do tell. Hmm. I don't think I'm as bothered by the third act as many are anyway, due to my CGI blindness. I tweeted about this the other day, and it was in reference to Black Widow. God, no, you didn't say that about Black Widow? That one has, like, some ass CGI. Some of the st people were sharing it because it's so funny. Like, um... Yeah, that's yeah, the, the thing. The I'm trying to... It thing. I'm trying yeah. to absorb this comment and wonder, does the CGI blindness thing that she's trying to present make it worse because the CGI is so terrible in this movie? And you just I think she's saying that she just the, doesn't spot it. Like she can't tell really whether it's so like what you need good to go get glasses, like CGI. Man. I mean, I was I gonna say that this it's is not a great bad. thing to admit in terms of your ability as a critic. Like, I can't tell the difference between well executed CGI and poorly but executed CGI. It's like, I, oh, I guess yeah, I'm weird. not sure that I believe that though, because I don't know that it's even your choice whether or not you are like, yeah, that's... you just, you just know something looks wrong. Well, like, but that's I, I that's, that's what she's it. admitting is she literally can't tell the difference. I I get. I guess that's, that's what I'm saying. That's not like, good I for a film critic, but that. okay. Like, yeah. I I just don't get it. I can't not yeah, see Yeah, I think it. you're right, like, probably. That's the thing. I can't not see it. So well, when you see um, now... Leia in Rogue One, I feel like everyone was like, ooh, she looks porcelain. What's going on? What's happening? And you're like, yeah, I mean, it's the best they could do. I don't know. I, I doubt she was like, that looks just like Carrie Fisher from A New Hope. You're like, mm, okay. <laughs> I've never seen someone uh, so clearly undermine their credibility 
when trying to praise something before. Like <laughs> she's she's just said that she doesn't pay attention during uh, action scenes, yet she thinks the action's good because she was actually paying attention this time. And then she says she has CGI blindness. <laughs> And so she can't tell if the movie has good CGI or not. And then she says the third act is awful. So now you're saying that uh, you think that the third act was bad. Uh, you can't tell if CGI or action scenes are good because you don't generally pay attention. But yet it's actually a pretty good movie. <laughs> it's yeah, just... like it's it's good because I can't tell what bad is. You're like, right? Yeah. <laughs> like that's great. I, I have lots say. of faith yeah, in your you're assessment. Right. That's the second time, the second time that the argument of I can't tell that it's bad, so it's good. But also, like I can understand argument. thematic things that you guys just can't. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of appreciate the honesty, at least, but it doesn't really lend a whole lot of credence to your point. Mm -hmm. if you just say, I don't actually even know this is good. <laughs> yeah, if I, hire, if I call a plumber to come and fix my pipes, and he's like, hey, just going to be honest with you, it's my first day and I don't have a degree, uh, so let's get started. Like, I appreciate your honesty. Please leave. Yeah. By the way, saying she has infinite suspension of disbelief, uh, that'll bite her in the ass at some point. Guaranteed. Infinite oh, yeah. has to, because there's no story that has, like, that can never, can never be taken out of it. Yeah, like, I can use that as a defense against a movie she ever says is at any point unbelievable. Yeah, Vampire Academy, I'd have, like, an infinite, you know, like, <laughs> suspension of disbelief, right? So how is it bad? Talk about undermining the work that a lot of pieces of media put in to try and make things believable and make sense like that's that's just irrelevant to julia cudney whose di suspension of disbelief is infinite it's not infinite though you, like i don't believe that that's <laughs> yeah that's one i don't think you decide of, yeah it's not a thing that you just you, decide it's not a isn't conscious a choice, choice. You, i don't think yeah. you consciously choose to uh suspend your disbelief oh. it's like involuntary worth clarifying she said visually a suspension that's still gonna bite visually? her in the ass that still is, yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess, yeah. That still applies, especially when it comes to, we put a lot of work into making all this CGI, you know, effective. and Because it puts, like, Jurassic Park on the same level as Black Widow. And you're like, man, that sucks. Unfair. That sucks to hear from a film critic that those are just uh, well, the same, when, I guess. Or everyone matter. always references Scorpion King CGI and The Mummy Returns. It's like, yeah, because it's <laughs> yeah. just one of the cringiest fucking creatures ever. Uh, yeah. And if someone was like, well, I, just, I don't see it, you'd be like, you don't, you don't see it. You do. You, you do. You see it. Come on, come on you, out. <laughs> you see it. Stop it. If somebody put uh, that wretched, horrible uh, you know, $100 million commercial movie out, what, Food Fight, which had notoriously bad CGI, it was like basically a wannabe Pixar movie with uh, with food uh, yeah, yeah. characters in it, like a Raisin Man and stuff like that in there. I'm sure she would complain about the visuals being ugly. So I, yeah. I don't. I don't see, I don't really see that. I think, yeah, she can be a lot less picky than the most, but at the same time, if you're speaking about something from authority, maybe you should have some references or just saying that, you know, it worked for me. And I guess that's, I guess that's enough. You know, everybody was making fun of its bad CGI. It, well, so this yeah, is, awful. this is a combo of like, they're poorly composited on shitty effects. Like, that's what it yeah. seems to be to me. They couldn't stand in the woods. No, that, that's impossible. We can't be doing that. They couldn't sit at a restaurant. Nope. No. They couldn't find a flying sky fortress. Well, maybe <laughs> they get a little bit of a pass for that one. It still looks like shit, though. <laughs> get a real sky fortress, idiots. Oh, okay. I thought it looked fine. I do not see get what you see. Sky and I can't RS. pretend to be bothered by what is invisible to me. Special effects that's fine. have to be... So that's a problem. Well, I mean, it's fine for her. I just, it's surprising to me. Yeah, that... I guess she thinks it's fine, but I would say, yeah, but I would say if you're a film critic, well, this is something you need to well, be aware of and true. learn to be aware of. I just appreciate the fact that she said, like, I'm not going to lie and say it bothers me when it doesn't. It's like, excellent. That's, it's good that you do that. Uh, but I don't know. It might be something you want to look into. The differences between, like, well-executed and poorly executed CGI. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know. Maybe. It'd be great if you had that, one of those, uh, like, the charts they have at the Atomatrist where, you know, you read out letters. But instead of that, you have, like, Toy Story, you know, 1995. You have... Uh... <laughs> You know, special effects from Black Widow, and then like as you go lower and lower, you, <laughs> you have to identify yeah. different levels of CGI or something like that. I found out um, this morning, actually. I don't know if you guys knew this. It's not that interesting, but um, Spectre, the James Bond movie, has the record for the biggest explosion in a movie. Do you know that? Uh -oh. No, I didn't know that. that. It's when they blow up Blofeld's facility. So like, I was just like, oh, apparently they they uh, broke a record for that. I didn't even notice that. Like okay, 
It looks pretty good, the explosion, you know, because it's real. Yeah, thumbs up. Next level horrendous for nice. me to take notice. I'm looking at you, Teen Wolf. On that note, speaking of action set pieces in particular, why am I mostly hearing about the supposedly poorly done finale? Because I could have sworn there was like an hour and a half of movie outside of them. Well, hey, if you watch God. my video, <laughs> I spent really long. <laughs> Not just the third act that sucked. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it all sucked. Did you feel nothing watching a little girl pilot a plane because her surrogate mother was shot at the wheel? No, no I didn't. Did you not feel nothing when you saw a little girl struggle for her life? Nah. No, uh, I didn't. I, I just, I didn't really like. That. I wasn't. I wasn't into that scene. No, it wasn't working for me. Uh, sorry. Yep. Wait, was it the largest CGI explosion or pyrotechnic? I don't know. I think it was explosion. I'd have to check. But, um, How could it be the largest CGI explosion? You just make a film where you blow up a planet, like, and just do that. Wait, no, nobody said anything about win. CG. Oh, wait, they did? Oh, oh, wait. Wait, so, sorry, is there a difference between explosion and pyrotechnic, or are those the same things? Oh, sorry, am I, I, I might no, no, no. mixed up. It's my bad, not yours. Uh, I was just, I'm just, it's a different question I wanted to ask, because I was just thinking, I thought pyrotechnic was, like, things strictly involving fire, while explosion is, like blowing things up. <laughs> I don't know. You might be right about well, that, I don't know. Either way, no, you're right. They said largest CGI explosion, and then uh, I, I, I completely blanked on that. Yeah, because like, it can't be that impressive to do a large CGI explosion rather than like a highly detailed. I don't think that it would be. Oh, well, yeah. but, but that, there being larger CGI explosions than Inspector. You just have a planet blow up. Like, that's... And that's well, happened um, in movies, so... Yeah, you'd think even like Thanos' ship blowing up is probably bigger. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm assuming it was a pyrotechnic uh, quantity of, yeah, you know, like me kilotons or megatons or whatever. Probably not megatons, so blow up the whole city. But, uh, you know, how how much d equivalent of TNT, TNT or gasoline was required to make an explosion? I guess that would be the only thing they could actually measure, right? Because CG, I mean, they've been blowing up the Earth and planets and CG since the exactly. 90s. So. Like Star Wars, Death Star. Like, yeah, you know, that was compositing, I think. But the earliest, the earliest CG I can think of directly was probably Titan AE, where they blew up the whole world. But I'm sure it's been done yeah, before yeah. that with CG. I was just thinking, like, you know, like a little explosion that blows up maybe a barrel. It's so, like if you put that in space, and then you're like, I just blew up a planet, by the way. You're like, oh, that was a big explosion. Nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the size of a CGI explosion, that feels weird, but uh, uh, the real sort of hardcore explosions and stuff. They're always pretty neat to see in movies. Yeah. Even though they probably do damage to the environment. Just dastardly. CGI is saving the world, everybody. Even though the CGI probably does damage to the environment too, right? From all the rendering from PCs and stuff. I don't, uh, I don't know. Possibly, yeah. You know, it's about that. you know what's messed up? I heard that the carbon imprint of downloading a game is higher than buying a physical copy. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, that's what I heard. It's so weird. I... But it depends mm. on the size of the game, obviously. I think that probably, like, an indie game, you'd probably squeeze by, but the amount of energy it takes to to run the servers, etc., I've heard. I don't know how true that is. I really do right wonder there. about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's that one's... Mm. Probably for, like, a like a Call of Duty or, like, you know, Witcher 3 or something, like a really big, like, 100-plus gig game, I'm thinking. Maybe. Even then, when know. you think about the CD and the yeah. plastic and, and the then... gasoline used to transport it, and then, of course, if we're dealing with consoles, you have to install all of that. So it still takes all the electricity and stuff to oh, move double it. whammy. Yeah, it's it, yeah, maybe now that I, you're installing games, it might not be as much. But that's why I have to find the article. I, could look, I mean, I think it. if you if you play video games on a console, you hate the planet. <laughs> <laughs> you and I both know it was magical watching Scarlett Johansson glide above the rubble like Nicole Kidman in no, Moulin Rouge. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> we're dying. She was attacking innocent people. I genuinely flabbergasted when I first saw that scene. I couldn't believe all of all the damage she was dealing, and she didn't give a fuck. It's like watching her dance above them. Be like, D shut the fuck up. Magically. <laughs> That's almost like a Gadelb quote. Magically uh, gliding above. <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing. Well, you know, you're right because like some people would just be like, "Did someone actually describe what she was doing in that scene as magical?" You're like, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's just like Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. <laughs> Um, you and I both know it was magical when, what did she even say? When she was just gliding above the prison, I guess. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sorry. Gliding above 
the hundreds of bodies at the prison. There you go. Magical. An intentional reference, by the way. One of my favorite moments in the film is when she is underneath the helicopter and she's flying through. Oh, Jesus Christ. Christ. Am I about to hear the filmmaker not realize all the shit that happens in that scene too? Please spare me. <laughs> um, um, oh, I, so oh. My, brain, my brain was wondering why this was like zoomed in so much. And Copyright, maybe. There. Maybe. And I was really inspired by Nicole Kidman in Moulin Rouge. What the fuck, man? I like, <laughs> What the fuck? That was the it. director. No, time for her to say it. No. Oh no. That, oh god. Oh I thought, no. That was just Julia making that comparison, but the fucking director <laughs> knew too. God damn it. <laughs> that wasn't tuned in. It was just really bad uh, interview footage. You can tell that she's out of focus and the background is, so they they obviously didn't know how to operate a camera, or she's on a webcam or something. Possibly just her webcam because COVID or whatever. I like yeah, spelling yeah. Moulin Rouge as Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Because she's flying across all these men, and there's this kind of massive men underneath her. And she <laughs> massive <laughs> <What>? men. <laughs> what, the what the fuck happened to movie different. making? What? Seriously. <laughs> Where, what the fuck happened? She's under this <laughs> mass of men, all of them dying, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> Die trash. <laughs> oh. Slay queen, literally. When you're on set for the money and you hear these things and you're just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, that's great. That's gonna be a great movie. Also, just the, the uh, it, all it does is make that shot in Black Widow look worse because you can see the, the connect, uh, the, how much the camera is tracking, uh, I forget her name now, uh, Tom Cruise's ex, um, uh, in Moulin Rouge, and she's actually like just a couple inches above those people, or at least the camera makes it seem so. So that, that's a way more impressive, practical shot to see Nicole Kidman yeah. swooping over the people rather than a, a wide CG shot because I doubt that entire facility was real. I, are we doing the fucking thing again where it's like, this is a reference to this other thing. And you're like, uh huh. Okay. Uh, you're like, well, you that's, that's a good. Movie. And you're like, good wait, that's good on its own? And you're like, yes. And you're like, oh. Yes. Okay. I now have the formula to create the perfect film. Yeah. <laughs> Just reference everything. Hey, uh, what's it called? Fucking Ready Player cinema One. Cinema Things. There you go. Or I have Cinema Things too. Cinema Things. She's just above, you know, this angel. It was what? This angel is just above. This angel oh. of death. What the fuck? <laughs> what, are we, what, are we, like, what are we doing? What have what we done? We Stop we? hiring women to direct movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this angel. It's fun, you know, because we could create so these fun. moments of beauty that I hope. Moments of beauty. Over there. Oh, you just you just cut out the screaming of the men in post, didn't you? To make it more beautiful. Mm. Will resonate with young women. There you have it. What do you mean resonate oh, with yeah, <sighs> it resonates with young women to murder men in mass who have done nothing wrong. I I I just think it's it's you don't know what you've done. Like you don't you don't realize that like what's happening in the story that you've made. Yeah. I, I think that's what it is. I think I think like the interpretation is oh, see look, she's flying over this look at that shot, and it's like you do realize, like, all those people are getting buried. It's like, well, don't think about that. Like, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> I, 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 what are you going to do it. if you, like, if I had a daughter or whatever, and I was, I would be thinking, what is this telling her that she could just, like, what? What, what is that actually telling her? F she could float above men. Men? That she and could fly them? like an angel? What is that supposed to do? Fly, like, what, fly, what can she do fly. with that information? This film says you could fly like an angel. I'm like, thanks, Dad, but can you go out and play soccer now? Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's no... It is genuinely unreal because it's such a meme. It's like uh, this this mass massacre is going to be inspirational to young women. You're like, what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering oh, if this is a bit of a. I wonder if this is a bit of a situation, kind of like a, again, Ready Player One, um, where you have Spielberg doing the kind of low-key drama scenes and he's and those scenes are the best parts of the movie and then you have i'm guessing some animation you know director do the rest of the movie which was all in inside of the uh the the virtual reality game and i'm wondering if that's kind of like this where she's doing some of the 
you know, some of the shots, whereas the action is, was there a second unit director or, or somebody handling the action shots? So she doesn't really even get much of the context of what's actually going on with that. She just wanted to do the scene that she liked from, <laughs> from well, I, cause I, you, you raise an interesting point because I'm pretty sure it is just the case that um there is a lot of stuff related to a lot of Marvel movies that is not in the hands of the director. Like they pre-visualize stuff like years yeah. ahead of time. So it makes you wonder if like you had the action set pieces and how much I but again, like it's it's your film ultimately at the end of the day. So Oh terrible. Hope mm. will resonate with young women. There you have it, folks. This one's for the girls. Men aren't allowed to hate this movie. I shouldn't say that. They'll take me seriously. Let me amend my- We can't yeah, like us, say it all the time. Uh, when you really stop parting comments that make like serious criticisms of men being unable to review the film then. Yeah. yeah like we can't tell with you people. What do you- like what you're do you mean take me seriously? The well so you're joking <laughs> then. You don't- you don't feel this way. Why are you hot they, all the comments that say it? Like what the fuck? Yeah, that, well, he, I mean, that, people- yeah. people like this don't understand what satire is. They just- think it's saying hateful shit in a funny voice <laughs> well, and then saying guess, just came short. I, I guess that would because like if you're having a conversation if somebody said that to me it's like well no what do you actually think then like t just tell me what you actually think i don't i don't like this whole um like oh yeah uh, here's a take oh just kidding anyway i'm gonna continue on i was like well wait a minute like what do you actually think well, yeah, and, and maybe you could explain the mechanics of the joke, n not necessarily just in terms of why is this your entire set of like you, people in your comment section clearly believe that men are worthless for, for their perspective on the, these movies. It's just like, where's that come from? Why are you, is that, and yeah. then you're like, oh, it's just a joke. You're like, is it? it doesn't look like it. I, did, I didn't it's realize like everything. Will resonate with young women. There you have it, folks. This one's for the girls. Men aren't allowed to hate this movie. I shouldn't say that. They'll take me seriously. Let me amend my statement. Men aren't allowed to hate this movie or this video. <laughs> In all seriousness. Right, I'm... so okay. I'm still lost. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I, like, yeah, I don't know. Really understand the... mm -hmm. but she gives Why are we talking about men? <laughs> Why are we talking about men? Yeah. <laughs> it comes, it comes up a lot, huh? It's really fucking annoying. But we're talking about, a, right. we're talking about a movie. Weird. Do you think some of Black Widow's virtues are more apparent to those of us? Name three. Wait, was she about to say? Oh, I think she's about to say. I Hold do on, think let's some see. of Black Widow's virtues are more apparent to those of us with long hair, for instance. I never realized. I how have long hair. Is she? Is she? Is she, is she trying to say without saying that women are better at understanding Black Widow's virtues than men are? Well, as a, as a long I'm hair haver, but, but, I will I will substitute myself in. And I will let you guys ah, know. That's what it's right, like. true. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Like that's the joke part. Like teehee, I'm not saying women. I'm saying people with long hair, because statistically speaking, that's more likely to be women. Um, but what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Oh yeah, I mean that's not. Yeah, I thought we were. I thought we were trying to move past this. You know what I mean, you can't keep the joke up forever and keep balancing between it not being a joke, and being a joke, not being a joke, being. It. He's like, is it or not? And then you're like, it totally is. Mm. I, I, I do think some of Black Widow's virtues are more apparent to those of us with long hair, for instance. I never realized- Also, it is a little confusing. Is it the movie's virtues or the character's virtues? I think she's talking about the character. I think she's talking about- Oh. No, I thought she was talking about the movie. I think she might be talking about the movie. I'm not sure uh, yet. Oh, okay. see, this, uh, there you go, this is my thing. I thought I was yeah. clear, and now I'm not clear anymore. <laughs> 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 let's let's, let's, How let's annoying I found women in action's perfect blowouts before seeing this alternative. Wow, you think this is like a good one compared to those? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> she just has random braids here <laughs> and a ponytail there. Like, what the hell is oh, this? I wasn't talking about her hair, just like, I thought she meant the virtues of these films by comparison. Oh, well, yeah. Well, both are correct. It's funny as well that she's like praising its virtues when Rags is like, what about the prison scene? And she's like, eh, it didn't bother me. It's like, wow, that really says a lot about your virtues. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the hairstyling department just oh. absolutely killed it with the Russian braids. But okay. that's a minute detail. Okay. More importantly, I think... 
But it just brings up the idea of why would the Black Widows be allowed to have long hair? Yeah. They should have very, very short hair. They should be buzz cuts. Well, alternatively, bald. Yeah, that's yeah. A, like, yeah. Outright. Yeah, they should have military haircuts because like, that shit is utility. Well, because even if it's even if it's like a point, and and of course it's like, oh, look at the braids. It's like in the final act, all of them have their hair down in like some yep. sort of like they have very long hair that's getting in the way and easy to grab. Do you remember mm -hmm. yeah. that? That hair takes like, effort. They have to have a shampoo lot of and they have to yeah. wash it and they have to dry it the right way and get it all curled up and everything. It's like, does Drakov yeah. allow that? Is he like, is that a thing that he's just down for? Would be a lot yes, more. Well, and, and, and the praise here is the accuracy to Russian hairstyles, not to their in narratives like position in the world. Mm. It's just like that's great. It sounds pretty superficial to me. Um, and I would, yeah, yeah and I would go as far as saying that like this is. Um, she said it's superficial. It's just like yeah, but the problem is we're halfway through your video. Nothing's mm. happened yet. Like we, we, I need some help. Be way more practical to have uh, bald and just really really convincing wigs that way that you could make the your agents even more chameleon like you could you could place them in any situation make them change their their makeup their hair you know all that kind of stuff and they'd be able to blend in or completely change identities on a on a dime basically so yeah having long natural flowing hair that's going to get in the way of firefights and stuff when they're on mission yeah. they shouldn't have hair Ooh. at all do you remember uh, we we brought that up about Batwoman back in season one, and then there was a I think an opening episode where she is just like you know beating some gangsters up or whatever, and one of them grabs her hair and reanks it to the ground, and she's like, ah, and it's like yeah, maybe yeah, that's maybe what that happens. happens. Hair's not even fucking real, <laughs> like it's it's causing you problems. So just, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, that's a ridiculous character design for the bat suit. I think many women. Yeah, hair will. Like if you're wearing gas masks, hair gets in the way and it gets caught up in the straps. If you putting on and taking off backpacks, you have to make sure that your hair is out of the way before you put the backpack on, so mm -hmm. it doesn't get between that and your back. Uh, as, yeah, as, it, just, it gets in the way. As fellow people of long hair, you know, P O L H, uh, could could say, uh, yeah, the worst pain imaginable is when you get like a good lock of hair caught on something and you pull really hard. Uh, yeah, no, it hurts a lot. So. Uh, you're a fighter you put the hair up in really tight bun or you know maybe a braid but even that's kind of liability but yeah if you're going for efficiency even uh, as early back as uh, ancient greek hoplites used to shave their heads because it was liability having long hair so. yeah killed it with the russian braids but that's a minute detail more importantly i think many women interpret black widow's themes not more accurate i thought it was people with long hair not women i don't uh -oh, I really hate how they use long. the word themes. The the people who make these kinds of videos, they just it just randomly gets tossed in, and it, well, well, yeah, because a theme is just like a thing that's in the film. But it sounds um, so much better than well, saying that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, she's really loose with her terminology. Uh, I don't know if she's talking What's... about story themes or the overall theme of a movie. You know, like the setting. I have no idea what she's talking about right now because she was talking about hair like three, three seconds like, ago. This is the stuff that really starts to like ruin what uh, impact themes can have and how important they are to nail in, in like storytelling because you just you're just saying it's just anything and everything and it's all great and you need to focus on them and oh can you make it a little bit more? I feel like they read it in a book and then they were like that's what movies are all about now and I just have to say it at least seventeen times in my video and I'll come across as though I'm a experienced like deconstructor of storytelling and it's like, yeah you nailed it yeah. well there she alluded to a theme earlier but she said just we wouldn't get it she's just that much smarter than we Damn. are we just wouldn't get it so Surely, i guess we'll have to take her word for it mm -hmm. differently than others let's talk about taskmaster apparently he's called tony masters in the comics and he has an entire backstory personality and yeah, he's like a character of his own yeah. people Whoa. are attached to him <laughs> people are familiar with him and as much as my liking of black widow what's that taskmaster me... that looks like they look like the punisher what the fuck no, it's the skull his... mask yeah <laughs> I, I i'm really upset at black widow the movie for whitewashing taskmaster mm -hmm. well, i think <laughs> was That's was it more than one tony masters or was he because i don't actually know specifically I know that there's been there for a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
me want to respond to those who take issue with his gender swapped mute adaptation coldly well see this is the thing if uh, if you were in a call i'd cut her off and be like well don't you think the problem is there's just no character isn't that the problem mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't you think they had something that they could have drawn from, and they just did me, like nothing with it at well, all? Yeah, because for me, if, it, if if her name was Tony Masters, like Tony with an I, and she was basically the same character, it's like, oh, that's way better. Like <laughs> we could just do that if you if you insist on on like switching the gender. Yeah, we could still make it work, but like we didn't get we can anything. Make it work, yeah. I've come to agree that if the only two traits these two characters share are a costume and a pseudonym, they should have just designed a new costume and picked a new pseudonym. Why adapt the likeness of an established character? Because it'll get people to come and watch it. Yeah. If you don't intend to draw anything from them but a power. I can't, however, agree that independent of what I've heard called corruption of source material, Antonia Drakov is a bad villain or a villain at all. Meet me where I'm at here, okay? This no. version of Taskmaster <laughs> is the only one I've ever known, and without any preconceived notion Shit. of what they should be, it's impossible to interpret her as a villain. I keep. What? Um, I mean, are she's mind-controlled. Sort of yeah, no yeah, yeah, it depends right, on how you yeah. find villain. She's an antagonistic an antagonist. force, but in terms of moral culpability, she's, like, basically in the clear, because she had no... Yeah, okay, gotcha, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is that even worse than the Winter Soldier program, where they can break <clears throat> free of it, though you can't break free at all. You can't, yeah. So, yeah. So, this is a mi minor point. Uh, the first time Taskmaster was uh, unmasked, he was in the hospital, and yeah, he was a white guy. So that was a later comic that she was showing. Mm. What a bad, terrible villain she is. And this is the critique that's driving me the most baddie because I... What a bad, terrible villain she is. I need to just be more specific. Are people saying she's poorly written or that she is a... Are, are they saying that she is not a good villain or that she is not a good character? Mm-hmm. I think to yeah. interpret her as a villain as opposed to a victim is to be ignorant of what she represents in this story. I'm fine with saying she's a victim. You know, it's not even what she represents, it's what she is yeah, in the story. Yeah, she is a shitty mm -hmm. villain. Yeah. I, I meant like that, because she's talking about theme. It's like, what do we, the what do you mean? Of... Like, the th I'm guessing will be the theme. I'm <laughs> Dude, pick from the fucking yeah. basket of Thebes. We'll yeah, have one. Exactly. Well, remember, it's a key detail in my video where I said those fireflies I'm just waiting for a video essayist to grab them. I'm sure she will. <sighs> Mm -hmm. For a more substantial look at the point of view I'm arguing against here, let's reference the Closer Looks video mainly about the- Oh, here we go, buddy. <laughs> I don't I haven't watched this video, but how to waste a villain? I totally agree. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wasted potential of Taskmaster. All this claim, I'm subscribed to this channel, I watch this channel, hence why I saw <laughs> okay. this video, with which I happen to disagree vehemently, okay. which is fine. I'm not an avid consumer of opinion based it's amazing. Well, if it's so fine. It, mm, oh, that's wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> Boggles so, the mind that you could have a critic who says that Taskmaster in this was not wasted at all. <clears throat> Full potential, really well explored. I, I think that her argument is going to be mind. that she's not a villain at all. That you well antagonist calling her one. Yeah, well, but, that's what I'm uh, saying. It feels like semantics. We're getting caught in the weeds. Yeah. The main criticism should be she's just not a particularly good character. Yeah, there's nothing there. We'll, we'll have to see. So we'll see what clip she gives us from good old Closer Look. Are we, we going to talk about how she's like, oh, it's fine to disagree in everything, but now there's just an influx of angry men coming to her video, and of she course. secured her Twitter. It's like, go fuck yourself. No, you don't, you don't get to say that at all. Not with that attitude. Fuck that. In fairness, though, there's lots of angry men here right now. Like, I'm uh, where? <laughs> See? You're so angry, Metal. Oh, my God. Jolb, is it you? I knew it. Jolb. Jolb. Fringy, he's cool. Fringy's not angry. He's cool. Mm. Yeah, Fringy is cool. <laughs> hey. Mm, sounds pretty angry. See? When stop he was like, it. Oh, hey, stop it. See, he sounds angry. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's not angry. Mm. I'm just... It's hurting my feelings. It's sad, if anything.
Shut up, angry man. ...with everyone all the time. But I do have words. I encourage Ooh. you to watch his video zooms. and ensure I'm not misrepresenting anything here. But my main takeaway is that he <laughs> thinks Black Widow would have been Marvel at its best if Antonia basically, like, had agency. He okay, that's not at all what I think, that's, necessarily. Yeah, that, that we have now departed from our agreement with the closer <laughs> look. It was short-lived and sweet for those three seconds, but it is now gone. If you said to me the problem was that Taskmaster didn't have her own agency in the film, I'd have been like, okay, that's not even close to what the problems of that movie were. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, to be fair, I'm even fine with the idea that Taskmaster is this like automaton thing that that has been controlled his his or her whole life, and uh, we break them out at the end or something. You can do a lot with that. Um, I just don't think they did a lot with that at all. And there's so many more problems in the film. Holy shit. He explains that because Natasha is motivated by a want for redemption, the impact of her facing off against someone she's wronged is wasted on. A villain who can't talk through that theme with her. Yes. Um, I don't know. So before hearing what Close Look says, you could argue that that's suitable in that she's fighting a repercussion of her bad actions, even if it is someone without agency. Sure. There, that's the thing. There's a lot that's buried deep down when it comes to potential for what they could have yeah. done, and they just don't do it. They don't do anything with this. It's totally wasted. Yep. So let's see what Closer Look says. The film technically had that dynamic there, but the terrible shame is how the film puts absolutely zero energy into exploring it, into task- I fucking hate this voice, by the way. <laughs> I know. I despise <laughs> this silly, ridiculous voice that he puts on. Like, if I was with him in real life, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Talk like a normal person, you're embarrassing a, us. He has a fine, <laughs> normal voice. He, he used it when he came on Zero E-Fab. energy in yeah. it. Stop it. Stop using this goddamn <laughs> fake-ass voice. It's, un it's obnoxious. People are starting to stare. <laughs> <laughs> People at the, the restaurant are sitting around. Spit in our salads. I swear to God, just don't. Celestial, do it. epic. Is he, is he the epic guy? Salad with was that closer chicken. look? That was closer look. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember that epic. epic. <laughs> Celestial, nail biting, <laughs> bone chilling. <laughs> mm -hmm. The terrible <laughs> shame <laughs> is how the film puts Bulge. absolutely <laughs> zero <laughs> energy into the into Taskmaster and Black Widow at actually speaking to each actually. other you know having some kind of um i think i agree with that i i we could have had a really good scene of them fucking talking to each other we, but all she says i think is um is he gone or something like that that's it um there's a lot of things that they could say to each other but we didn't get anything unfortunately piggledy piggledy actually speaking to each other you know having some kind of debate like not literally debating like obviously uh but more so just kind of like six that, foot uh, five <laughs> Man and Joker had throughout the Dark Knight. Uh, Black Widow entirely lacks the juicy, nuanced conflict that juicy. Could and should have been going juicy. on. Juicy. I mean, in isolation, yeah, it'd been cool to have them. That's pretty much what I just said. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. Hero and yeah. the villain, as Taskmaster is bitter and rightfully resentful because you know Black Widow crippled her and ruined her life when she was a child. Crippled? I don't know about crippled. Um, <clears throat> I think. Did was was there any kind of like bodily benefits the, the suit was giving her? Like it, her arms or legs had any benefit? I don't I don't know. I don't um, think they they don't say it. She's just inexplicably insanely strong. Which, when judging the rest of Black Widow as a movie, I think it's just the bad writing. She's just inexplicably strong. Um, and yeah, as for like, could you say that she was crippled? It's like, does it count as being crippled if you get a scar that doesn't do anything other than be a scar? No, I think I think crippled re rely it, it is referring yeah. to you losing some kind of either losing or hindering some level of function that you have. Like if it took out her eye, that would be crippling. I mean, one but of her eyes is it, discolored. So you well, can, yeah, Drakov so. said he had to put a chip in her neck as a result of what happened here. I always found that line really interesting. So I was like, "What is? What do you? What does that mean? Like, what? It, what happened to her that you? It required a chip to fix it or whatever." I don't know if that was it meant to be that way. I don't know. Uh, and uh, Black Widow begging for forgiveness, crushed by guilt as she tries to fight the embodiment of her core character wound. But of course, Taskmaster can't do any of that, because she is a literal blank slate who doesn't even have one line of dialogue. She, she has one. One at the end. Yeah. Um, 
pretty meh, but um, I so I'll, I'll go to bat with the movie a tiny bit. Um, that one line, uh, when she says, "Is he gone?" There's things you can draw from it, like, "Oh, that's the yeah. first thing she says." It's like that means that all that was on her mind was escaping Drake. I was like, "That makes sense." I okay, sure, yeah. Uh, it's just a missed opportunity to not have them talk about anything else. She does have one line of dialogue, actually, but that doesn't necessarily disprove his point. Is he gone? Mm-hmm. That's fair. <clears throat> Hey, copyright. <laughs> yes, no. Like, really, I need, could you answer me? From where he's okay. sitting, because of their lack of substantial communication, Black Widow has nothing more profound to say about redemption than... If you've done true evil in the past, don't worry about feeling guilty or coming to terms with it, because in order to find redemption, all you have to do is track down the person you wronged and spray some red gunk in the... Um, I don't know what I would. Th I've never even thought that's about the movie that one. way. Like, a, like, yeah, what's the movie saying about one. redemption? I've, I've, the movie's so yeah. broken. I never even thought to try and piece together a message. It seems tacked on. Um, if any, like, because it doesn't. I don't think it can work. Like, anything you try and draw in terms of like, what do you think this film is saying about Black Widow's redemption? I'd be like, I don't fucking know. She kills more people in this movie than she ever has. So I. Uh, and they're if we're going to use the information to try and substantiate themes, the movie gets worse and worse and worse as we exactly, go. Exactly, yeah. I, I don't know. I, you know what? This will be interesting. What, is, what does Julia have to say about the theme in this movie, I guess? Their face. Oof. Let's chat about subtext. Why right. can I never say no to her? What's that smell? I'm going to pause because I don't know what the fuck this is. Uh, Copyright-wise. Subtext by Calvin Klein. <laughs> If you're unaware, though I imagine okay. you are aware, subtext refers to the act of art implying meaning where it isn't implicitly stated. While I know that he calls it red gunk... You mean explicitly mm, stated? Yeah, she means explicitly stated, because subtext is often implicit. Well, you see, she's, she's a very big smart, and we wouldn't understand. She would try and explain, but we wouldn't understand. Oh, she's a very true. big smart. Right, she sounds so angry. Angry man. No, no, I'm not angry at all. Angry man. I have a, eh. no. I'm no. Everyone I have run. no anger in my heart Yelling. at all. <laughs> I got rid of all my anger at the beginning of the stream. I have none left. It is expended. I have to recharge at least twelve hours before I can okay, be angry again. Okay, but you again. don't have to shout. Yeah, I would. My I'm, ears hurt. I'm incapable of shouting. I have no energy left to shout. Sir, I need you to come. Oh, my ears. I'm on backup battery <laughs> yeah. mode right now. Help. <laughs> Could you be more like Springy? He doesn't shout ever. <laughs> yeah, some say it's because he's muted, but I, I no, I just think he just doesn't shout. I think he just doesn't <laughs> shout. He's never shouted before ever. Mm -hmm. Implicitly stated. Even know While I shout. know that he calls it red gunk for a punchline, I'd like to make it clear that the thematic importance of this red dust cannot be overstated. Okay, oh, I'm looking forward to try. this. Like, what are we oh, boy. What's happening here? Tell me more. We are introduced to it about 20 minutes into the film, when what it symbolizes is shown instead of told to us. We see it reunite right It's not symbolic of the movie. red gunk, that's symbolic of the character and the relationship that they supposedly used to have. It has nothing to do with the red gunk. It is an accessory that's attached to the red gunk. It I'm is gonna... different. Just because they are proximally close to each other, does it mean that they are necessarily thematically related? I'm going to listen to that again because I didn't even catch that she said that. Implying meaning where it isn't implicitly stated. While I know that he calls it red gunk for a punchline, I'd like to make it clear that the thematic importance of this red dust cannot be overstated. We are introduced ah. to it about 20 minutes into the film, when what it symbolizes is shown instead of told to us. We see it reunite rightful fan favorite Yelena's person- Rightful fan favorite. Rightful fan favorite? Her character is ridiculous. I like the idea that it's, it, she's basically decided that it's an earned position. Like, uh-huh. When her character is awful. They're all awful. Personhood with her body. Widow. So it's it's symbolic of uniting her with her pers a personhood with her body. It's just like, what a way to say it undoes the mind stuff, the red goo. Yeah. <laughs> it breaks you free of the mind control. Okay. Because like I feel like you can do this with everything. Um, of course, you can do it with anything. You know Finn saying he had a feeling, and that's why he stopped being an evil stormtrooper? He's be like, that is symbolic of the Force representing the uniting of personhood with their body. Like, what? 
What? I was just about to mention that she sounds like your American voice, Muller. Like she sounds like a a, a mockery of Americans. <laughs> <laughs> apparently don't have free will shut up the point is i've never i've never had control over my own life before and can i just say i fucking hate her delivery of that line okay. just just listen again look at her face when she describes to you she's never had free will before with her body widows apparently don't have free will shut up the point is i've never i've never had control over my own life before and now i do i want to do things I hate so bored it. I about hate it. it so much. It's like a she's, teenager. She's, <laughs> she's talking like she's getting out of a stuffy Christian household. Yeah. And now she's like going out with her sister to a male strip club or some shit. I've <laughs> always worn jackets and now I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good yeah, for you. Yeah. Jay Longbone, I was about to say the same, pretty much the same thing. Like, it sounds like a teenager saying, like, oh, I've got classes for four hours and you, you never let me do anything because, you know, I'm always so busy and everything like that. <laughs> Not the right tone for that sort of, I've never had free will before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want to do stuff. Let's do stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, okay. Do you want to, like, get an ice cream? He's like, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Oh. Sit on a stool. That's fun. I like your bust. God, I knew it. I knew you did. It's so cool, right? And yes, their oppression can easily be read as representing patriarchal oppression in the real world. I'll okay. Okay. What <laughs> 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 you stop? Did everything just got quiet? <laughs> Fine. Okay. Allegorically, it's hard not to read the Red Room's methods of capture as commentary on sex trafficking. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Can you please go further than that? I beg you. Because you can't, because there's nothing in the movie. Just just that's try. Really... This is so frustrating. Like, the, the, the that's in Force Awakens. The, the People are forced into the Stormtrooper program, if you will. It's like, you see this as commentary on, like, sex trafficking, except this time their bodies are used for war. You're like, uh, yeah... I guess, if you say so. It just as easily be about enlistment and, and uh, the draft. That's probably so I mean, more appropriate to that, yeah. But, there uh, are stories anyone... that have so much more to say on these subjects. This is just, it's there. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. what does it being there mean? It's like, it's there. And you're like, right? The Moulin Rouge thing. So anyone ever, uh, in here watched the uh, kind of somewhat obscure show it's by, it's by some of the same guys who made uh it crowd it's called uh garth Marenghi's dark place it's i like, uh, i haven't seen it but i know about it yeah uh one quote i love about it it's kind of like a, a a mockumentary sort of uh it's, it's basically stephen king like a british stephen king who's full of himself and made a, a shitty horror show in the 80s and it's like a mockumentary of that um but one line i love from that is uh he's talking about his own writing he's like uh how what's the line he's like I've known I've known men who use uh, writers who use uh, subtext, and they were all cowards. <laughs> cowards, yeah. Because <laughs> his other... writing was extremely on the nose. Mm -hmm. There are such things the way they target the least protected, most vulnerable types of girls and reproductive. Do you mean young girls, or do you mean people no, who that's... left in the streets? I, guess. I just, you know, it just feels weird to say that. It's like I mean, yeah, that that's pretty vulnerable, yeah rights are addressed head on even as a late addition to the script is it your time of the month i don't get my period dipshit she thinks are this we is actually going to be praising this again why do people keep praising this scene it's yeah really, really. Bad. it's a it's a fucking horrendous scene and I, yeah i mean cinema wins praise mean, this uh, i mean you could make the argument and in in uh, in uh, support of this film for a second that they are not attached to their uterus and their repro like their femininity because it was stripped from them from them at such a young age before to even pro like probably before to even hit pu puberty I don't know what age they do this shit at but like they don't they don't have that connection to womanhood like that so they just talk um, about it so flippantly I mean it could be a like a like like some kind of dark humor in that, but 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 then on the flip side, you're like, this is Marvel, and there's no way in hell they they well, thought I was gonna say, that, age, that deeply about it. Age of Ultron says it's the last thing they do before officially becoming a Black Widow, so they're usually like they're not kids at that point. Um, oh, okay. And not to mention 
she seems to care about it immensely, Natasha. And then in this movie, because they're oh, doing yeah. a joke, she doesn't give a fuck at all, really. Yeah. Uh, okay. Regardless, oh. regardless yeah, of the Yeah, I forgot about Age of Ultron. Most people try yeah. to. <laughs> Regardless That's the one the... thing I remember from Edge of Ultron. Like, wasn't there a scene yep. where she was like really upset about this? I didn't know it wasn't Edge of Ultron, but I remember the scene. Yeah, I mean, regardless of the empowerment angle and like, oh, I don't have to be uh, measured by my you know fertility, or whatever. The it's an extremely invasive. It's got it's what got to be an extremely invasive medical procedure that was done against your will. Exactly, and you and you you've been yep. per 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 permanently changed and an entire choice of lifestyle has been removed from your your possibilities uh, wow forever. having kids is a lifestyle wow. <laughs> and how generous how generous to like <laughs> consider this scene as like commentary on sexual liberation or, or um fertility being removed and what it means for womanhood i just feel like it's just a shit joke that's what this scene is yeah yep. I don't have a uterus or ovaries. Yeah, that's what happens when the red room gives you an involuntary history. Oh, and it's so like clunky too. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, it's I really do hate this. Annoying. Direct me. We almost see the red gunk in action again about forty minutes in when Yelena intends to free a fellow widow with it. She, yep, she didn't do for it. any of the other oh, ones. You acknowledge that? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we own this. Is, this is a good old fashioned like th these videos of why fab exists. The uh, they refuse to acknowledge things that fuck up their view of the film. And it's really Just annoying. Don't talk about it. Um, oh. And then they will acknowledge it if it's a film they didn't like. Like, that that system is so pathetic. It's like, you're not being consistent at all. And then, we already know this. Like, I'm not making this up because of the fucking rags comment, where she's just like, I ignore it, it didn't bother me. It's like, that's great. It's there, though. Yeah. Also, isn't this a kind of nitpick, but isn't didn't they say that they're under permanent mind control uh, while in the red room? Therefore, they can't, uh, they don't know where it is. If so, would she even know that she had a hysterectomy? Um, Probably not, right? I mean, Nat could have talked to her about it, I guess. I, I, guess, I guess you'd find out. There are, I think you might be able to know that as a Black Widow. Um, they just don't know how to get to the red room, apparently. But I thought I thought there was a there's a quote in there saying that nobody knows where the red room is because they're all under my control. And they no, they don't know anything. because they're um, knocked out on entry and exit. Apparently. Oh, is that what they said? Okay, maybe I can mm -hmm. remember. Mm -hmm. Before she's forced. By the way, we've got a quarter of video left. She's barely spoken oh, about boy. this film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To self terminate. This moment is so important as far as my interpretation of Black Widow's themes is concerned. Because. Uh. It's, sure it, it, it just kills my brain. Well, because... Yeah, let's find out. Because, because here we see Natasha and Yelena attempt to save a fellow widow and Not grieve her hard. when they can't. Here, their motivation to well, take down Drakov they... well... is established, liberating their sisters. You believe me? Y correct. That's the problem. You don't, you, you don't, sure, <laughs> you, well, so, so first of all, you don't, you don't need that. They already had enough of a reason, like, up to this point, I would say. I agree with you, and that was why I was waiting for this to be explicit in my video, so that I could say, like, we know now, instead of just assuming that that was the case. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But it just fucks with all the previous scenes, where they didn't do anything to help any of the other widows when they had the perfect well, opportunity they, to. They, exactly. They had so many chances to save other widows, and they just didn't even try. And then at the end of the film, they destroy all the vials. <laughs> Potentially dooming the rest of the widows. Yep. It's like, oh, lucky we got two, which is just enough to be yep. okay. Which again, to me, that just fucks with the characters significantly. She's like, yeah, but if you don't think well, about I, it. Well, I think I think the thing is, it's it's an instance of the film doesn't. It's like the almost this sense that the film doesn't acknowledge these things. Therefore, you won't slash shouldn't if you did, which is just not the way that I think. The, well, you know the best example of that, right? Criminal. Um, High Top saying it's bad faith to interpret Wonder Woman 84 as having a rape in it. Oh, okay. I, the, and, that, and that's an instance of like, I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's just, what it is. That's what, that's happened. what happened. That's I think what it's it is. awfully, yeah. I think it's sexist of you to interpret it as not seeing it that way. So there, we could play this game well, all day. I think, I think it's just, I, I'm like, the, I, I'm not, I'm neither on or against a film when I'm watching it. You know, like it's 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 kind of neutral, and where it goes kind depends on what happens in the story. 
you know, like you start at a five and then go up or down from there. You start from a place of neutrality. I mean, yeah, I, th I think the film's events are much more important than the fucking music or the camera angles telling you what you're supposed to feel. Yep. Mm. And it's like, you clearly, it's a happy scene with Wonder Woman. You're not supposed to think a rape happened. I'm just like, you're like a child. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> It, it just makes you, you want to test it. You want to be like, you know, like the end of Order 66 scene instead of the like and really play happy music. Yeah, yeah, just like a really celebratory <laughs> party music while everyone's getting killed. You're like, it's fine. The Jedi are kind of dicks if you think about it. Let me know. How many others? Enough. It's no coincidence that 10 minutes later is when they embark on their mission. You see what have you, yeah, what have you stated basic. happened? What, you ten minutes in film time or actual time? Well, all that she stated is there was a first act break, and then we sh shortly thereafter we move into the second act. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be even dumber than that, I think it's just like she stated like they want to help other Black Widows, and then they decide to do that. What? What a great film! Is she like commenting on the pacing or something, or like you know the thirty minute mark initial incident, or is she just? saying that things happened in a certain amount of time. This is, this is the thing that I get criticized for all the time, is all I say is things happened, but I mean, it seems like that's mm -hmm. all you're doing. Leo asserts something else I'd like to address. That we really are done with that. We're moving on to the next point. Okay. Natasha wants to kill Dracov out of revenge. Like, making it worse, the only motivation Natasha's had that's driven the plot is a revenge motivation to kill the villain, Drake. Well, she wants to save the Black Widows. Um, yeah, yeah, so who's wrong. I don't know why he's saying that. I don't know why he's saying that. Yeah, like, she's explicit that she wants to save the Black Widows, but she also wants to kill Dracov. I, I, that's definitely a yeah. thing, too. And in the end, Natasha never actually gets to kill Dracov. Instead, her sister does. Like, while Black Widow watches from a... Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Or... I'm f not, um, not I mean, really. it's fine that she doesn't do it personally, because I would think she'd understand that her sister has just as much reason to kill Dracov as she does. Agreed. Well, I feel so, I, like I, a team, I get so the they're... I get the impression that this is the logic of well, she's the protagonist, she should do it. But then my mind immediately goes, Iron Man one, Pepper kills uh, Obadiah. Yeah, Obadiah, not Tony. In fact, there are a lot of movies where, uh, technically, he does tell Pepper to do Iron what Man, she does. And Iron Man three, which is shit, but nevertheless, Pepper kills Killian. Man, um... kills Killian. That's a Killian. <laughs> Yeah, she she uses oh that part's so fucking strange. She like really puts on an yeah. Iron Man arm and uses the repulsor perfectly in relation to like a, a rocket she finds. Which is weird. Uh, Would that not have a power source? <laughs> like if it's, uh, th if it's I, I, as if I fucking have any. They all operate on their own on that at that point, don't they? I guess. I don't yeah. fucking know. I don't know. The distance, passive as. So wasn't Whiplash kills himself? Um, yeah. See, this is, so well, no, but he doesn't though. <laughs> Wait, sorry, Whiplash doesn't kill himself. No, no. Tony and and uh, and Rhodey do that. Yeah, they, they... Oh, do you mean the, the bomb, the self-destruct? Yeah, he does that, but... Oh. He does do that, actually. Oh, yeah, 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 so he does. Wait, yeah, oh, was he dead? Was he, like, alive? And... He wasn't dead. He was alive. He, he but he's, like, bleeding out, right? Or no? I don't think he's bleeding out. He's just lying on the ground like, oh, okay. oh, you got me. My suit doesn't work. I'm going to kill you now. Okay, my bad. I, 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 all I remember is that shot of them blowing up the two repulses. Yeah. And if I remember, he didn't have his that. mask down because he's a fucking idiot. Yeah, see... So he... yeah. Oh, she's put that there. I thought that was something that, um... Hold on, can we just rewind a couple of seconds? We can in indeed. Drakov. And in wow. the end, Natasha never actually gets to kill Drakov. Instead, her sister does. Like, while Black Widow watches from a distance, passive as can be. Oh, so, oh, so, so, so yeah, Julia's so making like, fun of him for saying, like, you call this passive? It's like, um... Well, uh, in terms of depends. active and passive, it is passive because Yelena is the person who is acting here. Doing it, yeah, yeah, Black Widow is choosing to do nothing. Um, Black Widow is trying to tell her not to do something, which is not. Like, yeah. It's not. I mean, I think, of course, yeah. I think it's fair yeah, it's to. Bad. If the dichotomy of these two characters, uh, Leah Lane is the active one, that's, that, that's fine with me. Yes. I'm just not a fan yeah. of the overall point that Black Widow should be the one to kill Drake. I was like, I don't know that that's. No, I, it's, yeah. it's more of that active passive stuff that I just. Yeah. Yeah, I think that Elena had was one hundred percent invested in killing Drakov. That's not a problem. I I would find only was. agreements in yeah, because she probably she actually had more reason. She's been under my control longer than Natasha has. 
So if anything, she's more invested in taking out. Yeah, you can take out. My 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 problem is like uh you know like seven season arcs like you know, Jon Snow and Game of Thrones being completely ruined and having that kind of payoff stolen from him. That's more my my where I get kind of uh, ticked off is when you have a clear uh setup and and <clears throat> arc to leading to a destination and then somebody else just snaps it up that's well, the kind of thing an equivalent i guess you could say is like you know vader luke the emperor scene and then fucking han solo breaks into the room and just snipes the emperor dead we'd be like them, yeah. what <laughs> like it's like yeah he got him it's like yeah we're like okay that's huh. good yeah you know? i guess high five got right. him. yeah i guess you and luke can go now <laughs> Vader's just like, can I go? Bye. <laughs> Sister does. Like, while Black Widow watches from a distance, passive as can be while it happens. Revenge has been Natasha's main motivation throughout the film, and the resolution to this is a total damp squib, as he's indirectly killed by an explosion that she didn't cause. As I mean, I would say that is directly killed, but... That feels weird. Yeah, like, if I throw a grenade, it goes off, and then the resulting wreckage of something of kills you i'd be like i mean i killed you you know yeah if like, i shoot eh. you indirectly the bullet that i fired happened to fly through the air and then hit you causing an injury to your heart that you then died from feels well, I mean, I, well it feels like hey in grand theft auto 3 when i shoot the petrol tank and then the car explodes i indirectly killed you because all i did was shoot the petrol tank the car exploding was unrelated like here <laughs> the explosion was caused by yelena and then the chain killed like she tried to, and and she had intent it, it's yeah, yeah. direct i was about to say <laughs> it feels much more to say indirectly if i'm demolishing an old building and someone is in there without well, my knowledge yeah, but, well, yeah, intent kind has of. a lot to do with it. It might be the determining factor is intent. Mm. She definitely intended to kill Drake off with this move. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, I don't agree with closer look here. He's making it seem like we really had to have Natasha do it. I don't think we did. Which I don't agree. Yeah. Deaths go. Drakov's was the opposite of satisfying, and if there were to ever be any, I was never gonna be satisfied by his death. Yeah, I didn't care about him. He was a fucking worthless character. Yeah. I don't know how you could have a satisfying death at the end for Dracov, because I just didn't really care about him as a villain. ...kind of story where you had to give a satisfying villain death, it would have to be in a revenge movie. I find there to be no... Textual... Why is he speaking like that? We've been over this. A they... satisfying <laughs> villain death, you would have to be in a revenge movie. Like, what, what's going on? I don't have <laughs> an answer you for you, Fringy. I don't know, I can't tell you. <laughs> we don't have the answers. <laughs> evidence to support that claim except that she would have cause for wanting revenge if she did which she never implies she does what we have in the text she never implies she has reason uh, i would say that she implies i would say that there is at least an implication i would i would say that her main motivation is saving the black widows but to say that there is no desire for revenge at all Mm. She absolutely does. She definitely does. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I just want to know exactly what she said there. You no know well, textual yeah, let's evidence work. to support that claim, except that she would have a cause for wanting revenge. Who are we talking about, Yelena or Natasha? Natasha. Natasha. Doesn't she explicitly say she wants to go kill Drakov in the restaurant scene, if you can call it that? I think she does. I'm almost certain she explicitly says it. To ever I don't know how you could kind of story where you have she, well yeah she definitely wants she she's about to kill him so we can conclude she wants to kill him right I she's think already, that's a safe conclusion okay yeah. she's already killed she's him once she's a, she thought him. she killed him so of course well, she, she I'm talking she, about exactly. when she's about to stab him with her pickaxe and then she gets stopped yeah. it's like so she was gonna kill yeah, him yeah like she, yeah, absolutely, unless she knew. And if you say, like, work, we can't know she to. wanted to kill him, we can only know that she was going to kill him. I'd be like, what the fuck we, are we, we doing? We can only <laughs> know that she wanted to put her pickaxe through him. Whether that kills him or not, that's not of relevance. Villain death. What are it we would doing? Have to be in a revenge. <laughs> I find there to be no textual evidence to support that claim, except that she would have cause for wanting revenge. If I think it's so obvious that she would clearly want to get Drakov. Well, like it, it, it would be bizarre if she didn't. I think so. I'm pretty sure her point here is there is nothing in the story except that she would logically want it <laughs> is that am i hearing that right or am i, I, I think um, my, um, my, my opinion is uh, it's hard to decipher what she means but i think she's disagreeing with closer looks point 
while also saying that the only thing that backs his point up is that Natasha would want to kill Dracov. Right, which is, that's, that is in text then, like whether or not you say that there's no explicit line, you don't need an explicit line, it just follows, like, yeah. we, you know, you know in the way it. that we, we tend to assume that characters will act in a certain way unless indicated otherwise, like, i.e., if we have a character who, I don't know, like their, their husband or their wife dies, we would assume that they're going to be upset about that unless, and if not, we would need to be shown otherwise because it is abnormal human behavior. Yeah, I mean, she's got the motivation. She was imprisoned and enslaved by this man. Her her well, big sister was. I need all, let's, all one, more one more time. One more time. I think I need it one more time. Okay. To ever be any kind of story oh, where you had to give a satisfying villain death, it would have to be in a revenge movie. I find there to be no textual evidence to support that claim, except that she would have a cause for wanting revenge if she did, which she never implies she does. What we have... Okay, I... Oh, so, so that is her point then. She is saying that there is nothing in the story except that it makes sense that she would. But there is okay. nothing in the story, isn't there? They, they well, say, so, like, okay, we're gonna go... Just, just, just to clarify, right? I don't, we'll decide how important this is in a moment, but this is directly from the script. The speech is not really my thing, huh? The, the red lines just mean it's Natasha. It's more like an invitation. To go to the Red Room and kill Drakov? Yeah. Even though the Red Room is impossible to and find, he's still gonna kill. Yeah. yeah, and so now... I'm uh, to be as best faith as possible. She's saying yes. We know they want to kill Drakov, but we don't know that it's for revenge. You'd be like, okay. But would you say this isn't a revenge movie? That's that was closer. Looks assumption is that this well, is a revenge movie. I would be, I would happily say I don't I don't know that I categorize it as a revenge movie. But then again, um, would, um, I've always felt uncomfortable categorizing it as a spy movie. It's just like, is it really <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of spyness in this spy movie. It's like Winter no, Soldier. There is not. Yeah. Yeah, if you were to categorize it as a revenge movie, there's obviously motivation for both characters to want to kill Drakov, the person who imprisoned them for much of their youth. Absolutely. Um, I think they hate him. I, hate, I think they hate the fuck out of that guy. And yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, if they, I was in their position, I'd want to <clears throat> kill him. It makes complete sense, yeah. yeah. they explicitly set out to do that, so when she says there's no evidence other than they want to kill him, like, that's such a weird and nonsensical statement. <laughs> oh, there's no evidence that you'd want to kill the person despite the fact that you want to kill them, and you said so yourself. It's like, okay, I mean, I don't think that would hold up in a police investigation. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> uh, do you have a modem? No, I don't I don't want to, I, I would never kill that man, I, despite me saying that I want to kill that man, you know. <laughs> I don't know, it seems pretty silly to me. Have in the text are scenes upon scenes laying bare how tragic it is that widows' lives are stolen. Oh, the how tragic it is okay. that okay. Melina has yeah. been doing this herself. Is yeah. that going to come up? <laughs> I doubt that'll come up Let's because see. it'll fuck with your narrative. Uh oh, spaghettio. Are stolen. Why does a mouse born in a cage run on that? I hate you. I just want to make sure that's made clear. <laughs> that is, and I hate just you. I want you sure. to die horribly. Wheel. Do you know I was cycled through the red room four times before you were even. Oh man, it must suck to be oh, cycled man, through the sucked. fucking red room, huh? Yeah, that must be really bad if I somebody. I mean, you, did you would that. know firsthand how awful it is. Yep. I mean, I would imagine that you'd never want to inflict such torment on any other innocent person ever. Oh yeah, you more than anyone else. No, uh, well. Mm. She's mm. just a horrible person. Even born, those walls are all I know. I was never given a choice. Oh, well, except she had free will. Unlike Dude, the people she... whose free will you stripped from them. Her level of agency is absolutely just. Oh, there's so much she could do. There is so um, fucking much she could do. Is... Her agency is high enough that she is accountable. She, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not talking about story. that. I'm talking about all of the options she has to save these oh, people. Of course, of course, she has. First and foremost, defect. Book. That would be a great start. Yep. But never like, mind. You worked you on mean, the like, mind Black control. Widow did? You can help. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You worked uh, on the mind control. Uh, you can figure out an antidote. You could give it a shot. No, she stop. gets she gets away with it because she's trying to be like, yeah, I mean, you know, mind control doesn't it sucks? Like, were you mind controlled? She's like, huh? Yeah, mind control sucks, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Uh, Oof. yes, I was mind controlled. I could not do anything. I was a slave for <laughs> and, and hearing hearing her say, I didn't have a choice. Like, oh, I could punch you seriously. <laughs> like, uh, you're you had lying. a choice. You're a lying liar. It wasn't it's like a a great choice, but you had one. It's like that meme. It's like, whoopsie, you did a war crime. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my bad. It wasn't my fault. I got cycled through the red room four times. Wah. 
Mm -hmm. Wah. <laughs> you were just born in a cage, but that's not your fault. What? <sighs> it's fine. <laughs> we have is evidence to support the claim that not a single widow mm. is a villain because none but Natasha, to be fair, are responsible for their actions. Our uh, Melina, Melina is well. definitely responsible. Well, I Yelena appreciate it. I appreciated putting that in there. Um, she put right. and Melina is responsible. It's like good. Oh, did she? I didn't hear the that. The thing is, it was uh, it was half a uh, second of text. Oh, that's uh, just showing you. Just show uh, you again. So oh, that I mean, know. you forgot then I was when never you were given the choice. Yeah, she forgot. But at least God it's in it. there in the form of text in a split second that most Cordo. people will have no idea even happened. Record a line. It <laughs> takes it's like minutes. minutes. It's not. It's not even just that. I'm just annoyed at the fact that there's no explicit mention of how horrible of a piece of shit Melina is. These video well, essays always avoid it. It's so important. Oh yeah. You have to avoid it because the film really collapses under the weight of that. Well, that not... among many things. Your fault. I'm, I'm inclined to agree because Fringy is the most morally aware person <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> fair. If I, heard fair it from any, if I heard it from anybody else, I don't know if I'd buy it. Mm. But I think coming from mm. him, it makes a lot of sense. You, you uh, made a smart choice, Ragu. <laughs> yeah, Fringy, keep an eye on the screen. You're about to see it. It's going to whiz by. Evidence to support the claim that not a single widow is a villain because none but Natasha, to be fair, are uh, uh, <laughs> She didn't even man. know it at the beginning. She had to yeah. edit it in. <laughs> well, so that's the problem is it's like that is important because a big thrust like she's one of the main characters in the film <laughs> that's a big detail you need to go back and you need to not be lazy you need to re-edit that with you saying it explicitly. especially that is a yep, big exactly. aspect well the reality is if you wrote the script and you forgot about that it might be worthwhile to think oh shit i actually probably should like reconsider whether this changes my whole point yeah why am i forgetting particular subject that that's a really big deal i had a whole section dedicated oh, how much of a piece of shit that woman is yeah, yeah like if we well i mean this whole video one of the big things talking about theme is like the lack of agency when one of the main characters has a lot of agency and is very responsible yeah you can't ignore Dude, that role that you played um, it's not just that she's um a unit being used to do things it's that she invented the mind control mm-hmm she is very responsible. She is like, if we're talking about an army, she 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 ain't even like a sergeant. She's she's above that. She's not a lieutenant. She's, she's like she's above captain. You know what? Like she's she's very high up. She didn't install any fail safes at all. She didn't no. make it so she that if could've. someone says, you know, Apple, you're released, and you're like, oh fuck, sweet. That's right, and that's always an option. People did that in real life, like when they're on the inside of regimes, found ways to sneak in things to help the people but she didn't even try no, it. and she didn't remember it she all down she but she turned in she turned in uh nat and yelena and she only changed her mind after that conversation yep she would have sold them up the river she would have sent them back to have their free will stripped yep. from them yep and mm -hmm. the only reason she didn't is because of that conversation so what a monster up the river or down the river oh uh down the river why, I wonder you know, why that is. Why why down the river? Why not up? You, Maybe it's you know easier? <laughs> I guess it is easier. Yeah. yeah. But if you send them up the river, they're going to the mountains, right? So that's going to be harder for them to... I why guess down the river, you're heading to the ocean, though. You can't really I mean, go down the river, though. But that's a long way down the river. But uh, Well, it depends where you put them in the river. Look, let's just split and say across the river. I okay. sold you across yeah. the river. I sold you. <laughs> when, they, when they usually have a character like melina uh my, my immediate thought goes to you know characters like it, it's a it's a kind of archetype but my immediate thought is like rogue one for example the guy who designs the death star he was doing it because he was he was forced to and at the his family at the was threatened threat, right? the, yeah the threat of his killing of his family uh usually there's always some sort of blackmail or you know promise promise of something that you know okay you better design this bomb or we're gonna kill everybody uh, that you love and know like like that, one. but she but she had but she had nothing she had no family to speak of her fake family she didn't really care about obviously so she really had no reason to be doing what she was doing and like you said yeah she had no fail safe so she was just basically creating the uh, the ultimate weapon against people's you know free will and and subconscious doing these horrible experiments while having no impetus to do so. She was completely free-willed outside of the Red Room, right? 
Yeah, but so. she felt like she couldn't make her own choices until Black Widow herself said, pain makes you stronger. Pain. Like, oh, that was it. You unlocked her niceness. Good job. Sweet. It's like a dialogue option. It's like, you've got a 56% chance to convince this to NPC. It's like, Dang. yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's your paragon choice that talks them down. <laughs> like, Pretty much. <laughs> Melina invented mind control in a cave with a box of scraps. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you learn how to mind control? <laughs> On a farm? On a in a farm. cave? In a constructed yeah. frying that, that laboratory is, fortress. That is an amusing line, the, the Obadiah one. Yeah. Because none but Natasha, to be fair, are responsible for their actions. Our protagonists never strive to defeat them, only to free them. And when they are freed, none of the actions they took under the influence, we'll say, are held against them. Naturally. Yeah, of course. Like, um, you don't need to explain this. This uh, is basic. I like how she says that they never try to defeat them, they only ever try to free them. Not true. In the apartment, they're no. just trying to defeat them. Yes. Yeah, they, could have blown they, up. Throw they throw they a throw grenade. They throw a grenade at two of them. And that's the thing, you, you could be like, well, it, you know, there was no chance of doing the gassy stuff. And it's like, okay, but they are trying to defeat them. You agree, right? Even if you conclude yeah. that. It's like, they're trying to kill them. And of course, when Melina blew up the Red Room, that could have fucking killed all of the these yeah. Black Widows. But Freaking. she's not, again, all of the evil things she does, and she just gets to walk away. And this, this analysis just avoids them, <laughs> because it doesn't work. Melina is... I'm going to do a Simpsons reference. Melina is, you know, like, all opposed me. It's like, who keeps saying that? <laughs> and the crowd turns around. It's like, and it's Drake off and Melina. It was him. Let's get him, fellas. <laughs> Let's get him, fellas. <laughs> This is a given. To me, this is much more a story about solidarity and family than it is redemption, but regardless- Doesn't it- Ah, oh, the soup, man! Redemption. Family. Femininity. The yeah. patriarchy. It's about family! Sex trafficking. You're just like, yeah, yeah, you can just keep saying these words without substantiating any of it. Good job. Yeah, like and subscribe. The room is I about friends and family. It totally Shouldn't is. Relationships, one? redemption, <laughs> betrayal. Tell me why that's not a masterpiece, I fucking dare you. I don't think it has something mm. profound to say about redemption. More profound, no, anyway, no, than that no. spraying red gunk is the answer. Uh, okay, tell me what it has to say. Because I yeah, hope that I have convinced Because Melina has a l What? Like, it, it's gonna be very difficult for Melina. What's that? It sounded like she, she like, said, like, hope hopefully now... I've convinced you. It's like, we haven't even gotten to the argument yeah. yet. Oh, we, we well, haven't gotten to the argument. Yeah, so I definitely- I want to hear the end of the thing the so much. Well, that's it. So she's 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 done like the the opening of the essay, you know, where like you make your propositions known, and now we're onto like the argument of you know, <laughs> which kind of actually make the points of like, all right, we're done because all you've done is state things; you haven't qualified them at all. Mm -hmm. oh, to say very minimum. Yeah. More profound, anyway, than that spraying red gunk is the answer, because I hope by now I've convinced you the red gunk symbolizes freedom. The review- What? Wow. <laughs> it doesn't symbolize- That was incredible, yeah, dude. It doesn't wow. symbolize freedom, it is- It, it just is. It releases it them from mind control. Freedom. Like, why- yeah. It doesn't symbolize anything, it is freedom. Why- it's Why, why do they do this? Health. In the show- Because if you say- if you say symbolism, that that like earns you more points on the analysis thing. Even though all you've done is state what is the symbolism is is the red room and the kind of you know not so subtle subtext of you know the whole uh, Hollywood you know abuse of women etc. things like that. But the the red gunk is what they call in show business the MacGuffin or McMuffin, whatever you want to call it, right? It's literally just a tool to to free the the widows. Like it's it's not in itself. Well, the red it's, gun it, means nothing. It, it's the freedom that that's the the point of everything. Right? Well, like it's it's not symbolism though, because symbolism yeah. is like a dove. You know, like the the imagery of like a dove is usually like in a film that's symbolism or something, or like uh, yeah. some sort of object. What it does literally in the story is like that's not symbolism. That's what it is. Symbolism yeah. would be anything that you can interpret on top of that, because it doesn't represent freedom. It is freedom, like it I, is in the story. 
Yeah, like symbolism, a good example of that is like every single frame of Superman in a Zack Snyder film is symbolism for Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's symbolism. Yeah. That is, it's shit symbolism, but you know, no, it's, it's not it's not good. It, symbolism doesn't have to be <laughs> clever, but it's, yeah. it's it's that's very much symbolism. It is symbolism. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like this this red gunk symbolizes freedom instead of just just saying what it is like it, yeah, it's it's so pretentious. Yeah. I don't know what else yeah. to say. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. like I was just going to say, like, if, for example, you had to, like, press your hand on the, for some reason, you had to press your hand with a certain thing on somebody's, like, temple or their head uh, to free them from the uh, the mind control, that could be more symbolistic of, like, being saved or something like that, if you want to go that route. But as far as I know, I don't think the black, the black, or the red goo really looks like anything or represents anything other than oh. just being cured from the mind control, so. Oh, no, sure. Diongo. Oh, she's Jill. Back. <laughs> Jill. Yay. You made it. Oh, the red she was like, enough of this shit. <laughs> to reveal that Taskmaster is Dracov's daughter immediately recontextualizes her role in the story. I suppose up until she's free, we can call yeah. Well, yes. Like, yeah, duh. It's, it's just, it's said as though it's this really big compliment to the movie when it could have been a velociraptor. And I'd be like, that recontextualizes a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really does. Her, Turns out it was a Dracov clone, but <laughs> slimmer and more fit and younger. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh, this because she's technically working against the interests of our protagonists, but the notion of her being a villain uh, dies with the notion of her being Tony. From this point forward, she's no more being villainous Tony? than every other widow we've Tony encountered. I honestly think yeah. this, oh, oh, okay. this whole section of the video about Ma Taskmaster only exists because I guess Closer Look should have called her an antagonistic force instead of a villain. Right. Which he wouldn't, yeah, he wouldn't which agree. Again, like... Like, he wouldn't disagree with the idea that um, she's not really a classic, like, villain archetype when she doesn't have any agency. He'd be like, yeah, that's, well, yeah, I mean, that's fine. It, well, it would apply to, like, a robot, right? Like, should exactly. you not call a robot a villain well, because the robot doesn't have... How come, how come she has her glowing red band on the left arm and the others have it on the right arm? That's... She's maybe black. she's, like, a lieutenant one, you know? Ooh. That's not confusing Higher ranks. in the field. It depends on your skin color. They all go in different arms or legs. Well, no, the black one back there, she has a on on the right. She's blackish, not as black. That's, That's what I mean. That's me. little... <laughs> oh, it's it's literally your skin tone determines if you fall on this side of the graph, then it's on the left hand side. If you're on this side of the graph, yep. it's the right hand side. <laughs> you get a headband. Man, Drakov from... is a dick. Yeah, I know. It's so <laughs> unnecessary. I sure I can't wait for a satisfying end to his story. I know, right? When he explodes in a helicopter. Um so with the I think the mistake that uh closer look made is just semantics semantically well, like uh it's a taskmaster was more of a heavy or a, or a henchman whereas drakov was the villain quote unquote like the, yeah but you can have more than one villain this is the so this is the thing now we might have to start pushing back because i know that when you go on like top villain lists Whoa. terminators show up and it's like terminators can't be considered villains if they're programmed right or how yeah or villain how, yeah. is generally used pretty loosely yeah, Almost well, villain, just mean, villain and antagonist, antagonist a lot of the time. I, I, yeah, a lot of I understand that. why she has said this, but I do also be like, how do you not know that that's obviously he doesn't mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, just give him some charitable. Plus, you're devoting yeah. a lot of time in your video to this distinction, and I'm like, calm down. Talk Nobody's about disagreeing, the really. I, I feel like yeah. it's like you know she doesn't have agency, so saying she's villainous implies she has agency when she doesn't. And I should be like, so obviously you should just interpret that he doesn't mean she's a villain with agency. Yeah, and, and honestly, like, when you look at the definition of antagonist, it's a per a person who actively opposes or is hostile to someone or something, an adversary, not the an. So there are many antagonists in Black Widow. Anybody who's essentially chasing after them or trying to fight them or trying to kill them are antagonists. You know, so well, yeah, like in Civil War, you could say that Ross is an antagonist and that he's opposed to, mm -hmm. like, our POV character, yeah. or at least our main character. Yeah, uh, you know, Winter Soldier, for example. Winter Soldier is obviously an antagonist, but really yeah, the, the, the person the person who's Robert behind Redford it would be the villain. Yeah, yeah, Redford would be quote unquote the villain, but they're both antagonists. Yeah, um, and that's the thing. If someone said Winter Soldier as a villain, I wouldn't like. I, I wouldn't be so invested to make a fucking video all about how they're wrong because he doesn't have a, enough yeah. agency. I'd be like, all right, calm yeah. down. I don't think that's what they meant. Semantically, yeah, maybe semantically you could be wrong, but honestly. 
Uh, um, but, yeah. but honestly, villain? No, a villain, according to yeah. Merriam-Webster, a character in a story or play who opposes the hero. So it's the same definition. So vil- villain and two men. Uh, yeah, I, so that makes them wrong. But were they angry? It, Definitely. <laughs> if they wrote a whole book about words, they wrote they a whole book. Very about angry. <laughs> <laughs> basically the biggest biggest well actually ever done actually uh but yeah no a character in a story or play that poses the hero so honestly you both of them are villains so yeah oh they're all villains all the all the bad people are villains people that not that necessarily bad people the people that are against the main character are villains with all of the time that i've had to process this image that's on screen more and more <laughs> things don't seem correct to me oh no <laughs> for instance they have their guns out and are pointing them, but they also have guns that are in the holsters on their left leg. So I guess they just got extra guns. Well, they got one maybe on they have, Oh, do they have? Yeah, oh, yeah. they have dual guns. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't make sense. Um, also, um, so wait, so they, they have a they do have a gun on each. So if they need an extra gun, they have an extra gun that's available. Well, they can of fire both at the same time, right? That's like double damage. Oh. Oh, that is double damage with no with no accuracy penalty either. That's incredible. Well, the Black Widows, we they can aim both at the same time. Guns at once. That's true. They're that good. I've, this, this always baffled me in the movie, how they're just in this room doing this like Cirque du Soleil bullshit with their Glocks. And yeah. I don't know what this is supposed to do in terms of training. Also, that is going to get shot in the back there. Look at that. The blonde yeah. one to the right. <laughs> He's just going to shoot the, the redhead to the left. <laughs> is this some kind of like like yoga of a kind this is combat yoga where you just okay. point your guns at things randomly well, also, well, they're practicing had... aiming and posing it's like exactly it's strange yeah it is very strange <laughs> that they're practicing because practicing aiming and posing like <laughs> generally when you practice aiming in order to assure that your aim is good you're either firing or yeah. you are you can dry fire in order to minimize the amount of wiggle that your gun will make when you actually pull the trigger. But that doesn't seem to be what they're doing here. And like having unusual. multiple targets sort of moving up and down, left and right, and appearing a different way to test your reaction time and stuff, you could do that. Uh, I don't know if there are any targets in this room, because they're all aiming at different no. things. Yeah, and they and they flip around sometimes, and they face yeah. the other way, and they do weird things with their legs, and they slowly spin around. <laughs> I, I heard someone say that it's supposed to mirror the ballet they used to do when they were kids. Why would that be important? I don't know. I don't know. Why they all... So some of you did ballet. That will be irrelevant and will not be ever brought up again. <laughs> this is a gun. We're going to teach you how to shoot it well. Well, they had, they had gun kata in equilibrium, so maybe this is gun yoga. You know? Gun kata. <laughs> gun kata. Countered, which is the significance of her. When Natasha realizes that she didn't just kill a little girl, but doomed her to experience a worse version of the same trauma she herself experienced, mm. that's when saving her, freeing her consciousness, becomes unnegotiable. I'm gonna open the door. But Should have been unnegotiable would, why, anyway. Why would that change? Yeah, that doesn't change if they're, anything. They're freeing all of the Black Widows, then Taskmaster's included. Yeah. Forgot, Forgot to mention, to this, mention is that a... this is a clear and powerful reversal of leaving her to die by explosion. What she didn't really no, leave she wasn't, her to this die. Wasn't, she wasn't. She did it. She was already there. Not to mention, I don't know. No. That this, this is meaningful. She didn't do this on purpose. It just sort of just happened. She was like, "Oh, I'm here now. Yeah. Hello, I'll release Man, you." It, it feels like we've gotten it incorrect on multiple levels. So first off, she blew her up. Like she blew up Dracov's daughter. She didn't leave her to die. She yeah. She, she blew her up. Actually caused it. Actually exploded her. Um, yeah. And here, yeah, like you just said, she stumbled here um, because Melina was totally okay with just leaving her to die, even though Melina yeah, to, knew who she was. To make my criticism clear, because someone could be like, she still chose to remove her from the cell. It's like, yeah, but I'm saying she didn't intend to get here. No. This was not a part of her goals. Her intention was just to escape. Exactly. Like, she didn't really know where, She didn't give a fuck about Taskmaster's where... well-being. Yeah. Until a, now. Yeah. A better version of this would have been uh Melina's like, I need to blow it now. This thing needs to go down and be like, okay, give me ten minutes. And then the, the rush rush against time or her sneaking back or, in and finding her and releasing her or something. You do blow it up and everyone's getting to their wow. escape vehicles and she knows because Melina tells her that like, oh, I just escaped Taskmaster, locked him up in the blah 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 cell and she's like, and then you locked them up. She's, and then she's like, yeah. Don't fucking waste your life saving her and then Natasha's like, I have to, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, fuck you, Melina. Piece of yeah, shit. Yeah, I'm I'll fucking deal with you later, Melina. <laughs> 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 Melina is a like full-on Nuremberg trial uh, Oh yeah. when you think about it like she would have absolutely been taken in it's like okay so at what point during your many years of not being under direct mind control did you develop all these weapons of, of mass terror and mind control and everything <laughs> it's very 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 disturbing how much she gets away with in this, in this movie you gonna come after me let's go uh, it's okay it's okay I know you're still in there and I nothing know you're happens. Six, a six foot five male. <laughs> <laughs> nothing comes of that, by the way. When she says, "I know there's still you in there," that's just like, "Oh, you still need the red dust." You yeah, can't you can't do, do anything without that. Yeah. Which, again, I think is another missed opportunity in the movie where they like Winters. See, Winter Soldier knew what it was doing at least in some ways because, like that, that's a great thing to have him be like Bucky, and then he pauses and he's like, "What the fuck is this fucking with his brain?" Because of course it would. Yeah. And but like this, this, this movie was just like, no, there's just no hope. If they're fucked, you know, like, yeah. oh, well, that's that's like you're wasting perfect opportunities for storytelling, just FYI. This is like magic, magic mind control, whereas Winter Soldier was basically programming, you know, uh, which it, you can deprogram somebody, give enough time. I just think it's effort, way usually. more interesting too that you can yeah. get, and it makes for the payoff I actually like where Steve refuses to kill Winter Soldier and would rather die than do it. And it's just like, hey, yeah. Great stuff. I, it gets me choked up when I see that part of that. What's like how she know. might be in there? Um, what's the name of the daughter again? Yelena? Jacob's daughter. That's that's her name. Jacob's daughter. Oh. Jacob's daughter. What's their name of the Jacob's daughter? It's like Anna Tony, I think. Anna Tony. Um, Anna. That's just Anna and Tony put together. <laughs> Anna Tony. <laughs> Why? So Anna. Fuck. What was? Oh yeah. So Black Widow says, Anna Tony, I know that you're in there somewhere. And in much the same way in a meta level, we're all going, oh, Nat, I know that you're in there somewhere because this film is so bad and it ruins her character. <laughs> oh, Anatonia. Ant Antonia. That's sort of, okay. Yeah. Antonia. Anatony. Where the fuck did you I was get about that from? Oh, <laughs> oh, yes. Anatonia. All, all of you were going to call me out until Anatonia. chat did it for you. Yeah. <laughs> Sit <laughs> down, <laughs> all of you. Sit the fuck down. <laughs> Chat, I got you, buddy. You did it. Nobody remembers her name. She's Drakov's daughter. That's what her name is. Her name is Anatolia. Get it right, please. <laughs> Anatolia. And, well, oh, I guess okay. her name. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's honestly hard for me to understand how people watch this and don't see a movie putting energy into exploring what it is to grapple with evil. They don't explore stuff. that. They don't explore they it. Don't explore it. They <laughs> yeah, see, I just turned it around. I can't understand how anybody could watch the movie and feel like it's really purposeful and intelligent mm -hmm. and commentary on any of these things. You just, you hear the one line and that's it. Problem solved. The, the film has explored the concepts because it said a line. Belch. Reminds me of a certain movie about freedom versus security. Just saying. Oh my yeah. God! Referring to Captain America: The Winter Soldier. <laughs> the, the the movie that is terrible. Yes. Oh my that God. That is a bad. Movie that does not explore the thing people say it does. But they feel it did. They do feel it did. Did. Yes, we see Natasha spray red gunk into Antonia's face, and we don't see them debate their moral philosophies. But what I gather from that is that Black Widow's opinion on redemption is that your personal feelings of regret and your words of apology are not as important as the tangible action you can take to right your wrongs. I well, Where, so that and, would be... Where, yeah, that was, where is that? Where was that in the film? Come on. That would, that would be a, a really on, interesting and cool thing for way. them to do if it was in the film. Yeah, they never yeah. do that. This isn't in the movie. This doesn't exist. You made that up. There is no conversation about these things, like, also, even vaguely. I don't know that it's even, I don't even like that idea. Like, it's like, you know, saying that you're sorry isn't as important as doing the action. It's like, well, yes, but saying you're sorry is also worth something. Like, what the hell? I mean, there's yeah, no part because she's saying she's saying this as like a response to how there's barely any fucking discussions in this film on these topics. It's like, yeah, because they're not as important as the actions. Like, you don't have to not and have the film, them. Yeah, like, and all the characters recognize that it's not as important as the action. It's like, oh, all right. Because like, oh god, if she relates this to like Alexi, it's like you see, he doesn't get to speak throughout the whole film because it's his actions that are more important. It's like I never even knew how he felt about any of this shit. Thanks yeah. to that, I just saw him doing <laughs> yeah. stuff.
Ugh. I think this theme is also present when it comes to Natasha and Yelena's parents. I keep hearing about how unfair it is, how quickly they're forgiven for their evil yep. acts. Yes, 100%. 10,000 yes, percent. 1 billion percent. They were mind controlled. This is easy. Move on. And I am more sympathetic towards that opinion because Finally. they do have done evil, but I'm also- This is an understatement, but okay. They do have done what evil. <laughs> 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 convey the idea that you want to convey you're bad at deciding what words to use also convinced their pseudo redemptions help my point we don't what do you mean pseudo redemption pseudo how do they help your point the, so the, what, the, i can only imagine she's going to say we don't get to talk about what they should blah, blah blah it's just about them acting and they do redemption tisms but like i just counted that with they escape at the end they escape justice yeah they, there's no mm -hmm. accountability so you can't win this one julia i'm sorry so bad so, like so like uh the the idea is that you can't criticize uh, a work because they try to say talk about important things or say important things watch birdemic birdemic is a very very on the nose uh has a very very on the nose uh message about climate change and you know taking <laughs> care of the environment or else the environment will bite it back you but it's also a movie uh, about evil birds that will like peck at you that are the worst CGI you've ever seen. And it's, it's a completely farcical movie but because they have yeah. those ideas that doesn't make it, you know, ideas are great. Execution is everything. It doesn't matter Family. what ideas you have. You know, you, well, you have to be able to follow that up with proper execution. As long as you say the words family, redemption, or sacrifice, um, Family. betrayal, yeah. Rebirth. Um, yeah. Family. Just, or you just have a saying. little a little puppet Yoda just explain the spell <laughs> out the entire <laughs> the entire message of the movie and the entire theme of the movie. Well someone just said I know it's a deleted scene, but she let Taskmaster get captured by Ross. She's in jail probably, not Melita. It's like, yep. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the one without agency gets to go to prison. <laughs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> Fuck oh, now. It's in, it's oh jeez. Good. But oh, I'm also, oh. also convinced their pseudo redemption is wow. my point. We don't see this family reach peace by having effective heart to hearts. Quite the opposite, actually. We see. Quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> Why are you speaking like that? Stop it. This is the scene. No. Alexi tried <laughs> desperately to communicate with these girls, but it's just not working. The first moment of real understanding we see between him and Elena comes about through an action, not words. The day. That's literally words. <laughs> he's gonna, <laughs> say, he's gonna well, sing a song. Is she... If we're gonna say action in form of song sung, then speaking is action. Again. Exactly. Yeah, that's really no. funny that she had to account for that. She was like, yeah. "Okay, it's words, but songs. That's different." <laughs> At the th by the time you have to do three of the text edits, you know, yeah, you're yeah. like, "Baby, baby, give me." You see, between him and Elena comes about through an action, not words. I love that. Well, words no in the form words. of a song. Well, <laughs> well, God, it's well. So it's not. Words Your entire point is wrong. Yep. Your entire no, point is she wrong. just fucked over her entire point there. <laughs> nice. She That's could have saved words in the oh, form no. of a song. She could have said, well, lyrics. <laughs> you had one job. It's the day. The music. I wonder if she'll mention who came up with this. Yeah, that would be awkward. <laughs> No. He's never successful in reciting his because none of the characters take him seriously. They don't let him finish. Yeah, they don't let him speak. Yep. Joke. Like you're saying this, like it's a really meaningful thing. Which is like, no, it's everyone's being an asshole to him. And this thing, he's not even a great yeah. person. He's just someone who's trying to speak. Apologetic <laughs> monologue because he's busy being interrupted by the actions he's taking. He's busy write... being interrupted by the actions <laughs> he's taking. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I'm, 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 uh, I mean, she just spoke Chinese. I don't. Know. <laughs> uh, she uh, he uh, is too busy being interrupted by the. Oh, no. oh no! Hey, that's a callback. <laughs> can't say that. I'm not. I'm making what? I'm making fun of Peruvians. No, I was, I, th I, th I thought you were just uh, doing your voice acting again for Gotham High. Yeah, that's right. I'm Uncle Alfred. <laughs> and you're super gay. 
Uncle Al. <laughs> Masterful yeah. Uncle Al. Uncle Al. Al. God damn it. I choked, on my own, I choked on my own words for a second. He is Uncle Alcohol the Alfred, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to use that line every next time somebody calls me up, uh, like a cold call advertiser. I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm being interrupted. I'm busy being interrupted uh, uh, on my vacation. You know, I, I have to work a 40 hour week. That's that's my them interrupting things I really want to do. So sorry. See you later. I'm busy being interrupted by the things that I do. I just, that's just me interrupting myself, I guess. But that doesn't sound as poetic. Things aren't solved by words. Instead, they're solved by lyrics, which are like words, but they aren't. They're actions. But by actions, we mean words. Or more specific lyrics. Yeah, so I'm glad we've learned a lot today. It is wrong. Mm -hmm. Natasha and Yelena's parents find peace with them because they helped dismantle the system of oppression they created, which was <laughs> essentially the best they could do at it, that point. That's never <laughs> talked about. The idea that that's why they did any of this, that it's the best. I don't even know why Alexi's doing anything in this movie. He never really makes it clear. He's just running around doing yeah. stuff. Just hanging out, being made fun of. That's his the job. His job is to be just put down. I said this in the video, but the closest I could find to a motivation is he wants to fight, just in general. It's like, yeah, fighting stuff. You don't That's need me. Black Widow to do that. This movie suggests that apologies are less effective than reparations. <laughs> reparations? <laughs> I mean, mm. if we're just gonna talk about like this isn't in the movie. Yeah, dismantling but, yeah, the organization is more effective than simply saying sorry. It's like congratulations, yeah. <laughs> you've nailed it. <laughs> yeah, but in the movie though. Where's this exactly? Where is this in the films? I'm oh, sorry. Where is this in the film? Where is? <laughs> I don't see it. I don't find if it. If you want redemption. when I look. <sighs> I had more to say originally about bioluminescence. Ah, there it is! Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Called it. You go for all glow like a firebug. Oh, <clears throat> do you guys call them? Do you guys call them fireflies? Have or you been lightning? drinking? No. Do you call them <laughs> firebugs or lightning flies? So, no, I stop. <laughs> Let's stop. <Robert>. Let's stop. <laughs> Let's begin a new. Let us rebirth this conversation like Phoenix. Do you call them lightning bugs or fireflies? Who calls them lightning bugs? I call them lightning bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I also call them fire. When I was growing up, my dad would say those are lightning bugs. And I think that's kind of cool. Lightning bug. I was just curious. I don't know where he got it from, but that's just kind of what I grew up calling them because we get them here in Arkansas where I live at my house and most people call them fireflies which is too cool but I like I, I think lightning bug fits better because lightning so fire is more constant if you have a fire it's glowing and it's more um it's it's more consistent but lightning is like a oh, what's well, okay I'm fine <laughs> just asking just making sure He's lightning is like ass. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm, lucid. I'm, I'm particularly lucid right now. Lightning is like a, you know, like that. Well, RTX is blocking the sound of my snap, but I snapped when I said lightning is like that. So lightning RTX is like light. that, you know, and much because the lightning bugs, they kind of make a light, like a little glow and it's really short, which I think lightning bug fits better because lightning isn't really drawn out. Typically, it's very focused. It's like, wow. But a fire... <laughs> Is, is this your argument for lightning bugs? Because the, the fireflies glow constantly, though, don't they? No. Well, wait, 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 wait. I thought they were both the names for the same insect, the same Aren't arthropod. They? I think they are, but the, but at, at night they glow at a constant at a constant glow rather than like a the spark of well, lightning. Well, here they just they they flash for a moment and then they go back to being just normal bugs. I mean, I've, I've not seen fireflies in real life, so I actually don't know what they, they look just, like. They just like they like flash and then they're gone and then they flash again eventually. So when, like at night when you're chasing them, it's very difficult because it's kind of like a game where you can only see them for a little amount of time and you have to find them. Because oh, no, right. they, they kind they're of leaving. flash, don't they? Yeah, they're, they're, I think lightning bug is a more appropriate name than fireflies when we talk about their Ugh. symbolic. Um, like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they kind of they kind of uh, shimmer. They shimmer in the dark. 
Not so much kind a flash, but like a shimmer, yeah. They kind of live a glow to them. Oh, it's an at Geo. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can get on the lightning bug train, but I've always called them fireflies. Yeah, I see why. I think I generally default to fireflies as well. It's just but a lot better that... name for it, too. Lightning bug doesn't roll off the tongue like firefly does. Yeah, it's it's only firefly, lightning bug. They are the same amount of syllables, but one does sort of firefly. And plus there's the, the um, is it alliteration or is it assonance? Uh, yeah. It's alliteration where the same, the same, I think it's alliteration. It could be alliteration wrong. is when it's the same letter for the beginning of each word each successive word yeah so like always away and uh and, uh, fucked it up like because, uh begins with a u because i think the difference between alliteration and consonants is when consonants is when it's the middle or end of the word and alliteration is when it's at the beginning so alliteration fire, like peter piper picked a pack of pickled peppers he picked a yeah, pack but lemming squeeze uh, yeah picked a pack consonants yeah, Peter Piper picked a peck. Pick, pick, I don't know what a peck is still, but like, you know, it's, it's something. A it's something out there. Of, a peck is a unit of peppers. It's time to peck. consult Google. What is what is a, a peck? It's a kiss. What is a peck of pickle? A peck is to strike or pierce for especially repeatedly with the bill no, or a point now. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, eight quarters. I'll just like, I picked a peck. It's a quarter um, of a bushel. A peck is a quarter of a bushel. So okay, so now we need to know what a bushel is then, because I don't know what that is. <laughs> like a well, bush. a bushel. Oh. What, a bushel is an imperial much? and U.S. customary unit of volume based upon an earlier measure of dry capacity. The old bushel is equal to two kennings or four pecks or a dry gal. Just keeps going so, down the rabbit so hole. <laughs> You're like, answering me here. It's a glen. <laughs> You're like, I don't know what's that. <laughs> Learn. <laughs> What's confusing about bushels is that depending on, like, I guess the seed, you get different amounts. So, like, I guess per bushel of cotton seeds, it's 32 pounds, but a bushel of cucumbers is 48 pounds. Are there farmers in the chat? If you're a farmer, <laughs> could you help? There's got to be one. There's got to be one statistically. Yeah. Because bushels just sounds... That's very... It doesn't make sense. You'd have to know individually which crop and how much a bushel is. It almost defeats the purpose of a bushel. Any farmers tell us what a glen is? <laughs> farmers. Farmers, tell is. farmers put an F in the chat. Uh, yeah, F for farmers. Yeah. Do you have a bushel of days? <laughs> like, I will see you again in ah. two bushel days, or a two bushels of days. And like, oh yes, that's a month and sixteen days. <laughs> it's two bushels of days. Anyway, she's finished. She's the thing. <sighs> oh, by oh, the way, I'm pretty sure it's nearly because we got the Squarespace ad coming up. Ooh. Oh, yeah, we're almost there. We're almost finished. Remember, Say right the beginning. Beginning. About, about the movie. Bioluminescence, sisterhood, mm. the American yep, dream, course. the nuclear family, yep. the American yeah. dream. <laughs> Yeah, right, she's I doing the meme, ball. but for like for real, where you just name stuff. Adop yeah, did, did she just say adoption is trauma? Dream. Wait, sorry, can we? Did you say adoption is trauma? Just... I... The American dream, the nuclear family, adoption is trauma, but. Did adoption you say adoption as, as trauma? As. as I, trauma. I think as. I think it's as, yeah. But it's good that you're adopted, because else yeah. you'd be sitting in an orphanage and we'd be making fun of you. Well, but if she's saying <laughs> as trauma, then there's some other element there. Yeah, she's Not saying... That it intrinsically like is. Yeah. It could be traumatic. You're adopted. Mm -hmm. it, well, no, maybe... May because it should be the opposite, possible. because if you got adopted, that means that those parents, they picked you out. You, They had a whole... They had bushels of kids to pick out from and they chose you so that that's even better than being born because if you're born they didn't choose you know like you well it's so better I, than being born you are born if you exist but well i mean like if you're born as a child well everyone's born as a child but if you're born and then like oh these are my parents they birthed me then like yeah they have like this sort of they didn't have to adopt you know adopting is more voluntary in a sense, like, oh, that's the one we want. We we only pick the cream of the crop orphans for our family. <laughs> and so if you get picked, you're like, oh, yeah, like my parents, they they really notice the value that I, I seem to have. They pick they could have picked other kids in the orphanage and fuck them. 
I got picked. <laughs> what if they so picked you because you were a strong lad for your age, and then they just make you work, and that's it? Hell, I, that's something. You're no. a strong lad. Then you could tell yourself, you know what? I'm a strong lad. I'm a strong lad. I'm fine with saying that it can be traumatic to be adopted. It's just going to have to be specific circumstances. Yeah, I'd, maybe. I'd say, I'd say more trauma is being an orphan. That's true. Being abandoned. Yeah. But the, 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 possibly. Like, why? It depends on the circumstances. Like, what, uh, what if honestly, you had, like, horrible, abusive parents who died in a train accident or some shit, and then you're adopted by amazing people? It's like, well, in that case, I guess... Yeah, being adopted, or, or like, you ever seen those uh, those videos where, like, after X number of years, the mother, the, the stepmother, stepfather, actually, like, for their birthday, gives them a paper saying that they officially adopted the child. That's, like, the happiest they've ever been. And, you know, all that kind of thing. Like, yeah. They, it, it, Usually the adoption is the good stuff, not the bad stuff, right? Well, I think so. Well, it's the joke, like, oh, I bet you're adopted, which is like a funny meme, but it doesn't really make that much sense. It doesn't have to, but, you know, it made, you know, like if I learned I was adopted, I'd be like, okay, nothing's changed, actually. Yeah, I agree. It's like almost irrelevant. Like, why did you even tell me? Like, it doesn't even change anything. Well, you wouldn't own your bone marrow, I guess. I'd know it in my bone marrow. You wouldn't own your bone marrow. What do you mean? Oh, oh. rags, come on. <laughs> no, 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 I know, I remember, I know what you're talking about. You're referring to the stream that we did with the bone marrow and the orphans. <laughs> <laughs> like three yeah, years ago, I mean, but yes. That is, I was playing Islanders when we had that stream. I remember it. That's mm. how I associate my memories with the, the streams is, was I playing a game at the time? Ah, yes, I was. I was playing Islanders when we had that stream. Yeah, I mean, it. Goliath. it all that that was the same stream as an example of how little uh the whole adoption thing doesn't matter um uh, a cousin of mine was actually uh he he when his entire life um he's now in his late 30s his entire life uh not knowing that his father wasn't his father his father uh they never told him that he he was i don't even know if he was technically even adopted but his father is a uh, they they met after you know he was born and everything like that. He's too young to remember. His father was never. They have no blood relation, so that might be kind of weird if they ever had like a needed emergency blood transfusion or something like that. But in the end, it didn't matter because it was his dad, regardless of blood. So yeah, because you have. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'm <laughs> satisfied with what I've said already. Mm -hmm. This video is sponsored oh, by Squarespace, yeah, and while oh, you know it's an easy-to-use website designer, you may not know the extent of its Blocking capabilities. Squarespace. Squarespace supports community building by allowing for comments and replies. Whoa! That would, that would be odd if in the ad they were like, yeah, this website is shit. Enter. Fuck no, I, just, wanna... I, I like the celebration of features, and one of them is you can grow a community because there's a comment section. It's like, man. Oh, revolutionary. Oh, this. <laughs> I just want to know all, all the countless nights she spends like crying herself to sleep looking at all those capital letters in Squarespace. I mean, it's got to it's got to be painful. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's going to be Oh, I imagine there's like a thing, some kind of like thing on there that advises that and she's like, "Ugh. Ugh. Get away from let me. Ask her, let me ask why she does not capitalize her words. What's the name of this video? Uh Black as you as you as no doubt you are aware, Black Widow is brilliant. Oh, here we go. It's in my my history. Oh yeah. By the way, I looked that up, uh, and two different AI grammar programs said that was wrong. It said well, what do they know? They're just robots. They're robots, but honestly, they're uh, yeah. I without I any without robots. any goading, I did the fluency on Quill, on Quillbot, which is a uh, a grammar and re re uh, writing AI, and it said, "As you are no doubt aware, that's what it was." It suggested without mm. any prodding whatsoever. So oh, I spelled hello wrong. Fuck. Our exclusive hello. user experience with Squarespace content can be locked behind a paywall for members only. Oh, if great. you have a product to push, try oh. Squarespace extensions with which inventory can be managed and commodities can be promoted. All things considered, what's stopping you from utilizing my link, squarespace.com slash Julia Cudney, to redeem like you. your free trial and receive 10% off of your first purchase of a domain. <laughs> Oh, okay. We did it. That was we, that. All, uh, all of easy A. Have, hope they don't have um the capital letters in them. <laughs> yeah, said, that was that was discussed a couple of times now. In my 
comment. I said, hello, I'm Rags. Why do you not capitalize your letters? I will leave that and we will see if she gets back to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's oppressive is why. Is Whoa. it expressive? Like she's not like oh she's not like all the other girls who capitalize their letters. Yes. That's not even consistent because she has capital letters in her titles. Not like always. In some no, uh, I, I I mean in her thumbnails, I meant. So she's oh, not even thumbnails? Yeah, she's not even like holding completely true to that. Like I'm assuming true booty is probably a an actual logo, but I'm assuming the text under that is stuff that she added. So that's that's an all cap. So stick to the you know, stay in character. Come on. The reality show only I remember. True beauty is in the eye of Tyra Banks. Who's Tyra Banks? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? Why are you laughing? I don't know. I, 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 I thought you were bullshitting that you didn't that you didn't know who she was. Is it is it what? two beers or the three beers? I am curious. I'm on, I'm on three. That makes I a lot of sense. Lot of sense. How, no, <laughs> does that make a lot of sense for it him? Does. Yeah. I never. God fucking damn it! Who is Tyra Banks? <laughs> the supermodel chick who's very yeah. cringe. America's, she's she had also... her own talk show. Oh. Told me that she's also a giant iguana. What? <laughs> giant iguana? You, you don't remember the joke, clearly. There was the joke where it was basically her just screaming at somebody and then a giant lizard jumped out of her. And then ate his <laughs> I don't know mouth. that I've seen that. I feel like I've missed <laughs> out. Uh, I don't remember. Let me, uh, let me see if oh, I can find it. I, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Family oh, Guy, America's Next Top Banks. Model. Is oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll just put it on because we're, we're all in the watch together. Yeah, do it. Fucking Man. do it. Well, but what about Ref copyright? Uh oh. What's well, it's oh? Actually, that's a good point because we oh, can't watch. We don't. Be... Could let me Google. Just pause it. I'll let just... me go to Tyra. Uh, but... uh, you can just look at. I'll post the link here. You can take a look in in your own. I've got Tyra. Is it the? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't. It's, it's thirty seconds, chat. I have to do so much pausing to be able to show you. <laughs> the unreal. Just imagine it in your head that uh, yeah. Tyra Banks, a, a famous supermodel, turns into a giant lizard. And then eats the supermodel and runs off behind the, the uh the, the curtain. It's really funny. Just just oh imagine. My God, and a, a fucking iguana popped out of Tyra Banks and ate that lady. Post it in chat. You can look it up. Just look up Ameri Family Guy America's next top model. I always just God. When people are like, please post it, you've made it so explicit at this point. Like, it's so easy to use the search engine. It's like, come on, you can do it. This is unprecedented. What is? The iguana? The iguana popping out of Tyra Banks and eating that lady. <laughs> you've been smoking cr crumbled up fireflies. <laughs> it gives warmth to my belly regions. Ew. <laughs> All those fireflies in my tum tum. <laughs> oh my god! I like that. Or that she was like, "Oh my god, this video was so long. I didn't get to talk about the fireflies." And it's just like, man, it, was, it wasn't. It's pretty funny. It there was wasn't the limit on YouTube videos, man. Oh. Yeah, oh, I know. It's so frustrating. You can only speak for twenty minutes, but the um, she, the amazement of it that it's like, I'm sure she'll reference it, right? She doesn't for does for the whole thing. It was right at the end. It's like there's the bioluminescence. Anyway, bye. <laughs> it's like okay, <laughs> see ya. It's not qualified. She just brings up bioluminescence, but she doesn't say anything about the, them, it, the phenomenon. She doesn't it's, say anything. It's kind of like just a, a, a catch all, you know, ex explain this in this plot. I don't know, bioluminescence. I don't know. Makes sense. Family. <laughs> Family. Oh yeah, that was uh, how Black Widow was brilliant. I'm assuming everyone's been convinced. I agree. No. I mean, yes. Black I mean, Widow. I think it's brilliant how you could make a movie that fucking horrific and still have 92% of people on the tomato site say that, yeah, that was good. You did a good job. That takes, there's got to be some level of skill that goes into that. What, from a, a perspective of being able to convince that many people?
Like that kind of, but I, I, like, I, yeah, but I think all that happened is it's just like, oh, it's like another blue Marvel movie, yay! Like I feel, I feel like that's the easy assumption yeah. to make. Probably, I think people just have really low standards, and people just they'll just clap at anything. I mean, look at all the other ones; it's all the same. It's all the same. They're all great. They're all just great. <sighs> all this, all this video achieved is is made it made the closer look a lot look really good <laughs> in comparison well i mean it's, i mean it's fine i think we we agreed and disagreed with him about as much as you know equally sort of thing yeah but it, it, he at least had something kind of relevant to criticize you know well, some yeah, of his yeah. terminology and, and some of his his reasoning like he probably couldn't... had references i believe yeah. he probably did that he's he's someone who does usually reference the thing he's talking about uh julia had trouble with that she was really resisting talking about black widow in a black widow review I remember seeing a couple of his videos. He's not obviously great, but uh, all the time. But a lot of the premises are are. I think a lot of times he has like a okay premise, but has a hard time kind of isolating good arguments for that premise. Because looking at his recent videos, I'm like, I kind of agree with that. I kind of agree with that, but I have no idea how he actually argues them out. And I just remember the ones that you guys covered way back with the epic and yeah. So the end game needed to be Helm's Deep or something. It was really weird. <laughs> It's very, very strange. Um, yeah, that, that about does that. And um, unfortunately, I do have a little bit of bad news in that I won't be able to go for much longer. Um, I'm afraid things have gone in hey, the way. Four and a half hours of, of, well, of I was, shenanigans. I was looking at the timer and I was like, man, that's going to seem so short. I'm just like, it's <laughs> not short. There's a lot of stuff. Lot of material. Short man I'm trying to think about how best to do this. Um, probably the because the, the, I wonder if because I've got it like 20 to 30 minutes, and I wonder if there's, there's much point in starting them or just doing them as a block on Wednesday. Um, and, hmm. I guess is there. Hmm. Let me think for a second. Oh no, chat gonna get angry. They'll be okay. We'll be okay. We'll make it. Okay. You know what's ironic? Uh, I I had nothing else to do other than just edit in the background this entire day, and you're basically cutting off right around the time. I'm I, so I sorry. <laughs> this wasn't uh, intended. You know? uh, but um, such a piece of shit. Like what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> why? You, why am I getting picked on? It's so mean. I ever just jeez. What happened? So mean. Um, flame your glorms. Well, so what do you what do you reckon, Rags? What do you is the best plan? All right. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was I was peeing. What happened? Oh, I um I gotta go. Unfortunately, in like twenty minutes. You do? Yeah. Wasn't wasn't. Explain this bullshit. I fucking. <laughs> so... I told you I was peeing. What happened? No, I, there isn't an explanation. It's just you, you know how it goes. It's like you gotta there's, go. There's things I have to solve that are unfortunate. Okay. But um. Okay. So um, we have twenty minutes of time left. What do we do? Is that what your question I'm be, yeah, is? Yeah. Our choices include. Just having a chat, or reading a couple of super chats, or ending because we can just—we've come to the end, you know. Twenty minutes of time. I just want to hang on that. We have. Um, what? So what? What, are, what else could twenty minutes be of? You know. We could. We could. Okay. Yes. Run away from the 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 question. What? Slippery rags. What? <laughs> no, I'm thinking. I'm, thinking. I'm, I'm doing the opposite of running away from questions. Okay. He's That's running toward right. them, head first, with a sword. He's running he's toward them. them first, yeah. He I'm runs toward them and not away from them. Reckless abandon. Doggos do. Okay. It's what doggos do. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I think that um, generally, when we finish a stream, we get to all of the super chats in from that stream in that stream yes so i think we should not get into super chats and we should save those so they can all be together like like your like, like best block. friends like best friends and i am inclined to agree with that actually mm -hmm. i think it's probably yes. better to keep them. and so what we do could be otherwise from that which is well, we could talk a bit about the fun that was last night. <laughs> what happened last night? You know what? The oh, thought no. I had, an errant thought, it was, in, it was rumbling around in the back of my brain, I guess, from that weird thing we, we saw with someone called Jay Longbone, um, a token addition to this stream. It's like, I spent fucking like <laughs> seven hours with her last night. Yeah. It was fun, by the way. <laughs> we, 
<laughs> that was a lot Same. of fun movies. Yeah, chat, to give you an idea, three fat movies were recorded all in a row. We have like 20 of them just waiting, sitting in the background. People have no idea our power level. Yes. And you're experiencing... As we mentioned in chat, so it's a good many. idea to keep them together now that we have to read all the super chats twice. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, that's true. If we read them once, we might get a word wrong. Mm. That's right. After nine hours. It does feel like oh, that was that. that was the beginning like, of this stream. When... This feels when like a... a short EFAP. Well, um, as I think statistically it is, um, but I don't. We should get away from that, right? Calling four and a half hours short is is racist. To so which race? What, what 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 happens if there's a typo in a super chat? Um, I usually read it out and I'm like, "What the fuck does that mean?" And then everyone guesses. That's usually what we do. I think I'm allowed to do no. that. Yeah. Mar Are you allowed to to infer what it was, was supposed <laughs> to be <laughs> said? Some, Only some if it's subtextual. Uh, okay. I will I mean, say that was moral. That that video I kind of mentioned earlier. That is the video that really wanted me, like, got me to want to make stuff like EFAP. It's just like. It, it's so bad, and it's, it says nothing at all. Say anything, and everyone in the comment concrete. section is just sucking it right up, just swallowing it, and being like, mm, that's just what I yeah, needed. That video was really bad. It wasn't and, helpful. It wasn't useful. You can't learn, if you're an aspiring filmmaker, not filmmaker, video creator, like a YouTube person, and you want to do that, watching this video isn't going to do anything to help you. No. Uh, and, and you've got the, uh, the weird, like, all of it, well, not all the comment section, but several of the top comments are about how men suck. And it's like, yeah, what a strange community you're, you're forging. And I, I guess it all comes from that one moment where she says, uh, men don't, aren't allowed to criticize this movie or my channel. Uh, just kidding. Ha ha ha. Twas, I twas only in jest. So, hmm. I give hmm. Not in jest as in eat, but in jest as in... You gotta wonder if she said it in other videos. Maybe she did a Captain Marvel one where she was like, men are not allowed to review this movie. <laughs> oh god, did she? Um, oh, I don't know. Julia... Well, she said she didn't like Captain Marvel, right? Or she didn't like the song choice. I love how I, my brain just concluded if she didn't like the movie, then men are allowed to criticize it. Not that that's the case. It's just funny that I would oh assume that's god. the case. I'm just confused she, she privated her Twitter. I don't believe there's well, a lot going on. Also, I, I would be very surprised. There was that whole, like, oh, they're going to mass downvote. It's like, we've never encouraged that. Um, the upvote yeah, downvote system, as far as I'm aware, is just you give your perspective on what you thought. If it's down or up, like, whatever. Just do whatever you want. I'm not compelling anyone to do anything. Uh, Julie Cudney, Captain Marvel. Nothing's popping up. The first thing that pops up is, is insatiable offensive. I don't know what that means. Is that a film or a Season word three. that they talk about? That's a show, I think. Oh, okay. I think it's a show. Yeah. So they're they're talking the the thumbnail says fat shaming in a question fat shaming question mark. Oh, is that what the show a, does? A, yeah. I don't a, know. It's a show Maybe about a, show. Um, a, a hefty girl who gets in some sort of accident. That hefty. Gets, uh, <laughs> um, you know, lot larger than in charge. Uh, she has, goes in an accident and has to have her mouth sewn shut, and because what? of that. She eats considerably less and becomes super thin and hot. And then <laughs> it shows like her transformation in the school from being, you know, the the fluffy girl to then the hot uh, skinny girl. And then she, I think, please, she no, 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 I, no, no, no. I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> please do not equate fluffy with large. <laughs> I am fluffy. I am fluffy. Right, that, was, that was fluffist. I'm sorry about that. That was that was fluffist. very fluffist. Oh, you have been made aware. You have, you have you, been They warned. are not the same. Many things. Tribbles mm. are fluffy, but they are not well, fat. Was that an accurate uh, estimation of the plot, uh, Jay Longbone? I don't know if you've seen it. I, Except I've just... for the uh, Yeah, it, well, the, it goes on. Uh, she gets revenge on the people who made fun of her in high school. Damn, yeah. girl. I want to watch this movie. The <laughs> show, Rags. Get it right, you fucking loser. <laughs> well, it's a show? Oh, it's a show, not a movie? Yeah, so think Carrie, uh, but instead of becoming like a uh, telekinetic witch, uh, becoming thin instead, basically. Well, okay. That would be, that's a good thing to encourage, though, that people, you know, stay healthy. You could live longer statistically, which means that you could make more content and you can make fun of more people for longer. 
You have more energy to you have more energy revenge. to expend towards sarcastic commentary towards media. Season three is the worst yet. <clears throat> you know what? We're in. We're in. Are we in year four now? Or are we in year three of year four? For what? Well, I mean, we're in us because uh, it's 2018 to 2019. So this we're is the four. fourth year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feels weird, man. This the show's been going for a while. Turns that out, does feel weird, turns actually. out we couldn't solve the problem of shitty video essays in three years. We're kind of incompetent. I don't know that it's even a problem <laughs> that can be solved. I don't think so either. But the, hey, look, that's that's not why we fight. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you right. doing a little gremlin laugh. Yes, that is my little gremlin laugh. Oh, <laughs> as I sit in the corner. I like I was always in the corner in a cave or a den. <laughs> just sitting there. Because that's the only place that people laugh maniacally. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, when I Google Julia Cudney Captain Marvel, I find our stream, the live one. Oh. oh, how is yeah? It how says, does that work? Because I haven't put her name on any of the stuff. It to... says, "It says for you." Oh, maybe okay. Maybe that's just hmm. a random. We're gonna squeeze in. Um, uh, that's the other thing, by the way. Search. Is this the fourth female coverage we've done? Because that's fourth. kind of revolutionary. Well, we've done Jenny twice, and we did Sarah Z once. So, is this the fourth? Are we breaking the average of one per year? Poss, uh, well, no, because we just started year four, right? So <laughs> as long as we don't cover any so, more women. As long as we don't oh, cover yeah. for the rest of the year, yeah. We are currently at one, once a year, we cover a woman, us misogynist woman haters. You think we would try harder? Yeah, I know. We're very bad at this. We're Oh, Grace. We, we covered Grace Randolph, so there you go. Oh, got that one. Grace, does she count as a woman, though? <laughs> I think so. She, her voice shouldn't disqualify her. It's just, I know it's demonic, but... We did cover Grace uh, Randolph. Oh my she's god. She's more like a broom with <laughs> eyes. More like a, a screaming banshee. Well, she's it's funny, because I'm movies. sitting here and I'm just trying to think in the more... Because so I'm pretty sure she doesn't have a great reputation. So, like, she almost probably wouldn't count, just because there are people who don't... Like, more people who don't like her, you know? They don't see her. They like, don't see her in the same way as they, they see Jenny and much. Sarah Z. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't care as much. She's not but, a um, protected woman. She's just a. She's a sub. Yeah, kind of. Well, yeah, kind she. Of. Um, as far as they're concerned, she did a racism at some point. I think. Ah, uh -oh. right. So she's she's a lost cause then. Yep, just, she's out. Uh -oh. She lost. Ri she's written off. That's it. I suppose. Um, Lindsay Ellis has that to a degree. She's been cancelled like seventeen times. Um, she's probably still she, protected she's though. She's probably she, still in a little bit more of the protected. I, well, it, it would. Depends, but yeah. The world would be pissed if we covered it, but we will eventually. Just give it time. Give it all time. Time comes for us all. You guys like the little spooky ghost on the screen? Uh, I don't yeah, know. I love him. Look at him. He's there, like happy hey, ghost. Look at happy me. ghost. <laughs> Look at He's me. so happy to be dead. <laughs> Long lasting uh, friend. I love, I love being every fr on the Every Frame of Psycho podcast. Yeah, little bats. Look at him there. And the every... bats are like, hey, it's fun here in this what place. Do every frame scary. of poltergeist. There you go. Oh. I... It'll be That'd... a bit long, but we could probably do that. Yeah, it'd be long, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys are pretty long. Did you hear about the... Have you guys watched that one YouTuber, uh, Patrician? He does like 12 hour scripted videos. Ooh. He did a 12, wow. 12 hour, I think, Oblivion video. Elder well, Scrolls Oblivion video. I'll right. tell you what, a difference has definitely been made, and uh, we would have been a part of it, not, not uh, in some way, shape, or form, even if it's a minor degree. That um, I saw a parody video get made that said every video essay, like right now or something, and it's I like a, yeah. yeah, and and it's like <laughs> here's my four hour breakdown of how SpongeBob SquarePants is blah blah. And I was like, oh my god, it, it's like parodying long video essays now. Back in the day, like oh. that was that was just considered insane, and no one does it. But now it's common enough that they're being it's like you know counterculture in a way. Yeah, like and that's so cool. If that's the case. Yeah. It's only a matter of time before people just shut up about it and just don't care anymore. And it's just normal. yeah, it's just not normal. You gotta get to over that hump. Stuff. Yeah, because I, I, I just remember the days of first making my uh, my longer videos and people just advising me, like, do not make long videos, they're stupid. It's like, okay, <laughs> but I want to say stuff. Anyway, back to my long oh videos. My exactly. God. Is this real? 
it's I think ignore it's, that ignore that <laughs> ignore that what? how can we ignore that oh my god is this real oh wait that's nothing all right i just to, i just saw a strange image it's fine. okay no, did no, you imagine it okay no i saw I think, it um, it's going to do with the, the algorithm and and kind of how youtube is is treated videos over time like i think that it used to be as soon as you got a click you're basically go you're basically golden and then they started measuring engagement and then they started doing you know lo longevity like ads give you more yeah. uh whatever after 10 minutes and then after a certain amount of time you could add mid-roll ads and stuff like that so now there's really absolutely no disadvantage of making long content but and unfortunately that actually hurts animators and people who make extremely dense but short content but uh yeah think, with that change like any devito yeah dense but like, short that's for sure. I thought you were going to say he was an animator, and I'm like, I don't think he's. No, no. He's <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Wouldn't want he's to. Tightly packed. Wouldn't want to erase his uh, potential animation career. You know, maybe he is. Racist? What? Um, but yeah, I think we'll probably we'll probably wrap there. Um, but right. before we do, uh, Indigo Gaming, why don't you tell people what what's 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 up with you and why they should yeah, maybe consider a dollar subscription? Tell us, tell us your story. Yeah. So um. I, I'm still working really hard on my latest video. It's going to be about two hours, 20, two, probably two hours, 10 minutes, actually. Um, should be shit. released about, I think, mid-November, probably early to mid-November. So it's looking pretty good, about 75% done through the editing phase. Um, it's going to be, uh, it's part three of a comprehensive cyberpunk genre uh, documentary going all the way back to like the, the 60s through the 80s to the 90s. Is that when um, cyberpunk started? It was in the 60s? Uh, you could you could trace it back to like Proto even like cyberpunk. Uh, yeah, sixties is probably like that's back when um, uh, do Andre's Dream of Electric Sheep was written. Well, I guess. Uh, but ah, you, 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 you could go, yeah, Neuromancer was eighty four. That that's like the kind of like the first official quote unquote yeah. cyberpunk novel. Yeah. Um, that's what my first video goes over that Blade Runner, okay. other movies and stuff like that. It kind of. The, the the genre really came to popularity in, in the eighties, but you can trace its origin back to like the forties, the sixties and stuff. Like I trace I trace the uh the the term cyberpunk from like the forties, uh wow. from cybernetics, you know, cybernetics, you know, plus punk, things like that. But uh yeah, the, this next part's gonna be really, really varied. It it covers uh comic books, um, covers uh, several movies cover simulation theory covers uh, cyberpunk inspired music uh, several books and it ends on like a big 25 minute section about philosophy and the matrix phenomenon so that's what i'm working on right now uh, but yeah that should be out next month i also do weekly live streams on my second channel and uh, once i'm done with this this monster i'll probably go on to more rpgs mm. on your podcast oh. you, you talk about like current events for gaming or Definitely. Yeah, my podcast not, not nearly as uh, not nearly as regular as this one. Um, I I, I kind of do it like every month, every month or two. But uh, yeah, I, I usually come up with a topic and uh, you know get guests on and things like that. Um, the next one might be kind of a uh, a topic. I'll probably do some sort of podcast about the Matrix. Um, you mm. know, with the upcoming release and the trilogy and and I, I don't know if you guys remember, but the Matrix was insanely you know just went absolutely crazy in like two thousand three with all of the uh animatrix and the the two video game spinoffs and the two sequel movies come out in the same year like it just absolutely exploded so yeah might do something like that in the next month or so that'd be kind of fun sweet well link in description and in chat and i realized by the way that up until right now i had just pasted jay longbone's channel for your link <laughs> I was like, oh, What's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice job but nobody noticed yet so we're okay maybe i don't know if anyone sometimes they at me with like hey you fucked it up but i, I didn't see anyone this time so my bad if i missed it but um it's, it's all set now Speaking of which, Jay Longbone, what are you up to? Why should people subscribe? Is it because is it Gotham High? Is that why? Because I think they should. They should go watch that. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I, there might be one or two parts left of that. So get, get, you know, look out for that sooner or later yeah, or whatever. The story's <laughs> just starting to heat up. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And I, and I got a whole backlog of shit that I'm working on. But currently, right now, I'm working on the second part of my BBC Dracula miniseries review. Oh, man. Uh yeah, that's so it's, it's shit. But you know, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, loved, um, I loved your first part. I was really, I was hoping you'd mention when you're doing your second part. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm try I'm gonna try to get it out uh on Halloween or before Halloween. Uh I'm gonna try. But yeah, you know, this one is a little, has been a little bit difficult to write because the second part is just so thin. There's nothing ha really happens in the second part, and the characters don't really matter. They try to expand on like the whole Dracula thing when he's on, he's on the ship to the he's on the Demeter ship on the way to London. Now normally he's supposed to be just in a box, but like he's walking around talking to people and shit, but it doesn't mean anything because they all end up <laughs> <Okay>. dying anyway. <laughs> so, so you recommend the show? No. Oh, what? I mean, if you want to see like the lead guy be really good at acting and the <laughs> set design, then yeah, watch it. But other than that, like yeah, you're not really gonna get anything from it. Just watch the just watch the uh, Francis Ford Coppola movie, and you know any other movie that there's anything else but just that. watch anything else. <laughs> Even watch Black <laughs> Widow. Did you know that Demeter is the Greek goddess of agriculture? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. Carry Did on. you know that drinking is not good <laughs> when you're on stream? I've been <laughs> drinking drink. water. It's if pretty good. Drink, <laughs> if you don't drink, you'll die. Yeah. <laughs> what? A, I thought that was an interesting fun fact for people. I <laughs> no, appreciate it. You sound it, so lost. It's sad. I know exactly. You sound so lost. <laughs> I know exactly where I am. I'm listening to you talk about the vampire show from the BBC, and they were on the ship to meet her. And you said that everyone died, so it doesn't matter. But if you, oh. she doesn't recommend it, but if you want to watch it for the main characters acting, you could do so. I have been you here said, this entire time. You said on the exactly ship to to meet her. You know what I think it is, Rags? I think she's racist yeah, to witches, and she can see a little hat, and she's like, mm. "Witches are great." They can fly. They can cast spells. Oh wait, the spell we well, said spells been real. Well, they need a room to fly. Mm -hmm. No, obviously. Cannot canonically. Everyone knows that. Everyone's seen Quidditch. You have to have an enchanted broom. Oh, oh I also want to mention. Oh, sorry. I almost want to. I also want to mention. Ooh. I'm doing a stream tomorrow <gasps> on Cinema Sins. Uh, Ooh. Ooh, video on Interview with the Vamp. It, he they just did oh. a video on Interview with the Vampire, and I love yeah. that movie. And in my yeah. personal opinion, it, it's perfect. Ooh. So I want to know. So I want to know what <laughs> he has to say about this. Fair warning, his videos are awful. <laughs> it's like, I, uh -oh. <laughs> Super Sins Boy is bad. <laughs> yeah, I really like Interview with the Vampire. Uh, I, I'm assuming he's going to have some pretty hot takes on that. Uh, yeah, I, I already watched like the first minute, and I was, I was like, just fuck it, fuck it all. <laughs> why are you? Why do you have a channel? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Uh. Yeah, I mean, we could also mention good old Mr. Metal Commander here, streaming Hello. every single hour of every single day oh, on shit. Twitch. Oh, man. Better get life then. What are you doing <laughs> next? You're doing some spooky move games, right? Yeah, what's up, Metal? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ne ne <laughs> uh, I just finished the uh, Outer Wilds DLC, which was really good. There was the first spooky game of the month. It wasn't that spooky, but it was a little bit spooky. Outer Wilds is a game that people tell us to play. Many yeah, times. me it's mostly. A very constantly recommended game for us to it's, vibe. I, I play, really like play. it. It's always play. mentioned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Rightfully so. I, I really like it. I think it's really good. And you sh everyone yeah. should play it. Uh, but yeah, next game I'm going to start is going to be Dead Space 1. Because I haven't played it in a long time. Ah. And, uh, on the, like, are, what are you going to be playing it on? The uh, just, personal computer? Yeah, on but, but PC. Uh, I got like a thingy that gets rid of the weird aspect ratio that Al sent me. It's like yeah. a white screen something something. Yeah, it's it's gloomy it on PC. You gotta get some fixes and things for it. But yeah, luckily yeah. the other dead spaces don't have that issue, just the first one. But that's that's before EA was making the PC stuff that they were making. Mm -hmm. Um yeah when I finish that one uh, I'm gonna play Amnesia the Dark Descent oh, oh, oh. first time. Oh my god, that's a spooky yeah. game. I recently played The Machine for Pigs. I don't know if I'd you recommend did. it. I, I, you do it. I used to be like, no, but now I'm like, I mean... Fine. <laughs> it's got fine. stuff in there. It's got stuff. It's the, got stuff. The funny thing is, I think I appreciate the music more so this time than any other time I've played it. Um, Especially when I noticed, like, I think it was Jay was watching in chat, and he was like, uh, can, can someone tell me what the soundtrack is for this? I want to get it. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of fair, actually. The soundtrack's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. It's way better than Amnesia uh, Birth. Afterbirth. Afterbirth. 
It's way yeah. better than Amnesia Afterbirth. I completely Someone's agree like, with that, yeah. It's a way better experience, too, because it's like, it's four hours. It's much more condensed, it's like straightforward. Is that how short it is? It was. I was surprised when I looked at the stream. I was like, shit, I've only been going for, like, that was the whole game. Wow. Damn. Because I think, uh, I didn't realize, I, I was considering making it two parts. That would have been a mistake. Like, because I was practically at the end. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. If, you, if um, you don't like, like, Twitch streams, uh, I'm, I'm planning to do those, uh, uh, play to the YouTube streams more regular. Me. Uh, so if you, if you like to watch there better, then I'm, I'm going to be there as well. It's almost Jake, like the uh, lowering of standards of horror games Jake. has made well, games Jake. that were kind of mediocre now look better. <laughs> Definitely had a Thanos moment where Machine for Pigs was like, Mola doesn't lie. And then I was like, wow, perhaps I was too harsh to you, Machine <laughs> for Pigs. And then I tussled Perhaps I judged you too harshly. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized I never got asked the uh, the Halloween Christmas question. You didn't? Oh shit! I thought you. you okay. Do. Well, it's time to answer that question, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Indigo I mean, Gaming, which do you prefer, Halloween or Christmas? No, I'm sure gonna get. I'm gonna get some hate for this, but I'll at if least back up correctly. <laughs> I'll I'll back up my opinion with uh, facts with and logic. I actually learned a few 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 years ago, actually. I won't be quite as outspoken as Chad. Chad is very outspoken, but I am a Christmas person. But yeah. I'll say I'll say why. Okay, right. So Ooh. Halloween, you kind of get Yay. like uh, you, you like it, like you, you Halloween. You kind of you kind of start thinking about it in October. You kind of build up. You might have a couple little parties, and then on the last day, and then it's done. Right. So you, at max, you get like the build up for a month, and then it's over. Pretty much, you're pr celebrating on one day. Whereas Christmas, uh, Christmas used to be basically the entire uh, the entirety of winter solstice so you, people would actually have uh celebrations throughout the three months of winter mm -hmm. it's really and drawn so out, yeah. My, yeah so my my argument is that you get more of christmas you get you get <laughs> uh, a whole opinion. a whole a whole season of christmas of gift giving and people meeting up and like everybody's like hey merry christmas that's you right don't really people it, call but... it it's like seasonal christmas is it is like the christmas season that's right whereas with the stinky halloween and all of its oh. candy corn Ooh. it's like oh we went and trick-or-treated for three hours all right now we got to go to school tomorrow fuck yeah. that so i would say that the halloween has more creativity but christmas uh -huh. is long, <laughs> longer uh -huh. and they're, and, they're, and therefore better so that's my opinion you know i'll agree with the first half <laughs> Christmas is the best holiday of all of them. Speaking of which, Halloween's great. Halloween's great, though, but Christmas is the best. Um, I, I really have to go now. So, uh, what else should I say? Uh, hey, Christmas is better now. Fuck off. <laughs> was, was there any, was there anything anybody wanted to say before we 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 run away from the world? Black Widow is bad. Yes. Don't watch yeah. it. It's really bad. Yes. Um, Christmas is better than Halloween. No. <laughs> um, you heard it here first. Um, yeah, because no one says that because it's wrong. Uh, <laughs> what um? What else is there to say? Well, uh, of course, thank you everyone for joining us for watching, and oh, we will chat. get we will we'll get, get to the them. super we'll, chats. We will. Hopefully, the whole we'll block of this stream will be done on Wednesday. So we'll see you then, we'll everybody. Yeah. Um, see you later, everybody. Thanks I for coming. Be... Bye. Bye. Why? I will I will be around on Drake Tuesday Hog. with real BBC it. and He's dead now. I don't think exploded. Yeah, we we, we got to watch more Batwoman too. We got two left. We got to do that. Um, oh, that's right. That's oh, right. God. We're almost there. We're almost there, everybody. We're almost finished. Batwoman. We are indeed. Um, yes. Thank you for joining, everybody. Peace out. See you next yeah, time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Later on in the days to Ooh. come. Goodbye. <laughs>